someone else got out. This is the pool that Bing came from. The parasite now writhing behind your eye. of goblins, their habits and histories flash into your mind. I need a quick word. Yes, you've come to save us from this place. From this place, you'll free us. The exposed brain quivers in expectation. Please. Before they return. They return. A newborn. Born new from this husk. You know no creature like this. One that is more brain than person. rush past. A dragon swing, a silver sword, and a flash of your face seen through the strange woman's eyes. Oh. <sighs> My head. What is this? <sighs> Squall, you are no thrall. Flakith blesses me this day. Together, we might survive. Mind flayer parasites. Unless we escape, unless we are cleansed, our bodies and minds will be tainted and twisted. Within days, we will be gay. Mind flayers. We can do nothing until we escape. That must be our priority. First, we exterminate the imps. Then we find the helm and take control of the ship. We will address the matter of a cure for this infection once we reach the material plane. for stragglers. The construction is too alien. Nothing looks familiar. This ship is crashing. Do you intend to die for a stranger? 
Try that contraption next to the pod. They did something to it when they sealed me in. Hurry! Please! The console appears dormant. The mechanisms are completely unrecognizable at first. But then you spy an empty socket. Whatever fits in that socket must power this thing. Faint images appear in your mind. A brain, a Githyanki warrior, and centuries of darkness. How many hosts of these gay infected? Dazed woman is trapped inside the pod. She doesn't notice you. Perfect. As you place your hand on the pod, you hear something. A presence connected to the pod, commanding the person inside to change. appears dormant. The console hums to life. But what is its purpose? Will it free the captive or transform her like that other unfortunate? company. Fair point. Looks like there's plenty of fighting ahead. Let me come with you. We can get off this ship and watch each other's backs along the way. I did. It must be because of those parasites they put in us. But that'll have to wait. Are we going to help each other or not? Shadowheart. One moment. It's nothing. Trust me. Enough of this chatter. We need to get to the helm. Now. 
She's right. Lead on. Open up. We are nearing the helm. Once inside, do as I say. Who put you in charge? I'll trust my own judgment. Kenyank. deal with the Geich after we escape.
As you wake, the tadpole squirms in your skull. Other than the infection, you're more or less intact. A miracle, given everything you've been through. But it'll all be for nothing if you don't find help soon. The tadpole is a death sentence, and the clock is ticking. You need a cure. the ship. I remember falling, then nothing. No, I don't recognize this place. But anything's an improvement on where we just came from. First things first, we need supplies, shelter, and most of all, a healer. We might have escaped, but we still have these little monsters in our heads. We need each other, and we both know what's at stake. Can't think of better company. One thing, just before we go. I wanted to thank you again for freeing me. It would have been all too easy for you to run right past my pod, but you didn't. I'll remember that. Lead the way. Fresh water. There must be a settlement nearby. I have something to ask. Hurry! I've got one of those brain things cornered. There, in the grass. You can kill it, can't you? Like you killed the others? There. Can you see it? want to keep that darling neck of yours. And you, keep your distance. No need for this to get messy. I need him alive. Stow that blade or I'll show you just how messy things can get. Ah, promises, promises. But I have other business, I'm afraid. Now, I saw you on the ship, didn't I? Nod. streets. You try to hold the memory, but it fades to the worm. The light. The fear. <laughs> what was that? What's going on? I'm not an idiot. It has to be those tentacled monsters. Something they did. They took you too. I saw it during... whatever just happened. And to think, I was ready to decorate the ground with your innards. <laughs> Apologies. Indeed we are. Please, allow me to introduce myself. My name's Astarian. I was in Baldur's Gate when those beasts snatched me. Is that so? We clearly move in different circles. So, do you know anything about these worms? No. 
Of that much we can be certain. These worms are already affecting me. I can feel it. Now, what to do about it? Well, getting out of here for a start. Then finding anyone who knows about these worms. I need an expert. Someone who knows how to control these things. Well, yes, of course. But first things first. You know, I was ready to go this alone. But maybe sticking with the herd isn't such a bad idea. And you seem like a useful person to know. All right. I accept. Lead on. <sighs> One day I'll catch a break. There. A mind flayer. And it's hurt. That th you approached the dying monster. This is the thing that abducted you. You could end its life here and now, if only you didn't feel... compassion. Compassion? You can't move, can't think. Thinking is mercifully done for you. It will be a joy to serve, to die for it an honor. It's possessing your mind, forcing you to love it. But then the feeling slips. The creature's mind seems to focus elsewhere. You try to break through, but its mind is impenetrable. With a last surge of defiance, it slaps your efforts away. The monster lies exhausted, defeated. Its eyes, wet orange pearls, radiate malice. Monster. Death is too good for it. Let's see. What's coming on with that room? Approach the sigil on the stone. Magic glitters and swirls from it erratically, as if malfunctioning. It looks slightly dangerous. Just your average traveler stuck between realms. Pull me out, and we'll get properly introduced. Gale of Waterdeep. Apologies. I'm usually better at this. That magic. Say, but I know you, don't I? In a manner of speaking. You were on the Norse Lloyd as well. I don't know what transpired exactly, but the ship broke into pieces and I suddenly found myself in freefall. As I was plummeting to certain death, I spied a glimmer quite near where I estimated my body to impact with less than savory propulsion. Recognizing this glimmer to be magical in nature, I reached out to it with a weaving of words and found myself on the other side, as it were. How about you? 
How did you survive the fall? Fair enough. But even so, I have the unfortunate suspicion your survival is still very much in jeopardy. Back on the ship, you two were on the receiving end of a rather unwelcome insertion in the ocular region. Were you not? No use sugarcoating it, is there? The insertee we speak of, this parasite, are you aware that after a period of excruciating gestation, it will turn us into mind flayers? It's a process known as ceramorphosis, and let me assure you, it is to be avoided. You don't happen to be a cleric by any chance, do you? A doctor? Surgeon? Uncannily adroit with a knitting needle? You seem to know enough about our condition to realize it's beyond most cleric's skills. Most, no doubt. But I find myself hoping to be in the presence of the few. You don't happen to be one of them. As we've established, few enough can. It's not exactly a common affliction. We're most certainly going to need a healer, and soon, too. How about we lend each other a helping hand once more and look for a healer together? Most excellent! A parasite shared is a parasite halved. Or something to that effect. Oh, but before you think you're about to embark on a journey with most ill-mannered a man, thank you for pulling me out of that stone. It's an act of foresighted kindness, I assure you. For I have the feeling ample opportunities will present themselves for me to return the favor. No rest for the week. You both twice as tall as me, but I'm half the bloody backbone! But we don't know what that thing even is. And what about the crypt? I'm telling you, it's a ship. And the crypt can wait. Mari and Barton have been trying to break in for days. Now we... Stop! Got ourselves competition already. That's our ship. First you look, then you touch, then you take. The only thing we're sharing with you is our pointy ends. Get him! Yellow as a toad, and twice as ugly. The thing's dangerous. Leave it for the goblins to kill. And if it escapes, how will you... Oh, a guest. Your skull pounds in response to the prisoner's white-hot stare. Her lips don't move, yet you hear her voice. Get rid of them. Your words flow to her, though you never speak them aloud. I know what grows inside you, and I know of a cure. Remember how keen she was to leave me to die in the Nautiloid? We can't trust her. He's right. Let's go. We need to check out that blast. You didn't hear it. Shook our camp good, so we came for a look.
northwest. Look for Nettie. Whatever your wound, she can mend it. And be careful. There are goblin traps everywhere. Nymessa, come. Enough gawking. Get me down. Never. Observe and listen. You'll hear Enough goblins before you Get see me down. As you say. The tadpole hasn't yet scrambled all your senses. Auspicious. But the longer we wait, the more it consumes. My people possess the cure for this infection. I must find a crash. You will join me. Careful. She obviously sees your kindness as weakness. Don't let her take advantage. It is many things. A hatchery, a training grounds, a shelter. Githyanki protocol is clear. When infected with a gay tadpole, we must report to Augusto for purification. You may as well suggest a wyvern bow to worms. The cure I offer will suffice as thanks. You are full up. Dismiss your weakest warrior. Very well, but heed my words. The Horned Ones mentioned a camp. One there, this Zoru, has seen Githyanki. A crash must be near. I must interrogate this Zoru. Our very lives depend on it. I will be at your camp. Do not keep me waiting. I need a quick word. I am enjoying the latest addition to our little group. Lazelle is delightful. In a very look at me twice and I'll dismember you kind of way, of course. Oh, darling, I'm hurt. I thought we had something special. I guess I'll spend my evenings lounging here while you do all the hard work. It sounds awful. Chatter already, Tusky. It is done. Oh, enough waiting. Open the bloody gate! Nobody gets in! Zevlor's orders! That pack of goblins will be on us any second! What's going on? Goblins are on our tail! Open the gate, Zevlor, now! You let goblins here? Where is the druid? Please! There's no time! Nine hells! Open the gates! The last of them. Inside! All of you! More may follow! Open the gate! Good. Damn vermin. They were tenacious. I wonder what they wanted here, other than bloodshed. A taste of goblins to come, I fear. 
Must be a horde nearby. There are children here, you fool! We was running for our lives. You led them straight to us, and you let them take the druid too? Unbelievable! He's right. We should scrum while we can. Right. Lead the goblins here, then leave the rest of us to fight them off. You coward! What's it gonna take to shut you up, Hordes? Enough! Squabbling is pointless. The goblins have found us. At least we agree on that. More goblins could be on their way. A healer. Forgive that display. Aradin's a blowhard, but that's no cause for me to join him. Thank you for your help out there. I'm Zevlor. Well met. I should warn you, visitors are no longer welcome in this grove. Whatever your business, I'd see to it quickly. The druids are forcing everyone out. This attack will only strengthen their resolve. There have been several attacks by different monsters. The druids blame us outsiders for drawing them here. Nobody's welcome anymore. They've started a ritual to cut the grove off from the world outside. We can't stay, but we'll be slaughtered if we leave. We are no fighters. I've tried. Korga, their new first druid, won't even see me. You, though? I know it's not your business, but she owes you for saving this place. Perhaps you could persuade her for more time to prepare if nothing else. I think you should. Yes. No harm in trying the diplomatic route. We'd owe you a great debt. If we're forced to leave now, we won't make it to the city. You'll find the druids at the heart of the grove. Please, make them see sense before more lives are lost. Right now. Go on. Give me a best shot. Not bad. Again. I can't do it. I'm not like you. Umi, I don't need you to be like me. You just have to buy enough time to run. Come on. I believe in you. You can do this. Kind words in unkind times, my friend. Well met. The Blade of Frontiers at your... The man's smile bends downward. And his thoughts become yours. You are the Blade of Frontiers, racing through the wastes of Avernus. Just ahead, a diabolical figure, red skin, single curled horn, blazes with flame, bloodied great axe hell. <sighs> Hell's great fires. You were on the ship. Better friends than the ones hitching a ride in our skulls, at least. I'm sure you know the stories. Doomed to shed our skin and become a lithid. They say there's no coming back. But we haven't sprouted any tentacles. Not yet, anyway. Could just be good luck. I'm not so... Your minds collide once more. Will chases the fiend ignited with rancor. She is an infernal war devil. A threat to the living. Evil incarnate. Shit! <sighs> you saw her. Advocatus Diaboli. 
Her name is Karlak, an archdevil soldier I swore on my good eye to kill. I tracked her through the hells to the Mind Flayer ship, but the damned Elithids infected me before I could end her. She's out there now, preying on the innocent. I don't kill her, she'll leave behind nothing but a trail of corpses. An excellent suggestion, but your party's full up. Still, when the time comes, call for the blade. I won't be long to answer. A splendid plan. We'll talk more there. I'm back. Right now. Sir? Waiting's getting to me. Are we gonna have and to if fight we left, we could at least make a run for it. Hobgoblins? Again. Oh. Swing Are those words? Swing, hog, hog, Please, let us through. Let my daughter go right now! She's a thief, Hellspawn! And you will wait for Korga's judgment. Now get back! Oh, let me through, Radrush, or I'll rip your damn throat out! Give him a chance. You, get back! Keep back! Force my hand and I'll show you its claws. A moment, Giona. What? Oh. I understand. You! Apparently Korga wants to see you. Go ahead. Yes, I see. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <gasps> Please. I'm sorry. This is madness, Korga. She's just a... A what, Wrath? A thief? A poison? A threat? I will imprison the devil. And I will cast out every stranger. She's a parasite. She eats our food, drinks our water, then steals our most holy idol in thanks. Wrath, lock her up. She remains here until the rite is complete. And keep still, devil. Teela is restless. Come, Koga. We took back the idol. Surely... Do it. Halsin is gone. I am first druid now. I will take control and prove my authority. Fair words. Child, take to the others word of my grace. Sivasif, Tila, to me. <laughs> it hurts. Thank you, Korga. Master Halsin w Halsin isn't here. Keep his name off your tongue, lest Teela pierce it. Seems like a good moment to talk. I know that look. You're wondering why I was in pain before. Let's just clear the air about that now. It's just an old wound that hurts me from time to time. Nothing to be concerned about. It's nothing to do with the tadpoles, at least, in case your imagination is in danger of getting away from you. It's just something I have to live with.
quite a lot, if I'm being honest. But it always passes quickly, so I can manage. Positive. You can trust me on that. Tiring business, isn't it? All this traveling and adventuring. Why don't we take a little break, hmm? Allow ourselves a few moments of rest? Gives me a chance to talk to you about something, well, rather important. We've been on the road together for a while now, haven't we? Hmm? Survived some perils, overcame some obstacles. Ever since you were kind enough to free me from that stone, I've seen you demonstrate remarkable guile and courage. The way you diffused the tension between Zevlor and Aradin. The way you got Korga to release the girl. In short, I've grown to trust you. The reason I make a point of saying this is that I've grown confident enough to tell you something I've yet to tell another living soul, except for my cat. You see, I have this condition. Very different from the parasite we share, but just as deadly. No, no, nothing like that. Now, if I fail to treat it, then the consequences would not be contained to me alone. What it comes down to is this. Every so often, I need to get my hands on a powerful magical item and absorb the weave inside. I can say no more on the matter. Not now, anyway. Just trust me when I say it's all of vital importance. It's been days since I last consumed an artifact, since before we were abducted. It's only a matter of time before my craving returns. That is why I turn to you. I need you to help me find magic items to consume. It is vital, dare I say it, critical. As luck would have it, Faerun is full of them. Though I do feel obliged to point out that items of power tend to be in the hands of the powerful. There'll be danger involved, or great cost. Splendid. Bit of boldness will serve us well. I'm sure we won't have to look very far to find what I need. Faerun overflows with magic-infused treasure. I know the allure magic artifacts hold. I understand their value and their power. All this to say, I understand the sacrifice I ask of you. But if I may be so bold, it's for a very good cause indeed. I hope I can count on you. Almost finished. What if they tried to steal from us? The game! We've shown them once. We take Grove Law seriously. Go on. Say it. You think I'm a monster? Yes, you would say so. I know your kind. You see only villains and victims. A viper bears her fangs, defending her brood. I call her mother. You call her monster. No matter. I took back the idol of Sylvanus, and the rite is resumed. We will seal the grove, free from harm, free of intruders. And mine perish if he stays. You showed great metal at the gate. The metal of a skilled sword for hire. I want you to provide your services to Zevlor. Offer to guide the Outlanders out of the grove. I'm sure they'll reward you well. They're to be gone before final prayer. If they are not, the Viper must strike. You will do more than speak. This tale ends but one way. With the Outlander rot cleansed, and the grove forever shrouded.
You did well to speak up for the girl. That snake is fickle. A tragedy prevented. Nothing befitting a child. Nothing befitting any of our world's creatures. We've let a snake replace our leader. She will see the tieflings driven out, or worse. Master Halsin. Perhaps goblin caught, perhaps dead. He'd set Mistress Korga back in line. Hold her to task. Stop this damned ritual. More will die if the rite is finished. So many more, sent into a world gone mad. Would you? I would give anything to see Halsin return home. Sylvanas's blessing upon you, and my gratitude as well. Halsin is an elf with the presence of a bear. He left west with the adventurers. You won't mistake the first druid for anyone else. I wish I could offer more assistance. For now, I must keep a close watch on Gorga. I hope to see both you and Halsin again soon. <sighs> One day I'll catch a break. I see you. Just give me a moment. This may be There. It's up to her now. Life or death. Now, what was it you needed? I do what I can. For most folks, that's enough. Come here. Let's have a look at you. You seem healthy enough. A bit tired around the eyes, maybe. A tadpole? A mind flare tadpole? I... Uh, I'll do what I can. Come, follow me. I might be able to help. We need to be quick. This way. This one had the same problem as you. Attacked us in the woods together with some goblins. Tadpole crawled out of his head soon after. I'll do the best I can. I'm no Master Halson, mind. He'd have your tadpole out like that. Still, we have options. All right. Let's see what we can do. It might. But first things first. Tell me about your symptoms. Have you noticed anything strange happening? Victims can identify each other. Not that the others know they're victims, of course. How'd you pick up the parasite? Halson was desperate to find where all this was happening. A mind flare ship? But Master Halson was sure. Look, you've been straight with me, so I'll be straight with you. You're dangerous. If you transform here, we're all dead. But you seem like a good soul. You deserve a chance to save yourself. This is a vial of wyvern poison. Swear to me, you'll swallow it if you feel any symptoms. The thorn? Coated in a fatal toxin. It was a last resort, in case I couldn't trust you. I don't have a cure. Only a way out. I'm sorry for misleading you. But I had to be sure you weren't a threat before I told you everything. Now, do I have your word or not? I hope it doesn't come to that, but thank you. Here. 
You know, I've spent my life treating folk and never once saw a mind flare infection. Then suddenly, there's dozens of you. Maybe more. Master Halson and I were tracking them, studying them, trying to figure out what the hell was going on. Because you should all be changing. There should be a small army of mind flayers out there. But you're not. Weird powers aside, you seem perfectly normal. For one, that thing in your head is like nothing we've ever seen from Mind Flayers. It's one of their worms for sure. But this one gives you powers, telepathic connections, and it doesn't turn you into one of them. Not yet, anyhow. Could be, but there's a lot we don't know. Infected, folks like you, have been converging on an old temple of Saluna, and I've no idea why. When Master Halson heard the adventurers were heading that way, he saw a chance to get answers, joined on the spot. Whatever he found there, he didn't make it back. I think so. I hope so. I've sent birds to find him, but they can't get close without goblins trying to shoot them down. You, though, you're one of them. Technically speaking, I mean, they won't kill someone carrying their parasite. If you can find Halson and get him out of there, we can discover what he learned, and perhaps he can save your life. How's that sound? Thank you. It would mean everything to the groom. To me. I wish I could tell you more, but only those adventurers know what happened out there. All I can say for sure is they all went to the old temple of Saluna, and Master Halson didn't make it back. Good luck out there, and if things start to go bad, remember the vial. Remember your oath. Step at a time, Nettie. Come on. Better a quick draft than Ceremorphosis. She's a child. A devil child! One who tried to steal from us! Yet she failed. That's what matters. Please leave. Our hospitality has limits, and they were crossed long ago. I wish I could offer more assistance. For now, I must keep a close watch on Gorga. I hope to see both you and Halson again soon. Come with Ah, my good friend! You were at the gates just now, no? When the goblins came? You saw them up close? A few questions, if you please. There's no overstating my interest. Glory. Now then. How would you describe that particular batch of goblins? Size, nature, distinguishing qualities? You search your mind successfully recalling various details of goblin behavior. Goblins were of a rare gem-colored hue and wielded magic blowguns. A myth weaver. This man has no respect for truth. And the dragon they had marching in the rear, was it of the brass or silver variety? Witnesses noticed a red dragon marching at rear. Last question, then you'll be quite free. Did the attackers rally to the Absolute when they fell upon the gates? They did, didn't they? Oh, oh curious. Oh, curious indeed. I've interrogated one, 
a captive in this very camp. She reports they've abandoned their god, McGlubbyet, in favor of someone called the Absolute. The scandal! Ah, but is superstition all? These goblins are informed by a kind of strategy anathema to their kind. I, for one, intend to get to the bottom of it. I'm just preparing to head to their camp as we speak, in fact. If you'll excuse me, I ought not to dawdle. My friend, every story benefits from a dragon. Until we meet again. You ever scare me like that again, and I'll feed you to a knoll. Mom, I'm fine. Stop it. Our little hellion told us what happened. Thank you. Don't know what we'd do without her. Yeah. I mean, thank you for helping me. Bells, it's our job to get us out of here safely, not yours. It's my job too. The druids don't care about us. By Mordai's eyes, another one. My friend's blood not enough. Come to rip me open too. In Kresh Kalir, a formal greeting begins with a bow. Is this monster with you? You dare interrupt! Has the tadpole ravaged your senses? Chucky, fine. On the road to Baldur's Gate. N near the mountain pass. S saw us, for we saw it. Jammed its blade through Yul's belly. Straight to the other side. And I just... I just... ran. The map. Show me. No hard feelings. Swing and swing and... Oh. The last time a subordinate questioned my judgment, I ate tongue stew that very night. I warned you, didn't I? You ought to reconsider keeping her around before she causes real trouble. Your tantrum proves you no wiser than a hatchling. The teethling was clear. If there are a githyanki west of here, that must be our objective. Purification cannot wait. If it ain't the fearless goblin slayer, you sure you want to be seen with me? I ain't exactly popular with this lot. Half my crew are full of holes. Now I'm gonna take the blame for leading the goblins here and losing track of the bloody druid. Alson, he's a leader around these parts. Or was. We've got a contract to track down some relic and he wanted in on the job. Eyes lit up when he heard about it. Didn't work out though. Goblins got him when we were turning tail. He's either digging latrines or boiling in a cook pot by now. I don't know what I expected. That much gold for some long lost relic. And from a wizard, too. I should have known. The gold probably turns to lead the moment you leave Baldur's Gate. Stupid thing to die for. It's called the Night Song. 
Supposed to be hidden under the temple where the goblins jumped us. I'd give you the map and wish you a happy funeral. But my mate Brian kept hold of it like his own todger. Goblins made sure to the fat old chunk. All I've got's the contract. It'll show you where we turn back. If you feel like dying. <laughs> Don't thank me. I'll be well on my way to Boulder's Gate when you die. Goblins. Oh, I. I was just gonna let it fall off, stick it in my satchel. I ain't letting anyone here near me. They all sat and watched while Zevlor near got us killed. And what about our people? Half the crew's lying dead back in that ruin. Even the new lad, his first contract, and we land him in a god's damn goblin nest. He actually stood and fought, the stupid bastard. Like I never trained him better. These weren't no normal goblins. And Liam weren't no friend, all right? Just another raw recruit thought he was in some storybook. You're the one who helped at the gate. Glad to have another sword. We might need it. I heard what happened. Thank you for protecting the child. If the druids are this far gone, then it's not just goblins we have to fear. So we can risk violence here, or face it for certain on the road. Quite the choice, isn't it? It's good of you to offer, but there's a whole army of goblins out there. We'd need an army of our own to escort us safely to Baldur's Gate. And while I don't doubt your abilities, you're no army. There may be a way, though. Goblins are ill-disciplined. It's unlike them to organize so cleverly. Somebody must be leading them, bringing discipline to their ranks. Take out that leadership, and they'll scatter. It's no small thing to ask, but I've seen you fight. You're equal to the task. Everyone in this camp depends on it. Thank you. We'll be ready to leave as soon as you give word. No, sir. But if there's a clear path past those goblins... Black area! Concentrate. Shouldn't have made me your enemy. Never been much of a fighter, so wrestling a bugbear would have gone poorly. But you're not here for heroics, are you? Avernus's stench is all over your skin. Let me guess. Your devil mistress sent you to get her soul coin back. But too bad. I earned it, fair and square. Devils just can't stand to lose. Here. Now go back to the pit that made you. Care to explain why you reek of the hells? Considering what I've seen, you'd be surprised. But if you're not here for the coin, I'd rather enjoy the quiet. There's not much of it anywhere else. Tempers are rising. 
It's clear not everything you find is at your disposal. You're like we're being watched. The Githyanki people have a word for men like the Blade of Frontiers. Shalak. Roughly translated, idealist do-gooder. Or better yet, benevolent burden. His confidence is an asset. His pursuit of valor, not so much. I understand much beyond your comprehension. More to the point, I know the cure for our condition. It is imperative we locate a crash. You do well to observe more and question less. Entirely. I was as devoted to my studies as I was to my training. Each crash contains a Sathisk purification device. So I learned from the writings in the Kaleer Library. The library was a gift from Vlakith herself, that we may gain total understanding. I will not brook your ignorance. Countless scholars roam the astral sea and beyond, observing the ways of our lessers, exploring planes so distant order turns to chaos and cold fires rage. I know what you can barely fathom. That you cannot bear it makes it no less true. I've known a few warlocks in my time. Talented, of course, though sometimes too eager to listen to the devils on their shoulders. <laughs> Comes with the territory, unfortunately. Think of it as... Tribute. The kind a king might pay to a more powerful neighbor to avoid invasion. As long as I pay, there will be peace. But should I ever stop, along comes a war. I can assure you, the battlefield would extend well beyond the borders of my body alone. Your enterprising approach to my problem is most encouraging. But it is a delicate process to keep my condition stable. I do not yet need to consume an item, but keep it close by. It will not be too much longer. The Blade of Frontiers. Let's hope Will lives up to his name. We'll need all the help we can get. Must we? No harm in a little mystery, don't you think? Thank you. I'm sure we'll get along perfectly well. Your kind will punish you for consorting with us. My name is Lazelk Choki, and my kin will understand my need for. I'd like some time to talk. How can I help? runs through your head and down to your feet. Ah, there it is. That shiver. Our little brainworms have made fast friends, it would seem. How do you feel? Courage in danger shadow. I love to see it. But shouldn't the shadow have crept closer? Gone darker by now? Before the Elithid's unscheduled surgery. I'd felled hundreds of beasts and a fair few fiends. The tadpoles weakened me, suppressed greater talents, but beyond that, I've showed no signs of turning. No nausea, no pain, not even a hot flash. Indeed, perhaps the worm's vat was poisoned. 
Perhaps we're uncommonly fit? Or perhaps the tadpoles are merely on holiday. We could conjecture all night. I suppose the why doesn't matter so much as the what next. And that answer is plain as the horns on a war devil's head. We get these things out. Let's get some rest. Dawn comes sooner than we think. A fine evening, don't you think? The moonlight shines warmly on us. The breeze caresses our faces. Hideous. All of it. Would that I were doing battle up there, among the tears. Look above. Watch the moon cross the sky. The tears follow behind it. Rocky bodies tumbling through the sea of night. One of them is my crash. Clear. Your curiosity is to be commended. Githyanki are hatched in creches all throughout realm space. Kalir is one of many. It's there I first saw a Kithrak mount a red dragon. Where I slit my cousin's throats at the Vaj's command. But enough of this. You are wasting your resting time. Come dawn, we resume our search for a crash. You know, I've been thinking. Reflecting on what tomorrow might bring. When we find the druid, will he know how to bring the worm under control? Will this little adventure of ours be over? <laughs> Why not? You've been to the hells and back. Survived the crash. Survived everything that's followed. I'm not easily impressed by people, but... You're stronger than I gave you credit for. You have your charms more than you think. The smile on his pretty lips is a touch too composed, a bit too perfect. He may not mean a word he says. Oh, you're no fun. Sleep tight. I'll see you later. I'm sure. The leader of the pack comes to chat. What's on your mind? You must be pleased to have a clear path forward. The sooner we find the druid house in, the better. I can't wait to get rid of this thing in my head. The same. These parasites are proving suspiciously benign. But suppose I turn. What would you do? Wise. Though, I hope you'd miss me after I'm gone. I think I would if the positions were reversed. But you're right. If we're to make it through all this, there can be no room for hesitation. You're doing well. It's a beautiful night. I think I'll stay up to enjoy it while I still can. Rest well. People up ahead. Something's wrong. What then? You're a true soul. You can't die. Please, stay with us. I, I don't think he's conscious. C can you hear us, Ed? You, not a step closer. A strange symbol glows marked on their flesh, and something within you stirs in response. So sorry. It's our brother, True Soul Edwin. He's injured, and I. I wasn't thinking. 
something stirs deep within you, hungry and alert. It's taking something you'll never get back. The injured man locks eyes with you. The parasite writhes in your head. Your minds intertwine. You see his siblings, Andrik and Brenna, new recruits, yours to shepherd. Protect them. Mind the true soul. He will... He... He... Edwin! Ed! Please! He's with the Absolute now. A true soul. Thank the Absolute. Edwin! Our brother. He was chosen. Like you. Do you have orders for us? We were reporting to Edwin. I don't know any druids. What? Are you... Are you testing us? The Absolute is our goddess. She's going to rip down the old world order, start a new one. Then we'll be the ones with the power. Well, you will firstly, true soul. You don't need me to explain that. A true soul, like you, has been chosen by the Absolute. You speak with her voice. And when the time comes, the true souls, you, will rule. Ah, I will serve at no ruler's side but my queen's. I'm sorry, true soul. I only repeated what I thought I knew. It seems the Absolute still has a great deal to teach me. We know that all too well, sir, but the Absolute sent us here. We're looking for fugitives, survivors from that ship that crashed farther west of here. We don't know what they look like, but anyone who survived that crash is bound to be injured. That's enough to get us started. The Absolute wants them found, at any cost. You! Brenna, kill him! Where do I go from here? You've made a grave mistake. Uh -huh. The tadpole lets us command the minds of others. An interesting development, but one to be treated with caution. For better or for worse. No. Our only cause is to deny it. This power is just another symptom of disease, and every use will sicken us further. My thoughts exactly. Let's have a look. Strange power resonates within the corpse. It calls to you. Your limbs move of their own accord. There's something of value in something your mind craves. Why let its host's memories go to waste? The tadpole has absorbed it all. Its experience could nourish you, strengthen you.
your muscles loosen. The tadpole breaks free of its deceased host. Your mind is your own again. Punish someone who wronged you. Wrong me how? Oh, say, murder or theft. Killing is good. It calls the weak. But theft would be paid for painfully, a thousand times over. Hmm, good to know. Surrounded. Here's how this goes. You take one step further, and we'll fill your front with arrows. Or you turn around, and your backside gets the same treatment. The mark glows, but you feel nothing in response. Your illithid power is beyond reach until you rest. it's best to save our strength for a real threat. Go on then, just keep your nose clean. <laughs> Look what we got here. Another little birdie wanting to fly. Stop this thing! <laughs> Flap those wings some more, and I'll feed you a worm. And you. Hope you got a stomach for rights. What's it bloody look like? We're teaching this here pipsqueak to fly. Cause it makes me laugh. <laughs> You want this little cave lurking what's it? Find your own. He's ours! The mark glows, but you feel nothing in response. Your illithid power is beyond reach until you rest. In this run, eh? We're leaving. What about the gnome? Ain't we supposed to bring him to... I said we're leaving! There's plenty of sport and rich pickings out there for us. All right, then. Fresh meat. What if this crash doesn't work? What if you can fail you? If I can reach the crash. Cut me loose! Oh, bag of Kabara. There's pustulant thugs. Well, get on with it. Whatever you are. You saved me, now you'll extort me. That's how this works, yes? Uh, my own fault, really. I should have dropped my pack and outrun those bastards. Alas. Take my pack, if you can find it. The only reason those goblins caught me was its weight. I'll travel lightly from now on. 
Ignorance is alive and well, it seems. Deep gnomes aren't restricted to the Underdark, you know. I've lived in Baldur's Gate for years. I'm in search of a friend. I fear he's in trouble. See this? I gave it to him years ago before I left home. I found it around the neck of a thug in the lower city. It was speckled with blood. My friend, nowhere to be found. But I still have hope. I have reason to believe he's in the Underdark. Hopefully, I'll pick up his trail from there. I always help my friends. On that note, <clears throat> I bid thee farewell. If we should meet again, well, we will have met again. Hmm. I wasn't expecting it. But I'm glad to have some company on this journey. for the absolute or any god i follow two masters only gluttony and greed the goblins understand my appetites they sate my hunger for gold and the rest sate my hunger for meat boss goblin give gold we check brand good deal no talk. Am I not astonishing? A robust diet makes for a shrewd mind, you see. I am a gourmand. And you, a delicacy. Were I so lucky? We follow the sense of blood and gold to all lands fertile, friend. And this land proves particularly fruitful. I am, by all accounts, a student of higher commerce and extortion. Make me an offer. Tempt me. A brilliant notion and a boon to my aching belly. We have a deal, my tasty kibble. 
Take my bonehorn. One blow, and the ground will quake with my family name. Use it when the need arises, and never a moment before. Ogre kill everyone around, then Ogre eats them. Well spoken, indeed. Ogre kill everyone around. Am I not astonishing? A robust diet makes for a shrewd mind, you see. I am a gourmand. And you, a delicacy. Were I so lucky? We will keep close when you are ready. Sound the horn. Always a pleasure. Go ahead. I'm listening. Moving ahead. The goblins still infest the roads. As long as their leaders live, Zevlor's people are trapped. Karlak's fires raged in Baldur's Gate before she escaped to Avernus, as my source told it. And she was planning to return. One of the Archdevil Zariel's own. Chaos incarnate, a devil with pure fire for a heart. I made my way to Avernus to stop her. She fled from my reach, even climbed aboard the Mind Flayer ship as it screeched through the hells. I followed in close pursuit. I can't bear to imagine the lives Karlak might be taking, the damage she might be doing. A powerful friend with a keen interest in privacy. I'm sworn to say no more. All right. What else is on your mind? My father once said, one does not pursue a champion's life. One merely answers its call. So it was for me. I was hunting near the cloakwood when I heard it. A child crying out from a lone farmstead. I found him in the fields flanked by goblins. His mother's corpse bled into the soil next to him. I don't remember much of the battle, but I remember drying the boy's tears after. Proud. No. Angry. Angry at the monsters preying on innocence. Angry at the so-called good gods for tolerating the cruelty of the evil. Angry at myself that it took so long for me to see the coast suffering. The frontiers demanded a blade. And so I heeded. And it's nice to meet someone of your talents. Having a worm wriggling in my skull didn't instill much confidence in the days ahead. With you as my ally, the future looks a little less daunting. A most vicious one, in fact. It's made from pure bloodstone, carved from the Galena Mountains just north of the Moonsea. A reminder that sometimes blood must be shed and sacrifices must be made. Ah. But that story is reserved for lifetime friends and calmer days. By all means. What else is on your mind? Chuck, be wary of false promises. The missing druid, Halsin, was it? 
He may be talented, but only a Githyanki Zathis can cleanse an embedded tadpole. Yes, in great detail. It starts with a fever and memory loss. Then you start to hallucinate. Your hair falls out, and you bleed from every orifice. Your bones will change form. Your jaw will split to allow room for four great tentacles. All skin will turn to gore and be shed to reveal new flesh underneath. Then you have ceased to exist, and a mind flayer is born. Words forged in steel. May your actions express the same metal. We must find my kind and be rid of the parasite. It's as simple as that. The first symptoms should have long since started, though. That is what puzzles me. Yes, if you give it no further thought. But anomalies lead to surprises. Bad surprises. Besides, what hasn't happened may yet come to pass. I expect I am your first. Of course you haven't. They would have cut you from navel to neck. You are no less alien to me than I am to you. I know of your kind, but I do not often encounter them. Those diminutive scales of yours look like mistakes. It was an observation, not a compliment. No matter. I do not intend to stay long in this place. So, we're traveling with the famed Blade of Frontiers. I feel safer already. Oh, what's to tell? I'm a magistrate back in the city. It's all rather tedious. I wasn't expecting it, but I'm glad to have some company on this journey. We've been through quite a lot, with likely more to come. Care to narrow it down a little? I suppose we'd go our separate ways. Not a slight on your company, of course. Perhaps. Perhaps not. If we do survive, we'll have separate lives to return to. I need to get to Baldur's Gate. There's someone waiting for me there. Someone I have to reach. As soon as possible. Thank you. And you're right. It's... a delicate matter. Not something for light conversation. I don't think I've ever had a confidant quite like you. And if I have, I can't remember them. Must I? Thinking about it won't help. We know what to do, so let's do it. Find a way to rid ourselves of these things. Personally, I think finding this Halsin is our best bet. I'm not too hopeful that a Gith crash will actually prove our salvation, but worth keeping in mind. You don't sleep well, flitting between dreams and nightmares. Maybe you wake up because you know something is wrong, or maybe you just get lucky. Shit. No, no, it's not what it looks like. I swear. I... I wasn't going to hurt you. I... I just needed... well... blood. There, in the dim firelight, you see him for what he really is. A vampire. A slave to sanguine hunger. I've never killed anyone. Well, not for food. I feed on animals, boars, deer, 
kobolds. Whatever I can get, it's not enough. Not if I have to fight. I feel so weak. If I just had a little blood, I could think clearer. Fight better. Please. A strange sensation courses through you, and your companion's mind unfolds, secrets half revealed. At best, I was sure you'd say no. More likely, you'd ram a stake through my ribs. No. I needed you to trust me. And you can trust me. Because we don't have a choice. Not if we're going to save ourselves from these worms. I need you alive. You need me strong. Please, only be a taste, I swear. I'll be well, you'll be fine. And everything can go back to normal. Ah, of course. I shall be gentle as a babe. Let's make ourselves comfortable, shall we? It's like a shard of ice into your neck. A quick, sharp pain that fades to throbbing numbness. Your breath catches, your pulse quickens. yourself. You can feel your blood racing, coursing through both your bodies. A gentle, numb feeling starts to spread. <sighs> uh, of course. I was just swept up in the moment. Hmm. But it worked. I feel good. Strong. Happy. But I didn't. And that's what matters. And look what you've gained. Together, we can take on the world. shouldn't take long. So many people need killing. Now, if you'll excuse me, you're invigorating, but I need something more filling. This is a gift, you know. I won't forget it. You watch as he stalks towards the forest, stronger, more confident, ready to hunt. Look it, Claw. Sapper's here. Unless you've got another reason to be here. Feck sight. Let's try to be diplomatic, shall we? Goblins don't come by the handfuls, but by the dozens. As the symbol glows, power courses through you. Authority. Your mind lurches, reeling suddenly as if bitten. Easy, lads. We got a true soul coming through. Lads are celebrating the raid on Joaquin's rest. We captured a duke, we did, all the way from the city. 
I, I'm sure the higher-ups will make sure you get the best of the spoils, your excelness. The boss is in the temple inside. Uh, Mindara, too. And, and Priestess Gug can show you how many new recruits we got. I don't know any house in your excelness. Oh, one of them thieves. If he ain't dead, he's in the pits with the rest of them. Down in the pits, no less. Sounds ominous among creatures that love blood sports. Better step to it. Walk oh, is stupid. the overwhelming authority that you've used on others, only infinitely stronger, and turned against you. Your vision clouds, leaving you in a dark, featureless shadowscape, nothingness in every direction. Then there are three figures before you, an armored male elf exuding power and command, a handsome younger man with a quick, easy smile. And a pale young woman with even paler eyes. These are my chosen. They speak for me. Aid their search for the prison, and you will be worthy to stand beside them. Give me that look. I don't know what just happened any more than you do. We should keep going. The voice is gone. Muted by this... this gith relic. Why does a half-elf carry it? was the Absolute speaking to us, but we managed to shield ourselves. We should keep moving. I don't know. Not exactly. All I know is it's important I get it back to Baldur's Gate. At any cost. Servant of Shah. My home is a secret cloister in Baldur's Gate. I need to bring that artifact back there, no matter what. I can't tell you any more. This mission required utmost secrecy. We all submitted to having our memories suppressed so that we couldn't betray Shah's confidence. If I reach my contact in the city, I'll have my memories restored. Until then, I have to guard the artifact with my life. There. You have the truth, for all it's worth. Let's continue. You worship Shah? Blimey. She and my beloved Mistra are not exactly friends. Hmm. 
No need to thank me. This is out of pure necessity. Pure desperation, in fact. Sounds like they've captured themselves a bar. Apollo, I bar and wine for great glory. Draw Reichsland's great bar. With fragulous crown and with scepter abraid, draw Ragsland, short work of the innkeeper made. <laughs> the inn burnt to ash. The captives were many. Goblet kind had reduced them to cowering filfenny. So raise it, your goblets, and drain them with pride. Draw Ragsland. The true soul had let you go out. Who's that? Friend of yours? You up to something? Oh, certainly not. What are you doing? I'm busy here. You lying. To you? Never. Let's continue our ballad. <coughs> draw Ragslin, draw Ragslin. Um, uh, um, uh, I am a draw Ragslin. Um, um, Comptuous, uh, draw Ragslin. Uh, um. You broke him. Wait, wait. Draw Ragslin. We pay. We. Come on, pigeon. Back to your cage. Now, oh, look what you've done. Come on! Of course. My name's Gribbo, idiot! Right, yes. Not fool me. That wizard burnt me something proper. Said For the last did. time. That was word a we said about. It was a bloke. We have to oh. find housing before it's too late. I doubt these goblins care much for their prey. No go inside. Inside boring. Ah, glad you've a moment for me. My, um, predicament has become rather urgent. I need a magical artifact to consume. Right now. We've already found enough magic to soothe its disquiet. If you'll just give me what I need. Thank you. Oh, that hit the spot. I can feel it work. The magic, it's like a lullaby that sings to sleep the demon inside. A metaphorical demon, I haste to point out, but no less dangerous. And no less bound to wake up again to continue its ravages. Such is the nature of all monsters. Grateful as I am, the course of our camaraderie is much better served by not taking that particular detour. Not just yet. Sincerely, though, I understand I ask a lot from you with few answers in return. But in time, all will be told. My lord, I bow to your boundless kindness. What path lies before? <laughs> my, my, 
What manner of place is this? A path to redemption? Or a road to damnation? Hard to say, for your journey is just beginning. What would suit the occasion? Hmm... The words to a lullaby, perhaps? The mouse smiled brightly. It outfoxed the cat. Then down came the claw. And that... Love... Was that? <laughs> they do know how to write them in Cormir, don't they? Well met. I am Raphael, very much at your service. Neither. The fox, rather. Hiding, in a word. A silent observer, about to break the silence. Of course, what I have to say merits some privacy, as well as some more... Let's call it... Refinement. This quaint little scene is decidedly too middle of nowhere for my tastes. Come. Uh, middle of somewhere. The house of hope, where the tired come to rest and the famished come to feed lavishly. Go on, partake, enjoy your supper. After all, it might just be your last. <laughs> Are you not entertained? Well, far be it from me to disappoint. What's better than a devil you don't know? <laughs> a devil you do. Am I a friend? Potentially. An adversary? Conceivably. But a savior? That's for certain. Come now. Why play hard to get when you're in Deep over your tadpoled head. One skull, two tenants, and no solution in sight. I could fix it all like that. And what is madness but a denial of reality? Still, I have a feeling you change your mind before it's changed for you. Try to cure yourself. Shop around. Beg, borrow, and steal. Exhaust every possibility until none are left. And when hope has been whittled down to the very marrow of despair, that's when you'll come knocking on my door. Hope. <laughs> Such a tease. <laughs> I've always wondered what a laughing mind flayer sounds like. All those pretty little symptoms. Sundering skin, dissolving guts, they haven't manifested yet, have they? One might say, you're a paragon of luck. I'll be there when it runs out. Bloody hells. Literally. Just when I think I've got a grasp on our dilemma, a devil shows up. <sighs> no matter. We've dealt with every other oddity thrown at us lately. We can handle this one too.
Now, as for this Raphael, he knows our secret. He claims he can help. What do you make of him? No doubts at all. He seemed powerful and very knowledgeable about our problem. Not the worst prospect we've stumbled across. As long as you can look past what he is. I'll tell you in due course. I just wanted to see how close we are in thinking, first of all. I've made you doubt yourself. Sorry, not what I intended. Let's take time to think about it. Some food and rest. Things will be clear then. Hmm. Or is it? Suddenly I'm not so sure. Isn't it terrible when someone causes you to doubt yourself? Perhaps you're right. Perhaps the devil has our best interests at heart and wants nothing in return. We could throw ourselves at his feet, be they cloven or otherwise. Or perhaps we shouldn't. Bravo. He had me worried for a moment. He's clever. My order uses the same tactic when dealing with enemies of Shah. You don't need a scourge or a rack to break people. Fear and self-doubt are sufficient. When actual pain comes, the victim's already done the heavy lifting for their torturer. There were no right answers with that devil. He was toying with his food. Us. I respect his craft. As should you. Watch out for that devil. You already know my biggest secrets. What more can you ask? What, besides my life's calling and the greatest problem I've ever faced? Well, I like night orchids and can't swim. Is that the sort of thing you meant? It's a deal. The wound on my hand. It never quite heals. And sometimes it causes terrible pain to rip through me. It's my burden, though, from Lady Shah. I can feel her influence somehow. I don't think so, but you're sweet to ask. Maybe just be patient the next time you see me wince or cry out. It'll pass quickly enough. It always does. Pain is sacred to followers of Lady Shah. Pain will give way to loss and then to the peace of her eternal darkness. You can tolerate a great deal of suffering so long as it has meaning. difficult to say. Sometimes I wonder if it's supposed to be guiding me, punishing me, testing me. But perhaps it's none of those. Perhaps it's completely random. I'd like to hope there's more to it than that. Some meaning that Lady Shah will reveal to me when the time is right. Until then, all I can do is endure.
I cannot say. Not with what I can recall. But even then, it would not be for me to question her will. Lady Shah has her reasons. This devil, Raphael, flaunts his paltry wings as if he wants to impress us. You saw the red dragon slaying his infernal kin above hell's fires, did you not? Next to a dragon, the devil's a gnat. When I am Kithrak, I will take my queen Vlakith his head as a trophy. I will sit astride one. It is only a matter of time. I will ride a red dragon. I will wield the silver sword, and I will conquer every layer of hell, should my queen command it. They are gifts to my queen from the goddess Tiamat herself. They reside in the great city of Tunarath, awaiting the privilege of battle. Do not pity them. They reap great riches from their service, gold and otherwise. Dragon's blood flows in you, does it not? Perhaps you might be availed of the riches I offer. We shall know in time. The Geich are my kind's mortal enemy. It is not unusual for the Kithrak to give chase, to penetrate the Hells. This is unusual. But I'm not one to question the wisdom of my queen. I can see but to the horizon. Blackest sight pierces the many planes. Do you feel as flattered as I do? Fight it to dine with a devil. <laughs> Don't let his bluster fool you. All that talk of desperation merely illustrates his own. I think he wants something from us. Badly. And in that knowledge lies our opportunity. There's no such thing as an absolute certainty. Let me play the devil's advocate. The man is too eager. Do not dismiss his offer out of hand. But if there's one quality all the denizens of the hells embody, it's ambition. A quality they share with many humans, come to think of it. by figuring out his true intentions. Fact one, there's something very strange and very powerful about our tadpoles. Fact two, a devil offers to take it away. Devils aren't known to aid mortals out of simple kindness. Whatever Raphael wants, we must be the key to getting it, along with our tadpoles. So, we say for now, we wait. If I'm right, Raphael will seek us out again, and when he does, there's a mighty bargain to be made. Remember his Cormirian rhyme? Down came the claw. Perhaps we should start growing our nails. A chill runs down your spine. Lady Shah's twin and nemesis, the moon goddess Saluna, was once worshipped here. Yet this place clearly fell to ruins long before goblins infested it. What happened here? No matter. The truth will be revealed in time. You silently offer a prayer to Shah and her glory. How much farther can I go? If I were you, I'd get me ass back to the party before somebody put me to work. I need a quick word. Praise his ever-bleeding axe. Praise his throne of flaming iron. Praise Maglubiet. You know Maglubiet. A tyrannical deity who treats his goblinoid followers as slaves. 
trying to interrupt my prayers? Scared of a real god? You're as goomless as the rest of them. Cause I'm loyal to McLoviet. Cause I ain't having my head turned by some upstart god. They like feasting, fighting, and fornicating. Who doesn't? Absolute gives them that. Gotta know your place in the world, though. McLoviet's kept us in line. That's what a god's supposed to do. Wish I got a turn in the bear. Mm. Lucky. <laughs> it's it again! Keep your hands steady, three. <laughs> again! Again! Make it squeal again. It's staying right here. The beast came in here with those robbers, killed Dink and Mitch too. Boss is thinking of serving it to the wolves. But first, three. More stones. Make it nice and bloody. Yeah! Hit his head! I want to hear more noises! The mark glows, but you feel nothing in response. Your illithid power is beyond reach until you rest. Pardon the viscera. One should cherish all of nature's bounty, but goblin guts are quite far down the list. You aided a bear without knowing if it would savage you. <laughs> a true friend of nature. Or perhaps a lunatic. Either way, I owe thanks. I am the druid Halson. Yes, but just Halson will suffice. Unbecoming to demand honorifics from the one who saved my hide. Parasites in your head that... You mean you have one of them? Father, preserve you, child. You're infected, aren't you? The mind flares spawn. But something's different. You're aware of the monster inside you. You don't bow to the absolute like the true souls do. How is this possible? Perhaps, but I wouldn't want to place all my faith in blind luck. You weren't speaking lightly when you said you needed help. Let me tell you what I know. I've been studying these parasites for a while now. Ever since I discovered these so-called true souls are infected with them, someone is using very powerful magic to modify these tadpoles. They're using them to exert control over the infected. I'm sorry to say... I can't undo that magic, which means I can't cure you. But that doesn't mean I can't help. I didn't find what I came here for, a way to remove the tadpoles. But I found the next best thing. I found out where they come from. That must be where these enchantments are placed on them. And it's where you'll find your cure.
I overheard that the cultists are sending all of their captives to Moonrise Towers. Innocents go in, true souls come out. Given that all of these true souls are infected, it has to be the source for this magic. If you want to find a cure, you must head there and discover how the tadpoles are being manipulated. I wish I could, but there's still work I've yet to finish. Blood I've yet to spill. I've no right to ask more of you, but if you could help me, I'd be free to join your journey to Moonrise. I cannot allow these butchers to threaten my grove. The natural order must be protected. My thanks. If you prevail, I'll owe you the debt of a lifetime. Rare is the beast that survives decapitation. Help me eliminate the drow Minthara, the hobgoblin draw Ragslin, and that perversion of a priestess, Gut. They are the ones holding these parasites together. Remove them, and nature will cure itself. Be warned. My presence could make things more difficult. I can only restrain my bear form so much. I won't be able to help but attack goblins. If I join you, we'll likely have to slaughter this entire place. You may want to use discretion when approaching the goblin leaders. May Sylvanus guide your hand. Focus on the leaders. That's all it will take to restore the balance here. chances.
all by my hand. Truly did it. The leader's dead. <laughs> Praise Sylvanus. No, that's not right. Praise you, my friend. The Grove owes you a debt beyond measure. Killing's never my first choice, but those three were too dangerous to leave alive. And you'll receive it soon enough. Return to the Grove. I'll make my own way there. I can see to some matters there, and we can discuss what comes next amidst more bucolic surroundings than here. The air is heavy. Moisture drips down your forehead. Pain shoots through your fingers. Your hands shake as they reach upward. Your forehead remains drenched no matter how much you wipe. Chukil Gek Vlaketh Mazathok! Can you feel it crawling through you? Tendrils squirming in your chest, gripping your heart, piercing your belly, your bones popping, your flesh swelling. I can. I see it in you. I feel it in me. We are lost. I will be quick with my blade. First you, then the others, then myself. Your minds intertwine. You sense a touch of uncertainty, a touch of disgust. I cannot trust my own mind, so it seems I must trust yours. I will wait, but know this, I am watching. If the sickness does not pass come dawn, I will end us all. I came just in time. You are transforming. Yes, you have. I saved you before. And I'm here to save you again. Don't worry. You will not become a Mind Flayer. Not while I'm around. I'll protect you. We haven't much time, so listen closely. There is great potential within you. It comes from that parasite. 
Your instinct is to resist the power it gives, but you must accept it. Nurture it. I will keep it from consuming you, but for the sake of both of us, you must learn to wield it. for the fate of Faerun, a fight we are losing, for now. You can change that, but only if you embrace your potential. I have to go. The enemy is closing in. I will be back. for the two of us. Did you have any strange dreams of late? Vivid ones? Damn. I was hoping my imagination had gotten the better of me. But this must be something more. This dream companion wanted me to use the tadpole, use its power. Whoever it was claimed to be an ally, but I don't know. It seems like we can't escape this mess, in the waking world or otherwise. I think I know what you mean. There's an undeniable rapport, and yet we haven't made time for each other. Time alone. Easily remedied, if you like. I know a place. Not just yet. Let's choose our moment. Some quiet night, when the others are asleep and there's no distractions. I'll come for you. There's something I want to talk to you about. Something important. I could have died in that pod, back on the Nautiloid. You could have died, spending precious moments trying to free me, but you did it anyway. I owe you my life. I'm trying to say that you've earned my trust in a way very few ever have. I want that to mean something. I want you to know more about me. At least, from what I can remember. As long as I prayed to Lady Shah, I've wished to serve her as a dark justicia. There is scarcely a greater way to fully dedicate yourself to Lady Shah, save perhaps if you become the head of her church. To become a dark justicia is to become the Night Singer's sword arm. Her implement with which she will cast down the unbelievers and win the final battle to restore her perfect, endless darkness. It's all I ever wanted. I prayed it was my calling. But Mother forbid me from seeking to prove myself worthy of the rank. She said I was not ready. Not my mother, Mother, I should add. The Mother Superior head of Lady Shah's enclave in Baldur's Gate. Sometimes I wonder if she would ever deem me ready. I owe her everything, and I only wish to serve, yet she can prove... inscrutable. I... 
I don't know. Perhaps if I succeed in my mission and reach Baldur's Gate, hope has little place amongst Lady Shah's children. It's an illusion, a distraction. But for this, I hope my time will yet come. A scout just reported. The goblin's leadership has been decimated. We might escape this place yet. And I hear you are the one to thank. I'm grateful. I took a collection from all of us. It isn't much, but you've earned it. It's not enough, but it's all we have. Hal Sin will likely want to thank you too, mind. He returned just a while ago. I believe he's catching up with Corker. As for us... No armies at our heels. Amazing. We can finally leave. But perhaps we need not speak of farewells. We'll join your camp tonight to celebrate if you'll have us. You took it upon yourself to undertake the right of thorns. I ought to exile you from this place forever. Instead, I shall listen to the explanation that you owe me. I owe you nothing. Goblins swarmed us like roaches while you stumbled after the past. You chose to abandon us. I chose to protect us. Silence. The right has been ended. I will allow you to stay. But consider yourself a novice anew. You have forgotten the ways of the druids, our place in the natural order. You shall learn it all once again, right here. Backslide, and nature's fury will crush you. As you wish, Master Helsin. She shows great insolence, but time will humble her, and the Grove still needs her. You will soon see why, but enough of that for now. I owe you my thanks. The Grove stands, nature prevails, and again I am in your debt. Speak to Wrath, he will reward you for your efforts. Tomorrow morning, we shall discuss what is to come. You've done it. You brought Halcyn back. Thank you. No, thanks is not enough. May Sylvanus bless you for all your days. I cannot imagine taking on a camp full of goblins was a simple task. As am I. The Grove will be whole again. And I promised you a reward, didn't I? Let me show you on your map where you can find the cash. Take this rune. You'll need it. Place it among the pedestals inside our library. When the wolf glows brightest, everything in the vault below will be yours. infernal for cheers or possibly turnip I need 
to dance! No. No, I need to lie down. Thank you. There's that confidence I like. I thank you for seeking me out. Amid all this merriment, I wasn't sure we'd have a chance to speak this evening. I was hoping you'd spare me a moment. There was something rather magical I wished to show you. As they say in Waterdeep, in wine there is truth. That's usually followed by, in water there is good sense. I promise you, my offer is a perfectly sober one. So, what do you say? Too bad. One should never be afraid to live life to the fullest. Poetic stuff. Something like... Yeah, hells. I was hoping you wouldn't notice I was gone. <laughs> oh, the blade doesn't sulk. I was just reflecting on what has happened and not wanting to be Mr. Serious at a celebration. In truth, I don't feel in a festive mood, and I didn't want to cast a grey cloud over the night. These people are still in danger. Karlak, the creature from hell, will still threaten them, as will a thousand other perils. They aren't ready to get on the road on their own. <laughs> Your words cheer me more than any party could. But off with you. This is your day. Have a dance. Enjoy the music. If not over, then through. Go on now. Don't waste a night like this talking to me. We'll discuss your problem tomorrow. Go on, enjoy yourself. Seek out some wine before it runs dry. There are a lot of thirsty people around here. You have no idea how good it feels to see these people smiling. The singing we could probably do without, but even so, thank you. I have seen the Kithraki tear a screaming Neogi's legs from its belly to fashion into blades. Yet, they could not match your nerve today. It was enough to drive me to madness. A pity for us both you've turned your back on me so often. Vlakith demands of me no less. If only you'd earned the right to lay at my side. Come morning, you will wonder. You will wonder how my lips might have tasted. How my fingers on your skin might have felt. Oh, but do enjoy yourself this night. I intend to myself. Hope you're enjoying the night, hero. I certainly am. Cheers to many more like this. This might be the wine talking, but I'm feeling inspired. Thinking of writing my next song about you. I need an angle. Any ideas? One raunchy ballad coming up. You know, I never pictured myself as a hero. Never thought I'd be the one they'd toast for saving so many lives. And now that I'm here... I hate it. This is awful. True. That was fun. Still, I would have liked more for my trouble than a pat on the head and vinegar for wine. I'm just looking for a little more excitement, a little more fun. 
Don't be so sour. I like a good time as much as anyone. You know, we could always make our own entertainment, darling. Get a little closer, so to speak. Right, but don't take too long. You're not the only tasty morsel around here. Everyone seems to be in high spirits. Strange. You know who I never thought I'd find myself caring for? Exactly right. Never gave them much thought. Certainly not that bunch in the grove. Yet we came through for them. We saved their lives. Odd. Something like that. I was taught to reject anything that distracted from Shah. But there'll be time for penance later. Share a bottle with me? We should wait a little while. Until the others have drifted off. Not tonight. Don't forget our little agreement. As soon as things quiet down here... Ah, another. Thy name has been recorded. I shall be here in thy camp, for whenever thou hast need of my services. Beyond mortal realms, there doth exist an amalgamation of spirits akin to thine own, ensnared by the treacherous cult of the Absolute, felled in its name. They bear great discontentment with their destiny. For a mere pittance of coin, I might summon the worthiest among them to lend aid to thy undertaking. Most willingly, forsooth. Their passions doth run deep for what hath been wrought upon them. Suspicion always haunts the guilty mind. My services are all that I can proffer thee. What thou wilt do with them is for thee to undertake. Should thou or any of thy compatriots perish, I will cleave soul to body once more. A matter of coin. Such is life, outrage leading to a singular end. afford to lose any more of them. Go on, do your rounds. But if they hand you something purple, don't drink it. I think they got into Ethel's potions. You came through for us. That's a change from most adults I know. And that sounds like the wine drowning your wit. Go on, enjoy yourself. I've squirreled away a few extra bottles. When the barrel's tapped out, I'll be there to save the night. For a price, of course. You made it. Come here, sit with me.
so eager. I'm surprised it took you this long. Well, to begin, I think a toast is in order. Any suggestions? Bold. What does us entail? I suppose I'll find out. To us. Now tell me something about yourself. And no tadpoles, dragons, marauding goblins or anything like that. Something about you. Seems like you truly know the city. I never got to explore it to my liking. Don't stop now. Not just as things are getting interesting. Don't laugh, but I'm not quite sure I have anything to share. When you worship Shard, secrecy is everything. We'll sacrifice our own memories when ordered to. A lot of the little things... ...they're lost to me right now. Hm. I did. And you remembered. You're sweet. There's still plenty of wine, and the whole night is ahead of us. Nearly light. The others will be awake soon. Another moment won't kill them, I suppose. Well, it might, but let's take that risk. Thank you for last night. Me too. She trails off. You read an invitation in her eyes. That didn't hurt, did it? I should think so. Let's head back, if we must. I trust you enjoyed your evening. After all your efforts, it was well deserved. It may be some time before you're afforded another such night. There is much to be done, and I promised I would help you however I could. I'm certain a cure for you can be found at Moonrise Towers, but it's complicated. The journey specifically, it's extremely perilous, though it seems you're well accustomed to navigating danger. I suppose it was too much to hope we were going to be cured here and now. To Moonrise, then. To get to the towers, you'll need to pass through a terrible place. A cursed place. This curse shrouds everything in shadow. You will not find life, light, or anything natural there. Any who linger are twisted by the curse. They become shadow beings, tormented, dangerous souls. You could go overland along the Risen Road or through the mountains. Easier at first, but you'll run into the Shadow Curse eventually. You could also go under. There is a tunnel somewhere in the ruined Temple of Saluna, 
It leads to Moonrise Towers through the Underdark. Long ago, a man called Ketherick Thorn built a secret stronghold deep down there, before rallying a whole army of Dark Justicias, Shah worshippers. Dark Justicias? I must see for myself. Aridan and his lot were looking for a way down there. They were promised riches if they retrieved a relic called the Night Song. But I think there's more. From this stronghold, Ketherick's forces could access both the Temple of Saluna and Moonrise Towers. But he was defeated before he could launch an attack. If you can find this place, I'll wager it will reveal a more direct path to Moonrise Towers. And maybe even bypass the worst of the Shadow Curse. You'll need to pick it up where Aradin left off. Find the hidden entrance. It's somewhere in the Temple of Saluna. The decision is yours, but I'd favor the Underdark. Even a place like that is the lesser evil compared to the Shadow-Cursed Lands. Anything is preferable to risking the Shadow Curse. I would like to join your camp, if you'll allow me. I can offer my skills, my counsel. I've long sought to return to Moonrise Towers. It seems our fates have aligned. I've chosen a successor as first druid, Francesca of the High Forest. A bird's already been dispatched to summon her. I need her to stay focused on her training. The Grove will need a skilled healer in my absence. The Grove needs to move beyond the mistakes of the past. What it needs is an unknown quantity. An outsider who can enforce the Oak Father's teachings without bias. This is why I chose Francesca. She will restore simplicity and purity to the Grove in my absence. Resentment will spring up like mushrooms no matter what I do. You cannot please everyone, and you'd be a fool to try. Now, we've quite the journey ahead. Best get started. Hmm. Just thought of something. My apologies. Huh. Not quite myself just yet. I had the strangest dream last night. A visitor came to me. A vision of unparalleled beauty and power. She told me she was watching over me, protecting me, and that our tadpoles could prove beneficial if we embrace what powers they have to offer. An uncanny apparition. I'm not entirely sure what to make of it. In all my readings on the effects of illithid parasites, I've never come across any accounts of correlating dreams between infected parties. Another unique quality of our predicament, perhaps. Hmm. Are you inclined to take these visitors at their word? Nothing wrong with maintaining a healthy suspicion in such matters. Still, it might be wiser to keep an open mind on the matter. Our visitors' promises of aid might yet bear valuable fruit. We all have our burdens, one way or the other. I question the wisdom of that decision, but so be it. I'll be here in the meantime, idling away the hours. I had a dream last night, a vivid one, 
And so did you, judging from the way my tadpole is tingling. Someone came to me and promised to protect me while claiming that the parasite could empower me. Tempting as these powers sound, we should recognize this dream for what it is, the tadpole's little trick. No good ever came from trusting honey-tongued strangers conjured up by a lithid worms. Well said. This dream figure is no friend to us. He brings to mind a story. The Devil with the Silver Tongue. An old fairy tale my father read to me. The kind with a hero, a villain, and a moral. A farmer made a deal with the devil, so the story goes. In exchange for the farmer's dearest fruit, the devil granted him a bottomless coin purse. The farmer's dearest fruit, naturally, was no apple nor peach, but his beloved daughter. We can learn a lot from fairy tales, don't you think? Refuse him, no matter how tempting the offer, no matter how delicious the feast he lays out for you, the cost will be too great. Take a single step towards him, and he'll dog you the whole journey. You might think you'd give up anything for a cure, but the devil won't take just anything. He'll take everything. That's the spirit. Oakfather's blessings to you. I studied one up close. Closer than most would care to be to those things. A drow attacked me and I defended myself. Afterwards, I was able to examine the tadpole that emerged. Hideous, but fascinating. Like nothing else in nature, I'm glad to say. It's had the whole region around Moonrise Towers in a chokehold of darkness and despair for years now. Those who remained are shadow cursed. If you don't die at their hands, then you become one of them. We have to get to Moonrise. But the less time we spend in its blighted surrounds, the better. Glick. I had a dream. As we all did, I suspect. Someone came to me and promised to protect me while claiming that the parasite could empower me. The parasite has taken root, it would seem. Every word, every promise, it is geek deception. A wise choice. These parasites are a threat to be destroyed, not an opportunity to be exploited. I had the strangest dream last night. Uh, there was a visitor promising me protection and all sorts of delicious powers from the parasites in our heads. Given our shared affliction, I suppose you had a similar dream. Excellent. Now we can see what these tadpoles can do for us. Is there a reason you're such an utter drip? I mean, do you have some sort of condition? Honestly, it's like you hate good news. Did you actually want something? Or are you just here to spoil my fun?
Who knows? Drow? Mind flayers? Death? Hopefully not ours. But maybe answers. If we can convince the right people to talk. All's well, I hope. No. I just wanted to see how you felt after the night we spent together. When we talked and kissed. I hope so too. Though I'm not sure what kind of courtship will be afforded, given all that we're facing. But if you want to see where this goes, I do as well. Very serious of you, but go ahead. It's strange. I've been dwelling on what I told you before about wanting to become a Dark Justicia. But perhaps I should be content with my lot. I'm already blessed to have you at my side, after all. Wouldn't you be in my place? If there's even the slightest chance that Shah worshippers remain within our reach, we should try and find them. Even if they're all long gone, and that seems quite likely from what we know, who knows what they may have left behind for us to use? My people are nothing if not resourceful. As long as I've prayed to Lady Shah, I've wished to serve her as a dark justicia. There is scarcely a greater way to fully dedicate yourself to Lady Shah, save perhaps if you become the head of her church. To become a Dark Justicia is to become the Night Singer's sword arm, her implement with which she will cast down the unbelievers and win the final battle to restore her perfect, endless darkness. It's all I ever wanted. I prayed it was my calling. But Mother forbid me from seeking to prove myself worthy of the rank. She said I was not ready. Not my... Mother, mother, I should add. The Mother Superior, head of Lady Shah's enclave in Baldur's Gate. Sometimes I wonder if she would ever deem me ready. I owe her everything, and I only wish to serve, yet she can prove... inscrutable. Justicias are hated by many, judged to be ruthless fanatics. Even the few who would accept a follower of Lady Shah would likely balk at a Justicia in their midst. But there's a simpler answer to your question. I simply forgot about the desire I had until I saw some things that reminded me. Now, I can't get it out of my mind. the understatement, but yes, I have it, and I'll guard it with my life. I have something to ask. You see a name etched into the leather. Scratch.
With a deep, heartbroken whine, the dog bows his head. He whines, but remains rooted by the corpse's side. And you have a soft skull. A gay tentacle will have no issues pushing through it. Is that a corpse? No, it is a fact. Life in this Faerun is love. Something tore right through these people. They didn't stand a chance. The beast reeks of brimstone and offal. <clears throat> Every breath is thick with blood. You hear what comes next before you see it. The sharp snapping of bones and a yelp of pain as her body starts to twist and undulate. You land a swift strike against her skull. She yelps, then goes still. Whatever horrific creature was growing inside the hyena dies along with her. On the victor's path, I'll strike you down. is overrun with gnolls. I saw you training those children. You were so gentle. That's not how I was taught. Cruel words strengthen neither heads nor hearts, Shadowheart. I wouldn't quite say that. <clears throat> I learned a lesson, after all. And came to resent your tutor, I bet. I taught them to fight, not to hate. I want to have a word. Need any supplies? We've fewer mouths to feed now. Two. Both stalwarts of Tyr. Sworn to uphold justice. The Lord of Justice sent us after a devil haunting this area. We squared off against her. We lost. Talk to Anders if you want the details. I don't have it in me to recount the horror. Who, who's there? Please. Keep your distance. You're welcome to shelter here, but we've grave injuries to tend to. A devil. The most deadly foe we've yet encountered. We are paladins of Tyr, Lord of Justice. He sent us after an infernal being, straight out of the Nine Hells, hiding in the form of a one-horned tiefling. One horn? Then you mean Karlak. Archdevil's bootlicker. You know her, which means you know what the fiend is capable of. She slaughtered countless refugees fleeing the Absolute. Yesterday, she butchered an entire family without mercy. We were lucky to survive our encounter with her. She ran toward the river when she saw we were merely wounded. Not dead. Down the hill from here. She must pay for her crimes. If you capture her, you will have served Tyr where we could not. This is the Sword of Justice, blessed by Tyr. I've wielded it since I swore my oath. It's all I have, but it's yours if you stop her. Bring me her head, and Tyr will consider her crimes repaid. May the just God guide you. Sip. Uh, 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 uh. Wow.
one horn, the stink of Avernus, Advocatus Diaboli. <sighs> well, I'll be God's damned. The Blade of Frontiers. Thought I'd shaken you for good. That'll teach me to underestimate you. Bloody right. An honor to be chased by the Blade of Frontiers, but I... Ugh! A great heat roars through you. Her heat, fiery as the hells. Then you're lost in visions of demonic armies as you tear through a landscape of fire and blood. The blood war. You saw it from above as the Nautiloid passed through Avernus. This woman was on the front line. What's that? Evidence. Proof that you're a devil. A gladiator in the Archdevil Zariel's army. I can explain, but it's a whole situation. If you just hear me out... Another vision. Karlak's blade raised, slicing through devils. Zariel's servants, as her eyes dart around, seeking escape. Her rage and desperation seep into you. She is a victim of the Blood War, not an agent of it. She's trying to trick us. Don't believe her lies. You saw the truth. I never wanted to serve Zariel. I was enlisted in her army against my will. Forced to fight, and fight I did. When I saw an opportunity to get away, I took it. Finally home. Or near it, anyway. You served her. That's enough to damn you. Will catches his breath and his lips straighten. Sheer dread twists his face. You don't know what you're saying. You're asking me to trust a devil. Listen to sense now. I don't want this to end badly for either of us. You know monsters, right? Better than anyone. Look into my eyes. Can't you see I'm not what you think? Shit. You really are no devil, are you? I've... I've been deceived. Oh, thank the gods. Thought I was gonna have to take your head. <laughs> you would have died in the attempt. But there have been enough threats today. Truce then, eh? Aye. Truce. I'm Karlak. But you already knew that. And you are... Well met, soldier. Nice to meet a friendly around here. It's been tough going so far. I may not be a devil, but I can put the Blade's reputation to work. How would you feel about helping me kill some evil bastards? Little background, if your moral compass needs something to point at. You already know I fought in the Blood War. I was good. Really good. It turns out, I've got a knack for killing demons. That made me a valuable asset. Zariel, the Archdevil herself, made me as her personal attack dog. I played along until I could get the fuck out of there. But devils don't like to lose their assets. <laughs> Zariel liked it so little. She sent a bunch of goons, so-called Paladins of Tear, to take me back. Problem is, I'm not going. Don't worry, I'll lead the charge. But I could use your help. There's a lot of them and only one of me. After that, we can team up. Take Faerun by the short hairs. Sound good? Yes. They cornered me outside the toll house just up the hill. Doubt they've gone far after the scorching I gave them. Ah, uh, hang on though. Looks like you've got enough backup at your side. Not sure there's room for me. I'll catch up with you when it's time to camp for now. But don't get to any of the fun stuff without me. Got it? So, 
Will with a Y. Why? Why? That's right. But why? Why, why? A great uncle to name, my father said. But I just figured he couldn't spell. You've been witness to a pantomime, I'm sorry to say. And I've played my part all too poorly. I can say only this. Karlak's not the only one who's had a villain's knife held to their throats. Chuk. What manner of hero is so shrouded in secrets? I have never called myself hero. But I am bound to an oath. One night soon when we make camp, the veil will be lifted, and I'll pay my penance. You're not in any danger, I promise. I can't say the same about me. Karlax got the brawn of a warrior and the wiles of a survivor. Best of all, she speaks her mind plainly and fully. Show her due respect. Chuk, you believe you can survive without me? As you say, do not keep me waiting. My condition is worsening again. I need to consume some powerful magic or it may become volatile. Thank you. It is a strange experience. Each time anew, I can a lost soul is spelunking through the darkness that is me, only to be sacrificed on the dread altar of the heart. But doesn't feel quite right. I mean, it never feels right, but it relieves. This doesn't relieve. Oh. Mm. Mm. The magic isn't having the effect it should have. It's not like the last time, like a rainstorm that quells a forest fire. It merely drizzles. The embers still sizzle, though. Fire remains undefeated. I'm not certain what's going on, but nothing good. Please, I need to think. I need to retrace my steps to a glade of calm and think. Thank you for the artifact. A great deal of trouble it was, too. A great deal of trouble, indeed. Hmm? Depends on the type. Ice devils hate an inferno, but that's an easy one. Orthons love projectiles. What they don't love is getting their bombs lobbed right back in their faces. Demons, on the other hand, every demon is absolutely singular. You can't ever think you've got them typed out. Sharp instincts, sharp weapons, and a knack for improvisation. That's the only way to survive them. <laughs> anyway, what were we talking about? Let's go, go, go. You brought her here. We won't survive another assault. Leave us in peace, and we shall leave you in kind. Cut the crap, Anders. I know what you are. Don't let her hurt us. Please. We just want to go home. There's something in the squint of his eye. You suspect he's lying. Enough! Enough! 
I'll not play pretend anymore. Karlak, you're going home in pieces if needs must. And you, you'll soon learn what it means to ally yourself with the likes of this garbage. Avernus was never my home. It was my prison. I'm free now. And I'm never going back! I'm never going back. And if any of Mummy's little friends want to pick up where the others left off, they'll find nothing but a pile of ash. That's right, she won't. She can't. She couldn't even lay a finger! <laughs> to do it. Whew. Had to let off a little steam after facing off with those ignots. Granted, the fire's lasting a little longer than it should. How do I look? Who? Me? This is the best day I've had in years. Hear that? Infernal engine for a heart. Let's me burn as hot as the hells. Seems to be running in overdrive since I left Avernus. Won't be seeing my mechanic anytime soon, so I'll just make the most of the extra heat. Just don't get too close till I've found a way to calm it down. High pain tolerance. And a dynamic duo of truly shitty bosses. But it's a bit early in the game to be getting into tragic backstories. Let's save the Scar show for later, after we've worked up an appetite for tragedy. Meanwhile, I'll need to find someone who can tune up my engine sooner rather than later. Believe me when I say this thing is hot. The first time I faced down those paladins, they let slip there was an infernal mechanic in the area. A tiefling. He might be able to stabilize things, if I can find him. Sounds like a good lead. Hopefully our guy will be among them. A tune-up would do this old tub a world of good. What can I do you for? So it's true. You scattered the goblins. Peace can finally return to this corner of the Sword Coast. Thank you. As am I. And I'm sure those poor refugees would quite agree. Of course. May you keep balance. Oh, Master Halson is past his prime. It might be time for another. I blow that. You did this grove a great favor. And now leave the rest to us. You think you saved us? 
You just prolonged the inevitable. Sooner or later, other outsiders will bring trouble to the Grove. We're free of the goblins, but the Grove is changed. Wounded. The days ahead won't be easy. I'm glad we have Halsin to guide us. Everything all right out there? Oh, I told him it wasn't safe out there. Get inside and I'll rustle up some bandages. You're dead! to surrender their valuables, even after death. Fools. Rising from the dead just to protect some dusty old baubles. <sighs> one day I'll catch a break. A lot of effort to hide one sarcophagus. It's a mystery to you.
Hell's fire. She's coming. Well, you've been naughty. And you know what happens when you're naughty. God damn it. Anyone but her. Well, you absolute stinker. You kept me a secret. Hmm. Time to let the Hellcat out of the bag. Call me Mazora. I'm Will's patron, the fount of his power. My pet's been unruly, and his leash needs a yank. We had a deal, Will. But Karlak's still breathing. I've taken more pleasant shits than you, Mizora, and at least those can be buried after. That's no kind of talk for a lady. By the way, Karlak, Zariel sends her regards. You told me! Devils only! She's a tiefling, not a monster! How precious. The little pupster's found his bark. Clause G, Section 9. Target shall be limited to the infernal, the demonic, the heartless, and the soulless. Karlak meets the criteria by virtue of having no heart. Don't you worry. That ship has long sailed the sticks. But a defiant pup must still pay his price. To wit. Oil burns in the fires of Avernus. The lightning storms of Dis strike his flesh. His soul passes through each layer of the hells, gaining their essence and their torment. have you done the promise broken a price paid you know the terms get used to the new form pet there's no going back some magic even I can't undo now let's see how the frontiers fare without their precious blade Karlak keep an eye on him would you I'll be keeping mine on you Oh, and Will, don't forget, our pact still stands. Ta-ta. I'll be honest, soldier, I'm reeling. Will hardly knows me, but he chose my life over his. Been a long time since someone stuck their neck out for me like that. You can say that again. When he was chasing me through Avernus, I thought he was just another sad merc. How wrong I was. Good time for a chat. Gods damn her straight back to the hells. Just look at me. I did what was right, and Mazora made me pay for it. I'd be hunting devils and demons, she said. Traitors and hypocrites, heartless evils of all sorts, but not... Not Zariel's victims. Not innocent tieflings. Warlock pets tend to be unforgiving from what you know of them. Will was lucky he didn't face a more severe punishment. All these years... You'd think it's a lesson I'd have well learned. 
It's Mazora who grants me the power to conjure armor and cast eldritch blasts. Before I was infected, I could even call hell beasts and summon festering clouds, but I promise you, every thrust of my blade and every flame I sparked was for the good of the coast. I can't utter the terms or circumstances of the pact. I can tell you most all else, but the pact, I'm forbidden unless Mazora permits it. But I'll say this. The moment I pacted myself to Mazora, I have not regretted for a heartbeat. It was my proudest deed. It was worth the sacrifice. All I can give you on that is my solemn word. Even in such fraught times as these, there's peace to be found in the stillness as evening draws in. I used to while away many hours just like these with my companion. I'm in far comfier surrounds. She preferred it when we were alone. Curled up before a crackling hearth with some ancient esoteric tome between us. Ink glinting in the firelight. I Geron's lost nose. No! I speak of Tara, my Tressim, assistant, my constant companion through all the ills and tribulations my hubris has thrust upon me. She'd be proud to see me keeping such fine company. The savior of those poor tieflings, no less. And I've given her precious little to be proud of recently. After I was afflicted with my condition, I locked myself in my tower for an entire year inconsolable, wallowing in my self-inflicted tragedy. I've given up on myself, but Tara never did. It was her encouragement, her research that led me to my treatment. Once we knew that magically infused items were the key, she went out to find them for me. She saved my life. She has a good heart. She would recognize the same in your actions here. I'm sure she'd approve of me lending myself to your efforts. You remind me of her somewhat. There's a steeliness in you. An unwavering tenacity, even in the face of, to be frank, quite dire odds. Wish she were here for me to make a formal introduction. But I would never ask her to undertake such a journey. She's safer at home, besides. She was always telling me I needed to spread my wings, so to speak. Find mortal friends instead of hanging onto Mistress' coattails. So that's what I'm doing. I hope. Oh, she'll love you. So long as you don't rub her belly. She hates it when anyone does that. I assure you, were you to meet Tara, you would see the comparison for the flattery it is. But perhaps that's not a point worth laboring further. Suffice it to say, I think rather a lot of you. And there aren't many on this plane who I'd give such high praise. One doesn't become the most powerful archmage in Waterdeep and lover to the goddess of magic herself by having low standards. I assure you, when I tell someone they're wonderful, I mean it. And you are wonderful. Ah, wine is to wit as meat is to, to, oh, can't bloody remember it. There I go then, proving your point. Perhaps we'd better leave it at that. My ineloquent tongue isn't worthy of your ear at present. With my condition as volatile as it is, I fear any undue excitement may tip it over the edge, so to speak. Go, enjoy your evening. Nothing better for the heart than a good night's rest. 
and mine is gladdened to know I'll have the pleasure of your company again come morning. You wish to speak? Those illithid creatures threaten the natural order. It's my duty to do what I can to stop them. There's also the Shadow Curse. It's an affront and must be cleansed. I helped overthrow Ketherick Thormund his Dark Justicius years ago, but I failed to prevent him from unleashing darkness across the region before he was defeated. If I can join you and get close to Moonrise, perhaps I can lift this curse just as you find a cure for your infection. Isn't it glorious? Karlak's fury is a wonder to behold. Karlak's temper is a sight to behold. She'll need to be careful. That rage will burn her right out. Here goes nothing. I promised I'd be back. Don't worry. I have things under control. For now. You haven't been using the Parasite's power. You think you don't need it. But things haven't gone as you expected. You hoped a druid as powerful as Halsin might be able to remove your tadpole. But he couldn't. You're desperate to be rid of it. Understandable. But you're looking for solutions in the wrong places. It's complicated. But I'm an adventurer. Just like you. Just like you. I was infected with a Mind Flayer parasite. Just like you. I seek to be free of it. But to do that, we'll need to think beyond local healers. Your parasite is unusual. It is wrapped in magic that prevents its removal. Until the source of the tadpole's magic is destroyed, any attempt to remove it will kill you. You were lucky that Halsin knew this. His instincts are right. The parasites are merely a symptom of a greater sickness in Faerun. I have kept a careful watch on the movements of the cult. Though the Absolute's aims are not yet clear to me, its methods are. These parasites are more than illithid spawn. They are vessels for control. The infected hear the voice of the Absolute and believe it to be a god. That is how the cult of the Absolute is spreading. The highest of their rank, the True Souls, carry a tadpole just like yours. It is how they receive their orders. It is what makes them obey. When the order to transform is given, it will not be a matter of days. They will be Mind Flayers in an instant. Were it not for my protection, so would you. Because we share a common cause and a common enemy. We are alike. You and I. I've been trying to escape from this evil for a long time. Once, I almost succeeded. 
Now, through you, I've been given a new chance. You can go where I cannot, and I can protect you from that evil. If we work together, we may turn this around. Hells, they need me. I have to go. The power I used to protect you, I stole it from someone. They want it back. I will hold them off for as long as I can, but sooner or later I will be worn down. You must discover the source of the magic that controls the parasites before that happens. The cultists are gathering at Moonrise Towers. Use the powers your parasite gives you to convince them you are one of them. And when you find the source of their magic, destroy it. Go. Our freedom depends on it. I had another dream, which I suppose means you did as well. Whoever's reaching out to us truly does seem opposed to the Absolute, but wants us to embrace the Tadpole, venture right into the heart of the cult. Perhaps we truly have a secret protector, or we're walking into a trap. This spread is most inadequate. Our bargain is at an end. Unless perhaps you've a spicier deal. A fine offer. We are back in business. 
You know my terms. Sound the horn when you are ready. Awake and a... Very well. Fate spins along as it should. Dost thou require a new ally? Or mayhaps a resurrection instead? That is where I was housed, yes. And thou needst not know why. There are many answers to that question. None are important. Correct. No. Another visit from the Golden Paladin. It said we'll get the answers we need about the Tadpole if we infiltrate the cult. Agreed. A bit of shiny armor doesn't impress me that much. I don't want to get taken in by a pretty offer and pay the price later on. First things first, I need to get this engine tuned up. Thing's powerful, but it's been feeling volatile ever since I left the Hells. Can't be too hard to find an infernal mechanic around here, right? We were both part of Zariel's inner circle. Her by choice, me by force. In the grand scheme of things, I'm inconsequential to Zariel. Sure, I've got the engine, but I wasn't even her strongest fighter. But she favored me like a child favors a captive pet. Mizora envied the attention, I suppose. I'm sure when Zariel gave her the order to hunt me down, Mizora was delighted. No kidding. The fighting, the chaos, the betrayal. It had the makings of a good stage show, but I did not want to be one of the players. I don't know. You'd think she'd have more important things to do. Devils and their pride. It's not that I want to collect them, per se. It's just that, if we should happen upon them, I can use them in battle to fire up my engine. Evil's evil, but it can be put to good use. Sometimes. Maybe. Right? Well, my day just improved. Did you want something? Very serious of you. Go ahead. It's strange. I've been dwelling on what I told you before about wanting to become a Dark Justicia. But perhaps I should be content with my lot. I'm already blessed to have you at my side, after all. I'm sure you do. But please try to understand that it's not something I can just talk about freely. Fine. Just keep out of matters that don't concern you.
Perhaps there's potential in you. Let's see how you handle this. I am indeed a disciple of Shah. Mistress of the Night and Lady of Loss. I assume you've heard of her? Curious. Most are afraid of my lady. I think I did well by joining you. Most agreeable company. Fine. What's on your mind? I suppose some would commend our actions. Goblins would have raised that whole place to nothing if it weren't for us. No excuse to rest on our laurels, though. We've still got our own problems to contend with. I had another visit from that dream figure. I take it you did too. It claims that if we infiltrate the heart of the cult that's giving out these parasites, we'll find the answers we're looking for. It gave me another gift too. Just like it did the first time it appeared. Rather generous, if you ask me. On the one hand, you're right. On the other, don't be so wet behind the ears. Did you actually want something, or are you just here to spoil my fun? It's simple. Just find a vampire that will drink your blood and turn you into a vampire spawn. They're obedient puppets. In theory, the next step is to drink their blood. Once you've done that, you're free and a true vampire. People think the biggest threat to a vampire is a cleric with a stake. It's not. The biggest threat to a vampire is another vampire. They're scheming, paranoid, power-hungry beasts. So why would any vampire give up control over a spawn to create a competitor? Trust me, it doesn't happen. I've already apologized. What more do you want? Unless you're looking for another nibble. No innocence. You have my word. Only villains that we need to kill anyway. After all, you know what I am now. I can fight with all my weapons. Teeth included. And if I happen to drain the occasional bandit during a fight, what's the harm? They're just as dead. Excellent. Now, shall we go? I'm already feeling a little peckish. Another dream. Another order from that dubious visitor. It announced that we will find the answers we seek in the Absolute Cultist's lair and offered another generous gift. A persuasive creature. It tempts us with power, expresses its admiration, its adoration. Avert your eyes whenever it appears, and do not avail yourself of this new power, no matter how alluring. You've no idea what damage it could do to us, how far into illithid madness it could drag us. Well chosen. Battles are won with swords, not mind games born of brain worms. And there will come a battle, of that I'm most certain. The one truth that fell out of the dream figure's cankered lips.
It seems to be the perfect night to spend a little time together. Just you and I. Assuming you haven't changed your mind, of course. You made it. Come here. Sit with me. So eager. I'm surprised it took you this long. Well, to begin, I think a toast is in order. Any suggestions? Bold. What does us entail? I suppose I'll find out. To us. Now tell me something about yourself. And no tadpoles, dragons, marauding goblins, or anything like that. Something about you. I can respect that sort of loyalty. It's not all that removed from what was instilled in me. Don't stop now. Not just as things are getting interesting. Don't laugh, but I'm not quite sure I have anything to share. When you worship Shard, secrecy is everything. We'll sacrifice our own memories when ordered to. A lot of the little things... ...they're lost to me right now. Hm. I did. And you remembered. You're sweet. There's still plenty of wine. And the whole night is ahead of us. Nearly light. The others will be awake soon. What? I know. But you're sweet to notice. Thank you for last night. Me too. She trails off. You read an invitation in her eyes. That didn't hurt, did it? I should think so. Let's head back. If we must. Yes, it, it should be here somewhere. They said there was a hidden passage underneath this temple. The place was supposed to be abandoned when we arrived. Brian had instructions, but the goblins got him. They, they, they said they'd eat him. Please, please, these shackles. I, I don't want to die. Thank you. Thank you so much.
the lock clicks and opens. Thank you. I, I, I better go before they catch us. I should be able to make it to the grove on my own. They need to know they're in danger. I don't know. The boss didn't say. He just said some wizard called Laroa Khan would reward us if we found it. That's all. The, the grove. To the east. They wanted to know where we came from. No. They'll kill everyone. Please. I need to warn them. My friend, we can speak freely. I'm in no hurry to take my turn on that spit out front. Perhaps you'd be so kind as to unlock this cage? Curiosity, my friend. It didn't benefit the cat, but it's the foundation of my career. Though I admit I've hit something of an impasse. Please, unlock my cell. Volothamp Gedarm, realm-renowned author, author, and tastemaker at your service. Bless you, my friend. I'll wait nicely, but please don't tarry. I could cut on you, my friend. We mustn't tarry, but I'd hate for our friendship to end here. Please, won't you meet me once we've both slipped the goblin yoke? An invisibility potion, my friend. A bit less refined than your mendacious method, but by God, it'll do the trick. Smashing! Soon, my friend. Soon we can share the flagon of something liquid and a tale of daring do. I'll slip away when the coast is clear. See you soon, my friend. I simply can't wait to pick your brain! I'll feel that one later. You don't have permission to be here. You're about to be ejected. Dark, as if we didn't face enough dangers back up on the surface. I've rarely had to venture this far below the surface. Rare is the underbeast that takes to the sun. Can you believe this is my first time in the Underdark? The world is so big! Funny you should ask. I was just thinking about what would have become of us without that nautiloid. I mean, I know where I'd be. Trapped in Avernus still, with the Blade of Frontiers on my tail. But what about you? <laughs> Lucky you. Sometimes I think I'd be better off indulging in a bit of light oblivion. We may as well make some good memories mixed in with the body horror, huh? Ah, my good 
fellow. Quite the cosy setup you have here. I'll just make myself comfortable. Thank you so much. I was just settling in and reviewing my latest findings. Mind flares, cultists, and, of course, your esteemed company. <laughs> Why, I'm practically an expert. They've tentacles, you know. Quite shocking. The druid Halson had some kind of mind flare specimen in a jar in his quarters. A replica, no doubt, but truly fascinating to see up close. Here, on the Sword Coast. Impossible. That... that can't be. You're mad! But, tell me, have you noticed any residual psionic malaise since the alleged encounter? That's quite impossible. You'd have undergone ceramorphosis by now. If what you say were true, you'd be a mind flayer by now. You? Infected by a mind flayer? <laughs> Ridiculous. Isn't it? Perhaps that's for the best. I'd be irresponsible not to debunk such a strange claim. If I just peer in your eye, I could quickly... Oh, my dear sweet God! I mean, yes. I suppose I can. I'll need to research the particulars, however. Give me a bit of time, and I'll have this little issue sorted. The Blade of Frontiers at your calling. Are you sure? The Blade stands at the ready. And just when things were warming up. My condition likes being ignored as little as I do. I must consume another artifact. And soon. Thank you. any effect oh mister have mercy on us all listen i need to speak to you to all of you it would be unconscionable of me to remain silent i might just be about to remedy that you have to know who i was you have to know who i really am what i am is a walking shadow of the promise i once held and what one might call a wizard prodigy from an early age could not only control the weave but compose it much like a musician or a poet such was my skill that it earned me the attention of the mother of magic herself the lady of mysteries the goddess mistra she revealed herself to me and she became my teacher in time she became my muse and later even my lover Oh, yes. We enjoyed each other's company. Body, mind, and soul. But even so, I desired more. You see, no matter how powerful a wizard we mortals can become, 
We never scratch more than the surface of the weave. Mistra keeps us in check. There are boundaries she doesn't let us cross. Yet, every time I was with her, I stood on the precipice, gazing into the wonders that lay beyond. I sought to cross her boundaries. I tried to convince her. I pouted. I pleaded. I swore my ambition was only to serve her better. She only smiled and told me to be contented. But inconceivable as it seems to me now, I shared a bed with a goddess. And yet I wasn't satisfied. So I sought to prove myself worthy to her instead. We come now to the crux of my folly. Shall I share the story behind it, or would you rather head straight to its sordid finale? Very well. Here goes. Once upon a very long time ago, a mighty lord lived in a tower. A flying tower, to be precise. I'll save his history for another time, but the gist of it is that he sought to usurp the goddess of magic so that he could become a god himself. And he almost managed, but not quite. His entire empire, Netheril, came crashing down around him as he turned to stone. The magic that was unleashed that day was phenomenal. Roiling like the prime chaos that outdates creation. Even the weave itself could not withstand the onslaught. It fractured and shattered, and all magic was lost to the mortal realms. Until the day Mistra returned. She restored the weave, reuniting all its scattered shards. Or so I thought. Until, in the course of my studies, I learned of a book. A netherese tome in which a piece of the fractured weave had been sealed beyond her reach. What if, I thought, what if, after all this time, I could return this lost part of herself to the goddess? You know me. My gestures can never be grand enough. I was certain that this deed of raw power, draped in romance, would convince Mistra to take me by the hand and welcome me into her hitherto forbidden domains. I was mistaken. I obtained the fabled book and took it into my study. As for what happened next... Here. Place your hand over my heart. Let me show you. You feel the tadpole quiver as you realize Gale is letting you in. Into the dark. You see through Gale's eyes, staring down the corridors of a dread moon. A book bound and suddenly opened. Inside there are no creatures, only a swirling mass of blackest weave that pulses. Its teeth, its claws, it's unstoppable as it digs through and becomes part of you. And gods, is it ever hungry. Thankfully, the moment I absorbed the fragment wasn't enough to kill me outright. It was only the beginning. This netherese blight, this orb, for lack of a better word, is balled up inside my chest. And it needs to be fed. As long as I absorb traces of the weave from potent enough sources, remains quiet. I never to fully destabilize, however. I will erupt. I don't know the exact magnitude of the eruption, but given my studies of Netherese magic, I'd say even a fragment as small as the one I carry, it would level a city the size of Waterdeep.
Every waking moment. Every dreaming moment, too. But there was no way out. All of this. It must feel like a betrayal. Say the word, and we'll part ways. That is a great relief. Oh, a great relief indeed. You truly are a soul that steals my own. From all my new rallied heart, I thank you. I thank you all. I understand if you stand against me. I'm humbled if you stand with me. Either way, I will do my best not to let you down. I stand at a precipice, but if you do not give up hope, neither shall I. I'll fight. I'll resist as long as I can. Now, even I am tired of the sound of my own voice. Let us venture forth. You wish to speak? Precisely. Then perhaps I could have done something about both the Shadow Curse and Ceramorphosis aberrations. But in my eagerness, I put far too much faith in the abilities of Aradin and his band. We didn't even get close. <laughs> Wonderfully. If I'm honest, the grove was too comfortable for my tastes. I felt removed from nature. I'll miss my books, but I can find all the wisdom they contain out here firsthand. Is that so? <laughs> well, nature does abhor waste. I will keep watch, thank you. I had a feeling time in your company would prove fruitful. It is done. You know, I've been catching myself smiling more lately. I think that's your fault. Very serious of you, but go ahead. Even if I could remember, I'm not sure I'd tell you. I don't want your ego to get overinflated. Fine. What's on your mind? Quite splendidly, to give credit where it's due. You and I have shared some good times together, and it seems we have plenty in common. Something's burning. Great God, Helm. That will wake you up as a fine day, won't it? I do not need you just care. We'll never put this fire out. You're better off helping anyone trapped inside. Well, I'll give it a shot. Help! Grand Duke Ravengard could be inside. Don't just stand there. Push! Hurry! 
We don't have much time. Thanks, Mr. Wait. <sighs> Fresh air. At last. You honor your clan, sir. I'm in your debt. Counselor, are you all right? It takes more than mere fire to break me, Eva. Now listen close, Fist. Duty calls. Drow have taken Grand Duke Alder Ravenguard westward, if my eyes and ears can be believed. Gauntlet, report to the Manic and send for reinforcements. We must find the Duke. On your command, Counselor. The rest of you, count the dead. Take word of their sacrifice to this city. And you, I must ask again for your aid. Please. Rescue Ravenguard from his drow captors. The Council will reward you for your effort. May I trust you'll see it through? Moonrise Towers, along the old road. That place is cursed. Few could survive there, unless darker forces are at work. This was no random attack. The Grand Duke was their target. Thank you. And should your courage falter, remember the Duke's generosity. Approach the towers with care. The land itself has been swallowed in shadow. I will seek reinforcements and join you when I can. Fist to work. It's huge. It would be too much to hope that's nothing to do with us, wouldn't it? What are you doing? Hold up before they see you, Margresham. What? Apart from the dragon? Look, that lot are swarming all over the bridge. I don't know what they want, but it can't be good. I'm going to find another way around. You ought to do the same. I doubt a fight against them would go your way. What? Just follow you around? I go my own way, alone. Nobody, just another harassing fool trying to stay alive. There's plenty of us around. Rag. That's it. I'm getting out of here. Drop your weapons! I'll feed your innards to the ants before I do that, Istic. This is your last chance! No, look up. That was your last chance, Istic. Now burn! Stop wasting time, Beretha. You're not here to play with the locals. Of course, Kithrak. We merely sought to... No excuses. Question, kill, then move on. Find the weapon. Our queen watches us. Fail her at your peril. A red dragon. I envy its knight. Would that I rode such a steed. A crash must be near. Come, my kin await. The dragons serve Gith Yankee. I'll see it does you no harm. Follow me. We are close to the cure we seek. Ryder, my time is short. Lead me to... Shh, shh, shh. Such a familiar tone. 
Were I not merciful, I would slice the skin clean from your meat. Yet you are not bleeding, for I am nothing if not merciful. Your name, child. Lazel. Lazel. Proud. Regal, even. You will call me Gestil Kithrak. Vos, Knight Supreme, the Queen's Silver, the Queen's Sword. I am who you say. A Gaek vessel has fallen from the sky, Lazel. Thieves aboard have taken a weapon most precious. It is polyhedric in shape and inscribed with the sacred runes of our people. You feel Shadowheart's anxiety. The weapon that Vos seeks. It's the artifact that she carries. Her mind focuses. The Gith's suspicions cannot be aroused. They cannot discover that the weapon they seek is right within their grasp. Take word to your crash. You are to join our search. Speak up, child. Affirm your mandate. My mandate, Gestil Kithrak, is to locate this crash. I was infected aboard a Geich ship and need to be purified. Your mandate is to aid me. Purified? Soon your skin will go grey and your blood will run silver. You will shed your skin to become Geich. Only in death are the infected cleansed. Boretha. See that her skull is split and the tadpole crushed. Then examine her corpse. I will take word to the Undying Queen. Our search continues. To Danos, to the sky! demanded my head. He'd deny me a cure. Bah! This is a distraction. The Kithrak deserves the whole of my scorn. How dare he speak my queen's name? How dare he dishonor her child? Yes, judicious counsel, and vexing given the source. I am a child of Gith. I will abide by protocol and seek the Kresh Gustil, as Vlakith has taught. And then, then I will skewer the heretic with his own silver sword. A Kresh is near, that much is certain. We follow the path forward and seek signs of Githyanki settlers. No one, not even the ignobles just still Kithrak, will keep me from my purification. Breathe deep. The Githyanki slate. Give it here. <clears throat> Tearsu markings. Could this be... Magical energy courses through the slate, then to Lazelle. Your own body buzzes in resonance. 
A mystical map glows before you, revealing a Githyanki refuge inside a temple within the mountain pass. The slate also reveals the Githyanki's purpose. They are combing the Sword Coast in search of a polyhedric relic of great importance to their queen. Zoru did not lie. We will soon reach a Githyanki crash. It lies within an ancient temple at the mountain pass. Hurry forth. Purification is at hand. You carry a Githyanki relic. I will have an explanation. Or your head. Walk away. Now. I won't warn you again. Lizelle thinks I have something important to her people. She's deluded, clear. Lies. She carries an heirloom of my people. I must know why. You hear that, Lazel? It's called common sense. Tsk. You seek reason and dishonor. Incorrect. Judicious bloodletting settles feuds and roots out the weak, the deceitful. Do you hear this, tripe? Our lives are at stake, and she wants us to turn on each other. No others. Just you and me. The bad blood must be purged. A jewel come first light. You mean I'd get to prove you wrong and thrash you? I love it. Get some rest, Lazel. You'll need it. You had every chance to look the other way. But here we are. You chose this. Spare me the justifications, coward! If anyone asks, I'll say you were transforming. Don't expect to be mourned. She's a liability. It's the artifact we need, not her. Let me up. And I'll show you. Surrender. A disgusting notion. You would better warm to that notion very rapidly or your journey ends here. We needn't be enemies. There's plenty of those to go around already. What would you have? That we be friends? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. But imagine what we might achieve if we channeled some of that hostility back at our real foes, instead of each other. They wouldn't stand a chance. bring us closer. I don't think there'll be any more trouble between Lazel and I, if you were wondering. We can all sleep easier now. Well, apart from all the rest. You have an interesting definition of friendly, but yes. Speak. It is over where I am concerned. I will not be bearing the burden of the half-elf's deceit. She was the source of strife. I was the end of it. I suggest you turn your eye of judgment to her.
Cyril's brows furrow as your minds connect. He sees the burning embers of Joaquin's rest, then Floric's face as she tells you of Raven God's abduction. Hells! Older Raven God's been taken! Then we need to seek him out and get him to safety. You see, Grand Duke Raven Guard is my father. I know I haven't said our relation was no matter of pride, not least for him. You heard right. My father and I were close once upon a time until he disowned me and cast me out of Baldur's Gate. I can't tell you more. The pact forbids it. My lips are quite literally sealed. He made me an exile. That said, I'm not about to let him suffer at the hands of his captors. I've been asking myself the same question. What makes a Duke of Baldur's Gate so interesting to the drow? Even the houses of Menzo Baranzin would have little use for my father. No, this is no drow plot. These absolute nutters, these true souls are behind his abduction. His absence alone will sow chaos in the city. If they were to infect him, he could lead Baldur's Gate to ruin. All the more reason to find him. The absolute has seized not just my father, but the future of the Sword Coast. Good fellow. Quite the cozy setup you have here. I'll just make myself comfortable. Thank you so much. On my way. Speak. Chuck, you believe you can survive without me? As you say, do not keep me waiting. I hope that's the end of this silly quarrel. They'll have no energy for battling our enemies if Lazel and Shadowheart are too busy squabbling among themselves. Well met. That's the spirit. In the nine hells is that they're coming, they're coming. This might be some devil's ploy. Don't listen to it. They're coming. Discussion. 
was swallowed by a chorus of turbulent music through one creature sing many voices, the harmony of an entire collective. Sovereign, he has come. He is here. The choir fades. A single melody rises above the others, brassy and commanding. I am Sovereign. You see a vision. Your lifeless body wrapped in fungal tendrils. The Sovereign is threatening you. State your purpose. Fungal roots weave through your mind, seeking your true intent. Then the Sovereign drones a new melody, cautious but welcoming. Descend to me. Let us speak in flesh. The persistent music coaxes you forward. The Sovereign expects you. Seems the shrooms are letting in more people every day. You see a fella on his own on your way in. Dwarf. Balin's his name. Bald. Blue tunic. Dumb as a stick. Right. Never mind. My useless husband. Sent him for an errand. It's no surprise he's made a mess of it. Knock yourself out. But don't come begging for coin if you find him. You try to ransom him to me. You'll find yourself skint and stuck with a fat old lout. reveals its own home in reply. A humid cove filled with decaying myconid corpses. Dwega destroyed my people. I am a sovereign with no circle. I do not belong here. I am not welcomed here. I grow among them, yet I am not of them. Keeping the old turn up. Fungus and mold glaze the grotesque creature's face and body. A voice drifts into your mind as you gaze upon the misshapen servant. Leave this one. Come to me. We must speak. You should be enough to cover rent. Stop! Stop! People bang. These mushrooms, toxic. Scroll, escape. My bag, please. I've dropped it somewhere. 
Thank you. Thank you. Very well. Ah, right. As, uh, what were you saying? Fine, fine. My mind. Not what it used to be. I must... need to go. For you. Your trouble. Ta. The mushroom? I knew I was forgetting something. What? Sorry, love. Absolutely worth it. Look at that. Got my useless old man back. I suppose that's your doing. His hands are empty as a whole. We'll have to send him back out soon enough. Please, Balin's got a job to do. We can leave when he's done it. Collecting noble stock. Valuable mushroom. We have a shop in Boulder's Gate. The locals go mad for it. Ah, to no surprise of mine, you're more competent than Balin. Go on then, hand it over. Loads, but I haven't got anything to offer for it. I'm counting on the shroom for that. Give it or don't. Sell it, what else? Worth more than its weight in gold to folk back in Baldur's Gate. There ain't much you can't cure. Can't keep getting lost like that. Take this wedding ring from a pillock. It has to be worth something. I'd say it was a pleasure doing business. Except it wasn't. Off you go. We'll be clearing out soon enough. No point in lingering now I've got the noble stock. an ambush. What? Gek! Got someone sneaking up on us! What's this? Got ourselves an infiltrator? You move pretty quietly. Not quietly enough for my liking, though. Noise gets you eaten down here. Reckon I'll hush you before something hungry comes along. His gnarled fist grips an axe. Fine. I'll let you live. But spoil my hunt, and you're dead. Told you, hunting. Slave ran away. Took Sergeant Thrin's boots. Gotta kill the slave and fetch back the leather. Or the bosses in Moonrise will have Thrin's hide. Sergeant told me to. Besides, we're talking about a slave. Help? You don't even know what you'd be up against. Slaves got herself some protection. Hiding up there in a myconid circle. Slaves got herself some protection. Hiding up there in a myconid circle. Can't get past those rock flowers. They get in your head, make you see things. Half my squad jumped off a cliff, laughing. 
I'll wait here. She'll make a run for it eventually. Then I'll get her. Good. Do well, and there might be a reward for you back at camp. Do really well, and who knows? Maybe the Absolute will have space for you in her ranks. But that comes later. Boots first. Then you'll get what's coming to you. Deep Gnome Slave. They all look the same. But this one's got fancy boots. She's with the rest of our expedition across the lake. Special mission for the Absolute. With haste. What is the creature Damn doing to those corpses? The sovereign's thick fingers stroke the corpse at its feet. A droning melody greets you as the creature turns its gaze to you. Flesh talker, I show you a memory. Watch and listen. A violent vision grips you. Dwegar, dark dwarves chopping myconid remains. They broke our peace. They killed our young. The Sovereign's song slows to the pace of a dirge. It is still in mourning. We laid waste to many. But intruders remain. Lakewood. The Sovereign's song halts as it measures your worth. I sense your resolve. You will find Dwergar invaders near Lake's Edge. Cleanse the rot. Destroy them. Dwergar invaders, huh? I'd like to hear their side of the story first, but all right. Deep purples swirl into familiar shapes. Gnomes in mining gear, chased by Dwegar. The Dwegar seek a gnome. It is a guest. The Sovereign says nothing. But you hear appreciation in its song. An illusion comes over you. A Dwergar choking on a cloud of gleaming dust. Accept this gift. It will help you exterminate. The Sovereign gifts you one more vision. A wall of vines parting to reveal glowing light. Riches of magic and mind cleanse the rot, and they are yours. You do the circle a service. We will await word. Don't. Her condition is familiar. Poison, derived from a wild weed common to the Underdark. She'll need an antidote soon, most likely held by the Poisoner. Dwego! Slashed me! Oh. <clears throat> Graze! Don't! Share. Oh, talking hurts. Leave me. Please. Like dwarves, Dwergar have innate resistance to poison, and thus no need for intricate brews. 
Though deadly if left untreated, the poison can be cured by the antidote or natural remedies. Needed it. Why are you helping me? Down here? Tends to be. <sighs> but I'm nearly good to get on my feet. I thank you for your help, but I've got to get moving. Oh! <clears throat> it hurts. Carl's garters. Oh, I don't have time for this. My kin need me. Seems you're the helping kind. All right. I need you to rescue my kin. Not charity, mind. We can pay. We're Iron Hand Clan. Best artificers in Baldur's Gate. We were on an expedition down here when the Dwergar snatched us up. I got away, but not the others. The Greys have them digging out some old ruin across the lake. Just mining for materials. Nothing unusual. The briefest hesitation, but enough. She's lying. But our work pays well. Help my clan, and we'll make it worth your while, I swear. Fine. It's complicated, but my clan has trouble back in the city. A blood feud. We were searching for something to turn the tide. That's all I can say. But it's worth a lot to us. Understand? Look, you've done me a good turn and you deserve the truth. But that's as much of it as I can tell, I swear it. If you need to go your own way, I respect that, but still. I'm asking. Thank you. Only wish I could go with you. But here. I nabbed these boots from the Greys when I ran. I'll feel better knowing you're using them to kick some Dwegger ass. I'll mark where I made my escape and uh, wait here, I suppose. Not much choice, eh? Very glad Shadowheart and Lazelle settled things without letting any blood. I would have enjoyed the spectacle, but not losing either one of those lunatics. Speak. It is a certainty. I had assumed our parasites served a Geich elder, but I believe they serve a greater master still. A question that burns in my belly day and night. Elders and collectives abide by their own tenets. It would require a powerful creed to unite them. And now this voice, this creed, finds our own ears. If it reaches this plane, it may reach others. I hadn't thought myself so transparent. Well, you'd be a succulent meal. I would like to have gorged. But you've been prodded and picked over like a suckling boar. I prefer fresher meat. You wish to speak? Well met. A possibility that's kept me awake countless nights. But I don't have a clue where to start, other than play her games and play by the rules. That's the only language devils listen to. There could well be. She has the blighted thing. 
What I know of it is simply what has engraved itself upon my memory. My contract is very clear. I can bring Mazora no harm. She'll have to let me out of my pact willingly. The only way out is if I can out-bargain her. We're standing here with nothing but the clothes on our backs and the worms in our heads. We can. I'm sure of it. How glad I am that you see me as more than my patron's pet. I'll say one thing for our troop. We're not short on drama. I'm glad Shadowheart and Lazel settled their differences peacefully. Eventually. If it should ever come to that, if I ever know I am no longer able to stop it, I will do anything I can to ensure no one but me pays for my mistakes. I will find the remotest place on the surface of Faerun, or perhaps far below in the depths of the Underdark. I will await that death, alone. I promise I will not betray your trust. You kept me by your side despite the menace that I am. If worse comes to worst, I will be long gone before the curtain falls. Ah, yes. Carsus. Carsus was perhaps the most powerful wizard that ever lived. The child who would be a god, the elves called him. And he tried. With a spell of his own devising, he endeavored to usurp in one fell swoop the power of the goddess of magic. Mistril, she was called then. Imagine what it must have felt like to be a god. To know yourself, to be untouchable to be mistaken. As Carsus aimed his spell at her, she began to unravel, and with her, the entire weave. Too late did he realize what he had unleashed. It would have been the end of everything had not Mistral sacrificed herself. The goddess of magic is all magic. By dying, the entire weave was lost, and the spell that challenged a god failed. It was the end of Mistral. The end of Carsus and the end of an entire civilization. As the child who would be a god was turned to stone, his empire came crashing down around him. The floating cities of Netheril were no more. An event that came to be known as Carsus's folly. For a spell, Mistral was reborn as Mistra. Upon her return, the weave returned with her. Now, so many centuries later, I try to follow in the footsteps of Carsus. Not to destroy Mistra, but to prove my love for her. I tried to control only a fraction of the magic that was unleashed that fateful day. I merely sought to return one tiny diamond to an imperfect crown. Gale's folly, one might call it. History. Repetition. It's the way things go. I really thought Shadowheart and Lazel might fight to the death over that artifact. A pity. It would have made for a fine night's entertainment. Why do you insist on exhuming the past? I was a slave. A vampire spawn. Kept by the Tsar family. Perhaps I still am. I was never able to resist their commands. But now... I've been conveniently lost. They won't ever control me again. I won't lie. It's tempting. If I keep the tadpole, I risk transforming into a grotesque monster. If I lose the tadpole, Cazador has control of me, body and soul. And I return to the shadow. It's grim either way. So why not sell what's left of my soul to a devil? Better he has it than Casador.
You all familiar with the phrase, better the devil you know? I know, Cazador. And I'll take anything that saves me from that. Ah, a visitor. You're a welcome sight. But let us observe the customs of the locals. The scholar's brow tenses. His voice spills into your skull, the spores connecting mind to mind. Blurg, proud member of the Society of Brilliance at your service. Or perhaps not. Your mind is far more complex than that of the fungi. Understandable. We are small in number and rarely stay in one place for long. My colleagues and I are working to improve conditions in the Underdark. This need not be such a dire, hostile place. It's curious to find a surface dweller here. What has brought you down so deep? Then you've come to the right place. The hybridization among fungi in this circle is truly unique. The feeling is mutual, friend. I have only passing familiarity with the surface races. But I found that there is as much to learn from an individual as there is from a community. So it is with the Myconids. They live in harmonious unity but each has a unique personality. Yes, but it has abundant natural resources. Spores, water orbs, Trillimac. I've studied them for years. This is not a wasteland. It is a glorious ecosystem. Every civilization here could thrive without conflict. I observed a fight from a distance. Combat is not my field of expertise, but the Myconids handled themselves well enough. I do enjoy a good bargain, if anything in my private collection is to your liking. Very well. I have mushrooms to catalogue. Hmm. Rip up to keep going. Gex the talker, not me. Back off. Get the leather. I ain't wasting more words on you until it's done. What a hunt. Maybe you'll find a belt next. Right. I'll mop up here. You get across the Ebon Lake. Find Sergeant Thryn. She'll reward you. Squad of my kin camping in some ruins. Pack of gnome slaves there, too. We're using them for excavation. There's some more ruins Moonrise wants us to make a path to. There's something hidden in them. Something the Absolute wants. Not too sharp, are you? Look for a Dwergar with a sandbag and bare feet. vessel wobbles on the lake's murky waters.
You! What are you doing on Gex Raft? Where's Gek? Who are you? Are you? Well, I'll be. You got them? The sergeant's been whining non-stop. What about Gek? Where's he at? <laughs> More like avoiding the sergeant, I reckon. Come on. Let's get you to shore. You're the one telling the sergeant what happened. The rest of you, keep patrolling. I'll be heading back with this one. You continue forward in silence until the lights of a camp twinkle through the murk. And finally choked on true soul near's prick. Drug no. The twat soul caused a rock fall. Trapped tighter than a ring on a fat finger. You're shitting me. You pay up? That's the trouble. He's got the gold on him. Sergeant's arm is falling off with all the gnome slaves she's been beating. Who's the hoon, Grayman? Another slave for the dig. Aye. One of those absolute crackpots. Found the hoon sailing Gek's skiff. That's so. I... You feel the slightest of stirrings in your head. The Dwergar is not infected, yet your minds resonate. You ain't shitting. Felt the tingle. Your twat soul chum owes us a load of coin. You want through? Make a donation. Unclog your hole. Just shitting around. But I'm warning you. That twat soul ain't settled up soon. There'll be hell to pay for the lot of you cult buggers. See how the little pricks do when we strap fire to their legs. Hm. Not the most sophisticated way of getting what you want from someone, is it? Move, Hoon! I don't have time for Drugna and outsiders. Never thought I'd see these back. Nasty sneak gave even Gek the slip. these ones. You need a stiff cane to keep them in line. Here then. His bounty's yours. Now move! I've got no time for- The parasite stirs, but it's a mere tickle. 
You hear no thoughts or memories. Just an echo of scars that never healed. A true soul, eh? Useless wreck of a lookout could have told me. Glad you're here to take responsibility. Tunnels collapsed. Trapped true soul near. He's stuck in there with poisoned geezers. We don't get him out soon. It's both our heads. What is it with these people and heads? Let's get in his and get out. Not a one. Unless you count tacking Aboleth fangs to my whipping cane. Place is older than bone dust. Previous tenants left a trap. Dropped a shit ton of metal once we dug a ways in. Get near out, and you'll have the Absolute's blessing. No doubting that. Entrance to an ancient temple. General's orders, Nier said. Must contain something important. He got me to recruit non-believers. But not everyone's seeing the Absolute's truth. They don't get paid soon. I'll have a riot on my hands. Thought you would. True souls don't abandon their own. Back on your feet or I'll bite your toes off. Here goes nothing. As you near the rubble, a fragmented voice clutches at your mind. A true soul. True soul. Finally, you must clear rubble, filling poison. Gnome slaves, passage trap, careful of mercs, get me out! View through Nier's eyes is a blur. You only make out a bit of rubble and few moving figures. resolves into an image, two gnomes feverishly removing debris, while two others lie dead at Nia's feet, their flesh scorched by powerful magic. You sense Nia's frustration tinged with rage as the connection fades. Seen her run with a barrel under her arm. Just a small one, but enough to blow the drow out. Someone should grab it. Slaves are never gonna manage with pickaxes. Can't go chasing maybes. The sergeants are ticket in. Oh, would you look at that, Kerr? Someone's having a listen. A shiver runs through you. Your mind is awash with ancient resentments. True soul, no less. What do you think, Kerr? Should we take Nia's debt off him? Yet you got that twat soul stench. If I didn't know better, I'd say a mind flayer shat a worm in your brain. Should split your head open and poke around in there if you lot don't pay up. The shiver returns. This time it's colder, sharper. The stench don't lie. You're one of them. Something's different with you. In that case, want to earn some gold? Ain't my gold I'm offering. It's the true souls. Thrins after the absolute glory. 
That's why she's got those slaves digging for Nia. But we ain't need glory. Just coin. And Nia's got plenty. Help Thryn free Nia. Then you and my chums grind him up. Whatever the spoils, we'll drop you a fat cut. You in. Is. But first, we need to take care of something. You've seen that weird orb I floating about? Knife it, and don't get caught. The cult watches through it, and we can't risk more twat souls showing up. You still standing about? Get on it. Some days back, a slave gnome bolted with smoke powder. Handy stuff. Her crew know more than they're letting on. See if you can get them to talk. Now move. You're hogging my air. I'll peel your balls like potatoes if you don't move! Gnomes speak in soft whispers, the words all but lost in the hot air. Praise Iron Hand. Larida, our prayers are answered. Sir, our friends are trapped in the cave-in. And I know a way to get them out. Bug, please. True soul near will... You know what he'll do. Yank, Bug, don't. I've... I've got no choice, Larida. We have to chance it. A few days back, there was a... A scene. Our friend Philomene, she's a sapper, set off a blast and ran off. We set a spot for hiding if someone found trouble. I'll mark your map. If Philomene made it, you'll find her there. She'll have the stuff to blow that tunnel wide open and get Veldron and the rest out. Thulla said to free her friends, all of them. We need to bust that wall open, and those explosives will do the trick. Please, please don't hurt my Phil. I beg you. Hurry! Our people won't last in that cave-in forever. Remember, things could always get please worse for you. If you don't move, and you better hope that's the worst. Dead drow, publicly displayed. The Duergar are sending a message. You wouldn't survive a ten day hero. Unless you're here to kick some stiffs lakeside, I suggest you bugger off. <laughs> Keep me out. Hurry up, stick shit. Yeah, yeah. 
swear to Iron Hand. One more step, and a blow is to chunks. An ashen scent fills the air. The barrel is filled with smoke powder, but the scent is acrid, as if contaminated somehow. Or much, much more concentrated. She's gonna blow up. That's my thing. Shut your mouth, Hoon, or I'll shut you down. Drug! Dropping my name like your culty stars knows me. Like we're friends. I know what you are. One of Nia's cult goons. Sailed right in. Better to die in this shit eat than rot in Moonrise. You want me? Come get me. Rida, ruddy mind games. I, I know all about your tricks, true soul. Shit, I can't do it. Go on, drag me to moonrise. I'll make you cult nutters suffer. You want to waste rune powder on? Look, you have no idea what you're dealing with. Any true Iron Hand would trade their life for a grain of this stuff. It's the whole damn reason we're here, and I'm not leaving without it. But let me go. Maybe I'll spare you a vial. Maybe I'll spare you a vial. Powder is gnomish folklore, an explosive of awesome power handed down to the gnomes by their war god, Gerdel Ironhand, a formula so dangerous it was stricken from history, if it ever existed to begin with. Huh. We've heard the same ones, I bet. A fistful of fire that can turn cities to dust. Well, it's real. And I need to bring it back to Baldur's Gate. I'd rather my clan were with me, but the mission comes first. A vial's what I can spare you. Look. We're freedom fighters. We need this powder to prove a point. To people who really need a point proven to them. Let me go. And you'll be on the right side of history. That's all I can say. A barrel of this could light up the Underdark. A vial is plenty. Just let me go my way. Listen, you see Larida at the dig? Tell her I'm dead, impaled, half eaten. I don't care. Make up a story. And I thought I heard it all. That's some Cambian level deception. Beloved. I might have been hers. She sure as hell wasn't mine. I'm getting the room powder back to Baldur's Gate. Alone. Somebody's been murdered, and you're under suspicion. talked your way out of this one, but there will be no repeat performance. I need a quick word. Please, a quick look, if you don't mind. The rock, the rubble, all of it, if I may be so bold. 
Take a look. Tell me what you see. And be thorough. Several glassy stones stand out in the debris. Their borders are coated with tiny yellow crystals. The hottest of flames smoothed the stone and left sulfuric crystals behind. The fires of the hells have touched Grimforge. Statues meandering curves and golden edges stand out against the weathered masonry behind it. Two styles, two eras. The statue was carved from newer stone and erected by latecomers to this ancient fortress. Anything standing out? Boulders and stone bricks of various sizes clutter the corridor, many split cleanly in two, yet some walls remain fully intact. No quake brought these rocks down. They were smashed through in an instant. Something big charged through here. Something very big. What do you think? Incredible. An entire history risen from dirt and debris. Picture it. An ancient city, hewn from the stone by disciples of Shah, later abandoned. Untold centuries later, a new tribe revives it. Fresh walls, fresh sculptures, until a great hell beast charges through, toppling the walls and crushing the people. That explains the infernal plate I found. Perhaps you might have use of it. But my work has only begun. There is more still to find. I must get to it. Well, let's see what you've got. That's all then. That bears investigating. The most interesting secrets are always lurking, just under the surface. Seems like a good moment to talk. The eyes clobbered. Good work. Time to bust Nier out and shred him. Good. Drop it near the rubble when it's time. Flaming arrow or some such will set it off. has been my ruin. Nay, does not fail. You care for the weak true soul. Most curious.
The Absolute demands their slaughter. Yet, here you stand, in bold defiance. A test, yes, you must be. The Absolute bade you to try Nir's faith. Thrym, carve out his heart and serve it to the Rothe. If he indeed is a true soul, let the Absolute save him. Insufferable, insolent scum. I'm going to enjoy this. Shut your shitholes, both of you! You owe my crew a ten days worth of coin, Nia. And it's time you shell out. Direct your blade at the heretic, Dwergar. You shall have your coin. You're damn right I'll have it. Me and that one, we got a deal. We beat your ass and dig the juice out from your carcass. You bargained with this wretch. How vexing. Nir is not without mercy, true soul. The rat has given you a chance to earn my favor. Strike him down. Prove your faith. Heretics, let near be your end. Imperor Tibi! Imperor Tibi! Shindil Rin's shit house. You see it? Cock stench had a regular in his skull. All the more reason to clear out. Here's your cut. Extra too, like I promised. Clan, grab your gear, wipe your asses. Time I scrammed before more pricks from Moonrise Towers move in. Clan property. They come with us. Speak up, Chief. You can't just let the clan keep them. Won't hear me argue. Your mouth's got the might to back it. No pricks! You're off the hook! Scram before I get my senses! Your brain going mushy, Shark. That's where those absolute freaks hold up. Goblins, drow, gnolls, even humans. Ain't no one they won't try to turn. The way I hear tell, some prick there calls the shots. The general near called him. And there ain't no way I'm sticking around long enough to meet him. This one is a true soul parasite. It can enhance you. You can absorb its potential. Open your mind to it. 
You already know how. You are not ready. That's all right. But try to overcome this resistance sooner rather than later. It will make things much easier for you. Something's on my mind. Shh. Put it out of... Beldron! I was so worried! Did Nir hurt you? No, no, I'm all right. Did the sergeant hurt you? Oh, who cares? We're together now, thank Iron Hand. <laughs> we ought to thank someone a little closer by, I think. Gaudel Iron Hand, you may not be, but you damn well fight like him. I'm grateful, don't mistake me, but why help us? You're one of them, aren't you? That didn't much look like begging, but no complaints from me. Here. The Iron Hand gnomes honor their debts. With Walburn gone, that falls to me. Make it quick. We need to find Walburn. Now! You're a little late, Barkus, my lad. He's already been sent to Moonrise Towers. We were just slave hands to the cult, but not Walburn. He knows things. Things they want to know, too. What has he gotten himself mixed up in now? How did you... Well, you're a sharp one. Most still believe it's a fairy tale. I know I did, once. But not Walbrun. He bloody found it. A small cache buried down here with a manuscript. He just made sense of the formula when the cult jumped us. So he burned the damn thing. If there's a single copy left, it's sitting in his head. Those absolutists pull it out and make rune powder, they could flatten the whole of the Sword Coast. Not long enough. My people can barely stand, and we have business back in the city. That business is what sent us after the powder to begin with. Now, we'll have to make other arrangements. And just like that, you'd leave Walbrun behind? I knew you lot were foolish, but I didn't know you were cruel. If you knew half as much as you think, my lad, Walbrun might have kept you around. And neither will this twit, apparently. My people will find somewhere to regroup across the lake. Then, on to the city. If you find yourself in Baldur's Gate, seek us out. We'll raise a glass to Walbrun together. Not right. Okay. I'm so Summer. sorry. It was over in a flash. They're at peace now. to think about it. Picking locks isn't good for your health. This guard's about to make sure of it. It may have been unwise to reveal just how much gold you have on your person. Nice little nap. The boat floats in the murky waters. No need for me to ask how you fared. Some of my kin have already made it here, safe and sound. It's past time we were back in the city. But if you find yourself there, call on us. The Iron Hand Gnomes are good friends to have.
I... I heard about Walbrun. But the cause is bigger than any one of us. You've made sure his work is done, even if he's not there to see it. He'd be grateful. Thanks again for offing that drow. Only made it here because of you. But I can't stop thinking about the rest of us. Stuck in Moonrise with a bunch of sadists. Poor bastards. Somehow you look worse than last I saw you. <laughs> it greets you with a harrowing elegy. Cheerless as the new moon. The music shifts, still melancholic, but now streaked with hope. Do you hear a new harmony, serenity? I name you Peace Bringer. Fragrant spores waft through the air. Your heart swells with bliss with your every breath. Freely you have given to us. Freely you may take. The Guardian Gate is open. Go and claim your reward. But before this, I have another boon to ask of you. You have cut out the Dwergar Blight, but not its source. In your mind's eye, Spore shows you a drow striding among Myconid dead. Near. This one is called. He hunted us. Hunt him in turn. Bring me his head, and I will know my circle is safe. Always another evil to correct. Always another monster to slay. The drow lurks in the ruins beyond the lake. Bring him death and return. The decaying corpse lies before you. The head breaks off cleanly from the drow's body. It's said that anyone who bathes in the river of blood emerges as one born anew. It's a lot like that, I imagine. I feel the weight of these horns on my head, curling upwards like a mammoth's tusks. I feel these ridges snaking down my neck. Oh, Will! Your horns are deadly! So much character! Character, you say? Well, who couldn't use a bit more of that? Though, I'll have to take your word for it. 
have been avoiding my own reflection. Friend, be my mirror. What do you see? <laughs> it's because you know the heart lurking under the horns. The people will see a curiosity. Maybe even a beast hungry for their souls. But I will slay their monsters, keep them safe. And one day they will see the Blade of Frontiers again. Hey, soldier. Huh. So... That's what people mean when they talk about butterflies in their stomach. Did you want something? Always a delight to speak with you. What can I do? Well met. Not so enchanting as you'd think. The poor tears, the cold wells, they were the blue bloods hosting the fancy balls and drinking from gold goblets. Fathers, the son of a blacksmith, born with barely a coin in the coffers. He made a name for himself among the flaming fist, brave as Balderan, stubborn as a deep rofe, daring, outspoken, but hardly posh. I spent more time dueling with father than I did rubbing elbows with lords. Not to say I didn't develop a taste for good wine and the talent for courtly dance. Yes and no. Father taught me the four pillars of power. Courage, insight, strategy, justice. He reckoned I'd follow in his footsteps. First as a fist marshal, then as a duke. Vanquish evil, maintain order, save the world. But a duke makes bedfellows with more monsters than he slays. Father called it diplomacy. I called it hypocrisy. In the frontiers, there is no posturing, no diplomacy. I slay monsters, I don't consort with them. Even if I might look like one. You wish to speak? Impressive. Most would quake at the mere thought of delving that far into the Underdark. What did you find? Hmm. Keep looking. If they're present, then it's likely there's a route to Moonrise somewhere. It may prove impossible to avoid the Shadow Curse entirely. But if you find any way to limit your exposure, seize it. Precious little, but I'm quite certain it can still be found. Speak. Object catches your eye. A lantern, it seems. Though no light flickers within. Broken. And there's dust inside it. You see no burner or wick. It was not fuel that lit this lamp, but magic. This is pixie dust, used to illuminate a lamp, or left behind after a pixie's death.
What's up for discussion? Yes. Ah, my good fellow. Quite the cozy setup you have here. I'll just make myself comfortable. Thank you so much. My research turned up a rather brilliant technique that seems quite actionable. It's not too deep. Just behind the orbital socket. I could attempt an extraction. I've a needle in my tunic, after all. Saw you. I've dreamt of it a thousand times over. Volo carefully holds one of your eyes open and begins to prod uncertainly with the needle. Don't fidget. The needle must slip behind your eye, not through it. The needle finds the gap between eyeball and socket. Volo frowns and begins to push. Pain shoots through your body as the needle snags on your optic nerve. I think I have it! The needle seesaws back and forth, plucking the nerve like a harp string. Oh, bother. There's some obstacle in the way. I shall need a more robust implement. Stop. Now? Wise. Volo carefully withdraws the needle from your eye. Then, reaching into his bag, he produces an ice pick. Volo slowly brings the ice pick closer to your eye. Now. Don't move. Cold metal presses against the skin beneath your brow. And then... Tap, tap, stab. Do you feel that? Ha! Huh. I think we have the blighter on the run! I agree. It's a feisty critter. Just a little further! Volo tears the pick from your brain with a violent jerk. Your eye plops down into the mud. Threat. He pauses, looks down at your eye, and recoils slightly as it sinks into the mud. There appears to be an amount of... Cosmetic damage. Please, try not to overexert yourself. You're in a rather fragile state at present. I can't help but feel partly responsible. Perhaps there is something more I can do. Take this. A far superior relic to that old jelly you were chained to. Try it on for size. And, um, it was very nice to have met you. I'm sure you'll sort out your little brain problem one way or another. Far away from here, if you've a heart. Terribly sorry, my friend. Ta! A moment for the two of us. Huh. So... That's what people mean when they talk about butterflies in their stomach. Did you want something? Very serious of you. But go ahead. It's strange. I've been dwelling on what I told you before about wanting to become a Dark Justicia. But perhaps I should be content with my lot. I'm already blessed to have you at my side, after all. Fine. What's on your mind?
moving in. You're going up there? You've either got iron guts or one of those moon lanterns. Shit! Good thing, too. You won't get far without one. The Death Dark's clogged the top land. Clear to Moonrise Towers. Only a moon lantern dispels it. Shadows. Thick as a Dwero's skull. Sucks the breath right out of your lungs. Go on up if you fancy. Me? I'd sooner take a swim in the Dark Lake. Who there, Wanderer? Stay thy course a moment to indulge an old man. May I inquire if, perchance, you retain among your traveling companions a man who adheres to the given name of Gale? Should it be the nature of our acquaintance that interests you, well, you may safely classify Gale and I as friends. Should it be the nature of your present interlocutor that you desire to drag from the dark and unknown, then I shall be glad to aid in your quest for illumination and identify myself as Elminster. Elminster Omar. Now, if this answer satisfies you, let us linger no longer in this limbo of indecision, but settle on your knowledge of the individual I seek. Uh, ever a man of leisure. Would it pain you greatly to assist me along the little voyage I intend to undertake to this aforementioned camp? And I would confirm it to be so. Please, after you. My thanks for your excellent guidance. Ah, and yonder I spy the object of my pursuit. Elminster? The very same, Gale. And a fair bit miffed he is, too. Finding himself forced to expose his best pair of boots to so many miles of country road on your behalf. I don't understand. How so on my behalf? I was bid to spare neither time nor my own self to find you. She sent me, Gale. You know of whom I speak. But why? Out with it, Elminster. Please. Young man, has your sojourn away from Bordity washed away your decorum as well as your patience? Nigh a ten day I've gone without honest fare, worthy of the name, drank naught, but what the sky entitled my thirst. Why, some bread, cheese, and a cup of wine would appear unto me a feast. Surely you will begrudge me a mite of rest and repast before I get... Out with it. Oh, for the love of... Fine, fine. I'll turn a deaf ear to the clarion calls with which my scorned stomach beseeches me. Graver matters are at hand. Plenty to digest, after all. A good deal to stew over, if you will. Words ladled with import should be savoured so as to better absorb their meaning. Wouldn't you agree? Alminster. Uh, right. Um, you see, I, um, well, well, that is to say, Gail, my boy, I've come to address a most pressing matter. I'll speak as plainly as I can. Forswearing the accustomed frills that decorate my speech. I'm here on behalf of Mistra. 
The message and the charge I bring you are hers. Oh, Mistra's delicate feet are ill-suited for the hardships of the road. You know where you went wrong, Gail. No, we needn't dwell on that here and now. But even so, you're to be given a chance of redemption. Mistra would consider... forgiveness? She would consider... what she considers to be forgiveness. Mistra is aware of the misadventures that have befallen you both. She knows of your strife with the Absolute, that most insidious of evils. They choose the instruments of their will with great precision. Sometimes the single drops we think we are do not realize what waves we are building up to be. Do not discount yourself, and by the same token, do not discount your enemy. You must know that the Absolute is more dangerous than you can possibly conceive. It threatens all who live, even those who are undying. It threatens the gods, the weave, the very fabric of the universe itself. That is why I have come here to charge you, Gale, with its destruction. It is Mistress belief that only you can. The orb. Precisely. Mistra has granted me the power to stop the clock, as it were, on the orb's rush to overpower you. Instead, you will be able to unleash its lethal combustion at will. Interesting. This could be help or hindrance. We shall have to see. You must find the heart of the Absolute, whatever that may be, and use yourself as the uh, catalyst that will burn it from this world. He is not. But it seems that Mistra is. It brings me no pleasure saying this, my friend. But such is Mistra's will. Yours must be the sacrifice that will undo the Absolute. And for your sacrifice, you will be redeemed. Such is Mistra's promise. With that, I've said my sorry piece. I need only bestow unto thee the charm I was bid. It is done. Both charge and charm have been committed into your care. To you, I commit into care Gale himself. I count on you to shepherd him well on this strangest of journeys. Or some other fortune altogether. Like moons make swell and wane the nescient seas, so too the skies strewn gods ordain the tidal fates of mortal days. And yet, a notion born in lonely hours, come ebb, come flow, come all that is beyond the breadth of our dominion, be a moon unto yourself. Even the waves of fate can break upon the shores of will. 
Farewell, my friend. Farewell, Elminster. I'm glad she chose you. An audience with Elminster is never less than memorable. I'd have hoped to introduce you to him in less dire circumstances. But those are hard to come by these days. The doddering act is merely an illusion, one he's most adept at maintaining. Elminster is the most formidable wizard in the realms. Perhaps in existence. For Mistra to have sent him. The severity of her bidding could not be clearer. Or weigh more heavily on me. Time seems so infinite when you're young. A month is an age. A year is a lifetime. It is a strange feeling to realize how little of it one might have left. Of course, we offer the clearest solution to our problem. All I have to do is find the right place and time, close my eyes, and let go. Then the slate will be clean. Wrongs will be righted, the absolute will be gone, and I along with it. No doubt she has the power to do so, but as for the permission, Ao would not look kindly on her meddling in mortal affairs. Divine intervention has a tendency to make things worse, not better. As for Elminster, he saved the realms more times than legend can recount. But to take on a god is no easy feat, even for him. My orb is the best chance we have, and only I can wield it. Possibly the most spectacular one ever conceived. But essentially, yes, I'm living on borrowed time in more ways than one. Perhaps, perhaps this is how it must be. That remains ahead of us for now. The heart of the Absolute must be discovered before I can stop its beating. Hmm. Then I suppose there is nothing more to be done but find the heart of the Absolute and stop its beating. By Balderan's beard, Olsen spoke true. The land is swallowed by curse. Stand by me if you need to keep warm in this awful place. I've never seen darkness like this before. It's unsettling. I can feel the shadow's power here, but they don't seem to be harming me. The shadow curse. It doesn't seem to affect me like it does others. Not as badly, at least. Do you know what this means? I must be blessed. Lady Shah is protecting me where others are left to face her wrath. She loves me. She must do. Lady Shah wouldn't bless me like this for no reason. There must be something she wants of me. Those signs we found about Dark Justicias. Perhaps they were no coincidence. In either case, I need to watch for any place dedicated to Lady Shah. A temple, perhaps. Stay together! Keep to the light! Request, love. Now put your hands up and walk over here. Slowly. You 
bonus. Move in. Chops. More will be here soon. We need to go. There's a place nearby. Keep close. Avoid the shadows. I wouldn't touch it. This place is protected. You might find allies here, or at least supplies. Wasn't sure we'd see light again. You there! Step forward! And keep your hands off your weapons. Easy. He's with me. Come. Jahira. Kindness is too often a decoy. This is why we're here, you see. It is a curious creature that hides all manner of secrets. But if there's one thing that we know... It's that it knows its own kind. have come here, true soul. Stop! What are you doing? He's the one who saved us! He's the one who protected the Emerald Grove. Yep. Didn't leave a goblin standing. Not so bad to hang around with either. Saved one of my friends from a druid with a snake. Knows when to be discreet, too. I pretty much trust him with my life. A true soul with a mind of his own? How is that possible? Enlighten me. Now. Not good enough. Was 
in the hells is that thing? Hmm. More or less. Congratulations! You've earned yourself the benefit of the doubt. Hear me, Harpers! All clear! At ease! I'll not pretend to understand what that artifact is. But I'm old and wise enough to recognize a sliver of hope when it crawls out of the dark. Tell me... Why have you come here? Then you found an ally in me. For that is precisely why I am here. There's food in the inn over there. Beds too, if you require rest. Aloe oil in the cupboard, in case the vines gave you a rash. Settle in. Then come join me for a drink. You may just be the godsend we've been praying for. Damn it. Blood, this is heavy. around here, right? It's for a good... Oh my god, soldier. That's Jahira. THE Jahira. Don't you know the whole story? Years ago, over a century, Jahira was part of a group that saved Baldur's Gate from Saravok, a bile sport trying to plunge the city into war. My mum used to tell us stories about them. The legends who protected the city from evil. She said Jahira was a powerful druid. Adamant. Tough. I've told myself those stories a thousand times since. I never thought I'd meet Jahira. She's a hero, and I was always... some outer city kid. Can't believe she wants to talk to us about working together. What a day! This place... There's a power in these shadows, I can sense it. It's ancient, familiar. Hold close to the light and keep the shadows at bay. Stock up while you can. I only hope I've brought enough to see us through. Cheeky. But, since you're asking... I have something to ask. Stock up while you can. I only hope I've brought enough to see us through. Key. But, since you're asking... If you're all right by Jahira, you're all right by me. I need to find a way forward. I want to have a word. Don't wander far. Please, be welcome. Have a drink. To your very good health. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, it's an honor, milady. I will gladly drink to your health as well, Garlack. You perceive a faint hint of cloth grass, a herb that is said to elicit the truth. Jahira smiles at you knowingly. It doesn't spoil the taste if that's what you're wondering. 
You don't know what you're missing. Well over a century old, and yet it hasn't lost a hint of flavor. Still not quite so sure about you, though. People tend to lose more than just flavor when illithids get their hands on them. I speak from experience. There's an air about you. Something alien. Answer me true and do not lie. The parasite is changing you, isn't it? certain you will continue to resist? Look around you. Good men, good women. Stranded here, two feet in the grave. If we're to survive, I have no choice but to trust you. Can I? Good. Because I'll cross your heart myself if you break it. I have every reason to be cautious. I've traced people like you. People with parasites in their brains. All the way here from Baldur's Gate. The cult of the Absolute is spreading through the city. Quietly, quickly, and with unsettling deliberation. We tracked them to this ancient village only to be faced with a man we killed and buried over a century ago. General Gadric Thorm. Remember that name. He's the leader of the Absolutists. He was a Sharan once. Took to building an army of dark justiciers beneath this very village. Alongside the local druids, we made it our business to see him deposed, dead and buried. But he's returned. Not only does General Catherick Thorn live again, it seems he is no longer mortal. He has become, in fact, invincible. We met him on the road here. Commanding an army of the Absolute, intent on destroying Baldur's Gate. I put an arrow through his eye myself, only to watch him pluck it out like a splinter. He healed right in front of me and chased us into the shadows. Things looked hopeless, but experience has taught me that no matter how bleak things look, there's always hope. You are that hope. Protected by your artifact, you can infiltrate his forces at Moonrise Towers, posing as a true soul. Find out what it is that makes him invincible, so we can strip him of his advantage. Once Catherick is without his shield, the sword, together we assault his tower and put a final end to this blight. Any cure starts with understanding the disease. Whatever magic Gatherick's using to control these tadpoles, it must be at moonrise. Until then, we keep drinking wine when we meet. You're not our only secret weapon. Isabel, a faithful cleric of Seluna, and a light in the darkness. She cast the moon shield around the inn. It's the only reason we're still alive. She's upstairs in her chambers. Tell her I sent you, and she'll see you through the shadows safely. Not the cheeriest of inns, this place. But I suppose the mortal peril lurking just past the firelight is liable to put a dampener on the mood. Difficult to say. 
A fellow servant of the Night Singer would surely be an ally to me under most circumstances. But something doesn't add up. I'll need to see where his allegiances truly lie. Aha! Uh -huh. Thought I sensed an infernal. What are you doing here? Same thing as you, I reckon. Trying to stay out of the shadows. Hold on! I know you! The weaponsmith, right? Drafted into the blood war when your city was swallowed by Avernus. Not too different from my own story. Well done making it out alive. Same to you. Though unless my senses deceive me, you brought a bit of the Hells back with you. Infernal Engine? Who needs a heart when you've got one of these to keep you warm? Thank you, Zariel. Forget warm. You're burning up. Might be burning out a piston ring. Or leaking oil. Mind if I take a listen? Please do. I've been dying to find an infernal mechanic. Now that's hot. Too hot. I think I could sort you out. But I need some infernal iron and a lot of luck. Hey, soldier. We've got some infernal iron already. Let's give it to him, eh? Please let this work. Mmm. The weight of it. And that blaze of chaos. Can't imagine this where my heart should be. Must be quite the experience. Give me just a moment. And I think... There. You'll have to install it, I'm afraid. I don't think there are thick enough gloves in all the realms to protect from that kind of aid. That feels... Good. I'm still burning hot as hell's hole, but I feel less... Changeable. Cheers, mate. Pleasure. And as for the heat, I haven't got any solutions now, but I'm not giving up. Could be if the combustion chamber had its own insulation, or if we had some kind of enchanted coolant. Let me sleep on it. I just might be able to work something out. Hopefully the next time I see you, I'll have something promising to report. I'll need more infernal iron either way, though, so keep your eyes open. Take care. Damon's upgrade didn't cool me down, but it did juice me up. I don't think I've ever felt more powerful. Bring it on. Very well. Your move, Maul. You trapped me? I didn't even want to take this one. Kalim Shan rules, dear. The first piece touched is the first piece moved. That's garbage! No matter where the night goes, I'm gonna lose it! Then make the sacrifice useful. Guard your mistra, or come for my Cyric. What's going on here? Look who made it! For once, I saved your butt out there, didn't I? We're square now, Chief. Say, do you play lance ball by any chance? It's my first time playing. The keen gleam in Maul's eyes reveals the lie. She knows the game well, and she wants to win.
Alamsham rules. Brava. Lovely work. I see I was right to make you the offer I did. You will consider it, won't you? What a lovely specimen she is. A blushing apple begging to be plucked. Please let me smack this creep. She cheated, of course, but that's half her charm. My favorite kind, ambition. But don't you worry about Moll. It goes without saying, she still has the unconditional freedom to choose the only option she has left. Besides, I do enjoy being in this neighborhood again. It has such a rich history of abject tragedy. And tragedy, my friend. <laughs> well, there's my bread and bloody butter. Why spoil it? It's all out there waiting to be discovered. You never know what you might find if you just dig a little deeper. She won. She has a taste for it now. <laughs> She'll be the one who comes to me. But enough about my lesser pursuits. Why bother with trifles when I'm in the illustrious presence of my very favorite client? Tell me, oh apple of my eye, how have you been? You don't have any gills to get green around yet, but you do look a little worse for wear in this light. Splendid. And yet, I have this picture in my head of you tossing and turning in the middle of the night, thinking strange things. Dreaming strange dreams. And there's this little voice inside of you asking, is this my will or is it the worms? But you have no answer and no way of knowing. The good thing is, though, there's only one little voice you really should listen to. Mine. See you soon. A blushing apple begging to be plucked? Mm, Raphael's angling for the girl's soul. Mm, we should at least try. The girl's as bold as a lamb cavorting in a lion's den. But I think she's clever enough to flee before the jaws close around her neck. One way or another, she'll see there's no winning Raphael's game. And she'll walk away. Then Raphael collects another trophy. And Mole sells her independence to the hells. You've seen what happens when a bound soul reaches for freedom. I can't imagine what cruel penance Moll would pay if she were ever to resist that fell bastard. Nice strategy back there. If we put our heads together, I bet you and me can make a tidy stack of coin in Bolter's Gate. Raphael's offered me a partnership already, and it seems like a sweeter deal than throwing my lot in with you. No, kid. No. Oh, 
I kind of believe him more now than I did a minute ago. Protection for me and my kids, that's all. Not that it's any of your business. I'm not poking my nose into whatever trade you made with him. Looked like he was doing a pretty good job. If I had to deal with gods and worms in my head, I'd make a deal with anyone. Look, you saved us. Not knocking that. But after you left, Zevlor lost his nerve. Gave up the fight. I won't. Now there's no grove, no coin, no one taking us to the city. I'm not letting my crew get eaten by shadows. Maybe I'll make a deal, maybe I won't. But it'll be my choice, not the devil's, and not yours. One of the worst things about getting old. Watching kids make the same exact mistakes you made. And knowing there's absolutely nothing you can say to change their mind. Then again, Mole's a hell of a lot smarter than I was at that age. Maybe she'll figure it out. True enough. She'll go far in the city. We've just got to get her there safely. You know, I've been catching myself smiling more lately. I think that's your fault. I didn't realize I had an audience. The true soul who's going to save us all. I'm Isabel. Pleased to meet you. Myself and Our Lady are doing what we can to hold the line. I hear you and your tadpole will be our offense. Free from the Absolute's influence. Yet... Able to walk among cultists. It's almost too good to be true. But I'd be a poor cleric indeed not to avail of a blessing when I see one. Let me guess. Jahir has sent you to beg a protection spell of her favorite cleric. Perfect. It'll make you immune to the lesser effects of the Shadow Curse, which will get you closer to the towers. But there are places it won't help. Places where the curse is darker, stronger. The cultists are able to traverse even the deepest shadows, though. I don't know how. The Harpers are trying to figure it out. Salunite magic. Dark Lady, forgive me. Good news. Like a nasty little terrier. Ketherick is a frightening man. But you have something he doesn't. Allies worth having. While you're busy in the towers, I'll be sure to... Wait. Do you hear that? Something's wrong. Hello, Isabel. Marcus, is that you? What's happened to you? I've been blessed. You can be too. Come with me. 
and you can hear all about it from Ketherick himself. He's a flaming fist. Or was. He came with the others when we created this haven. And I thank you for your hospitality. True soul, my instructions are clear. Take the girl to Ketherick alive. We are all alike in her service. Do as I say. The rewards will be great. What's going on? If you have something to say, say it. Pathetic. The Absolute sees all. Your treachery will be punished. The Absolute? Of course. You can't believe them, Marcus. Ketherick will never give you whatever it is you've been promised. He already has. Time to go, Isabel. It might be useful. Light on my feet. Isabel, are you all right? I'm fine. <coughs> Marcus has been with us since the start. They've been tracking us this whole time. And that was no random attack. You were the target, Isabel. They know how important you are. But they don't know about you. Ketherick will strike again. We need you to strike first. Discover the source of his invulnerability. Make him mortal so we can make him bleed. Good luck. We're in more danger than I knew. If something happens to me, everyone in this inn is dead. Like that. Why does a man like him do anything? Power, spite, some kind of twisted personal morality. I can understand why he'd want me dead. Without me keeping the curse at bay, everyone in this inn, everyone intent on killing him, is dead too. As for why he'd want to take me alive, I don't know. And I don't want to find out. Now that we have you, I hope I won't have to. No mercy. For Ketherick will have none on you. End this.
traitors among us. A child taken. And still I can only feel relief. If they had taken Isabel too, I... Honesty will serve you better than charity. I blundered into their trap, and it cost... You have the honor of making up for my mistake. I trust that you will. Then speak. The same way hoppers learn of anything. Poking noses where they don't belong. We sent an agent to infiltrate this cult. <laughs> the latest fad among the city's bored nobility, I thought. Until that same agent returned and tried to plant a knife in my neck. My first encounter with a true soul. I'm glad ours ended on friendlier terms. From there, I made some inquiries of my own. So firsthand how easily the cult could turn friend to foe with but the twist of a tadpole. And so I gathered my harpers and came to the source. Moonrise Towers. Ugh. Some crusty ballad monger, I expect. They have me slaying gods, or laying with them, depending on the bard. Volothan Kedarm? Oh, that old fraud should be dust a century past. But then, lies live forever, and he's half made of this stuff. There are as many versions of a tale as there are people to tell it. Let that satisfy you. And anyway, the heroics of old have done seeming... We fight, we die. And we just hope that when our time comes, there is someone else to take our place. The songs would have you believe we saved the realms entire. Perhaps we did. They simply refused to stay saved. Hey! That's close enough. Artifact or no, I don't like the likes of you crashing our party. Give it a rest, Alfred. We need all the God's damned help we can get. Rescue party. Not that you'll give a triple shat damn, but we were ambushed by them bloody cultists. Bastards torched the pigsty we were staying in and made off with the Grand Duke of Baldur's Gate himself. The Absolute's taken him then. No question about it. Sure did. For all the good that does us. She's inside. One of the ground floor chambers. Come on. We need to talk to Florek. Guess you need to be a god's damned counselor to get room and board around here. Just about. Just about. Watching us. We shouldn't hang around too long, though. <sighs> Awake and alert. I want to have a word. If you have I knew Marcus well. Never suspected a thing. He still won't speak. Just keeps going with the bloody song. Nothing of use on his person. His original writ of duty. Signed by Eltan himself. Fella must be one of the very first flaming fist. He must know something. Let's not give up on him yet. Floric. Hells. I know that voice. Will? In Timora's name, what happened to you? The Hells have had their vengeance. And I doubt they are done with me. Ye gods. Fate has no shortage of troubles to burden us with. I don't suppose you found a way into the towers? Merciful Timora. That's the first piece of good news I've heard since Elserel. But I'm not pinning all my hopes on you. I trust you will do everything you can to free the Duke. But in case you don't find a way, I'll be heading to Baldur's Gate to seek reinforcements. 
The council sent a carrier pigeon with news that the city has been dealing with absolutist attacks. The Steel Watch is holding strong. I'll request that Lord Gortash send some of them to aid in the fight against Moonrise. The curse won't harm them. Holy shit. That's my old boss. The guy who sold me to Zariel. Gortash, as in Enver Gortash. Last I knew, he was a minor player in city affairs. A lot's changed since you left Baldur's Gate, Will. Gortash has gained considerable influence since then. Lord Gortash is the man responsible for the creation of the Steel Watch. It's no wonder he earned the title. The Steel Watch are the future of warfare. Gondian automatons that can be sent into battle without risking any lives, except those of our enemies. Lord Gortash had only completed work on the prototypes before Ravengard and I left for Elteral, but even they were formidable. With the Steel Watch at our backs, we can storm the tower whatever Kethric throws at us, I'm sure of it. I'll do my best, but there's every chance I'll fall to the curse or the cult before I reach the city. Don't count on me and assume no aid is coming. Work with Jahira. That harper's mind is as sharp as her blade. Follow her guidance. Farewell. We'll meet again, God's willing. Flame color. That's your name, isn't it? Art color? I'm Fistula. You, sir. One of our own's been taken. A Grand Duke. You might know something that could help us bring him back. We found him out in the shadows, just wandering. Nothing survives out there for long. Don't know how he made it, or where he came from. This is no physical ailment. It is a spiritual malaise. The man's mind has been gripped by the shadow fell, yet it has not broken. No idea, I'm afraid. Whoever it is must be someone important to him. He's been saying the same thing over and over ever since we found him. You hear me, don't you, sir? You might not be able to answer, but you hear me. No, not till I met R, anyway. It seems to be all he remembers. This was in his pocket. He doesn't seem to have any reaction to it now, but he held on to it for a hundred years, anyway. Thank you. Some parchment there. Looks official. So Gortash is a lord now. I'd like to clap eyes on this steel watch of his. I never really told you the story of me and Gortash, did I? Let me set the stage. The year, ten air. The place, a sleepy little town called Baldur's Gate. Our hero, Karlak, a knock-kneed delinquent from the outer city with everything to give and nothing to lose. I was a kid looking for a way to fill my days and make some cash when I fell into the wrong crowd. Gortash. I respected him so much at the time. Turns out the feeling wasn't mutual. Through the jigs and the reels, he made a deal with Zariel behind my back. You know Zariel, right? Archdevil of Avernus. She put this thing in my chest and set me to work. I never found out what Gortash got in exchange. This is the kind of man who gets a title. Authority makes me sick.
No. But they always seem to get it, don't they? Time's over, pet. Ah, oh, I love this time of year. The dickheads start popping up wherever you look. What do you want, Mizora? Drop the attitude and perk up your ears. You've got a new mission. Absolute's cult has gone and grabbed one of Zariel's assets. A devil. And a powerful one at that. They're locked up in the cult's fortress, Moonrise Towers, and you're getting them out. Will your playmate's wasting precious time? Let's see about getting his priorities fixed. <clears throat> Clause Z, Section 13. Should promised soul refuse obeyance or neglect duty, the pact holder shall cast the promised into a vernus as a lemur. I'll make it simple. Will fails or refuses, and he turns to a thick blob of stink flesh and sinks to a vernus. Now, be a good boy and play fetch, pup, or you'll spend an eternity sizzling in the hells. Zora's words may be flippant, but they are tinged with desperation. She cannot afford for Will to fail this mission. This may be your best chance to negotiate Will out of his pact. Oh, and what condition is that? Your mind links with Will's, drawn in by his increasing panic. What are you doing? Will relaxes, and your connection fades. Interesting. Now, why should I go letting my favorite pet off his leash? You actually think you hold the winning hand? Fine. I'll play your game. But I amend the pact once the mission's done, not before. Clause F, Section 9. Soulbinder shall bestow reward or favor only upon soul bearer's fulfillment of related obligation. Now, to Moonrise, pet. And do mind the shadows. They've been especially hungry. I need a moment for the two of us. God damn it! Why did it have to be Mizora? Why did it have to be Zariel? We're supposed to risk our necks to get one of her assets. What if it's a runaway like me? Or something far worse? I never forget what Will did. Not ever. I'm here because of him. And I'd do just about anything to help him. But devils never lose. You know that, right? Sure, they'll give you a bit of tat here and there. But the house always wins. You know, I feel a connection between us. Like we're two souls walking the same path. You might be a little naive in the ways of the world, but I see promise in you. 
ambition. Just that you have a big heart. You like doing what's right. So I was thinking, what would be the right thing to do when we get to Moonrise Towers? When we come face to face with whoever is controlling the parasites in our heads? God! Now try to think outside the box just a little. Consider the parasites in our skulls, and think how many others have the Mind Flayers infected. Hundreds. Thousands. And they're not just goblin trash. There are powerful people in the Worm's Thrall. Whoever's waiting for us at Moonrise Towers controls it all. But if we can take that control from them, imagine the power we'd be. That's just the thing. If we control the parasites, then we can order them not to change us. All the power with none of the tentacles. I'm just saying, there's an opportunity here. If we can control the tadpoles, we can keep ourselves safe and liberate the world from this evil. so much for thinking you had ambition. Still, we're not there yet. Maybe you'll see the light. Yet. Huh. So, that's what people mean when they talk about butterflies in their stomach. Did you want something? Very serious of you. But go ahead. I won't pretend that I don't know what you mean. Ever since we entered the Shadow Curse, I felt like something's calling to me. Some purpose that I need to find. Give me some time. If I can figure out whatever it is that I need to do, well, then there should be more time for us. I do enjoy our conversations. What do you need? Oh, you know me, ever the optimist. I'm trying to focus on the positives. Truth is, I was living on borrowed time already. Consuming those items would only have kept the orb sated for so long. If anything, I feel more at peace than I have in months. At least now I know my death will have purpose. It won't be a distant bang in the footnotes of history. She expects those who seek to use the weave to do so honestly and with respect for its potential to destroy as well as its potential to save. I doubt she's asked many of her followers to blow themselves up. That's a fate she's bequeathed exclusively to me. She wouldn't ask such a thing if it weren't our only means of survival. However much she's annoyed at me. The more bullshit she pours, the more of it I'm forced to swallow. Mazora set me on fiends inside and outside the Hells. She's never ordered a rescue. Gods. She makes a mockery of everything the Blade stands for. Such an asshole. Not just rot. I'd have to fight. One of those mindless blobs clawing at demons on the front lines of the Blood War. I always knew what my future held, and I know I chose right. <clears throat> Thank you for sticking your neck out for me. I mean it. But 
I'm not going to celebrate till I'm actually free. I can feel Mazora scheming, plotting. She won't let me go without making a fuss. Trust me on that. The Shadow Curse is upon us. As foul as I remember it. Perhaps even worse. But, with the Oak Father's blessing, we may soon see it banished from these lands. He is? Then I must see him. Insensible or not, he knows something. Thaniel is no ordinary child. He is the very spirit of this land. If this fist knows where he is, then perhaps we can save him. Save everything. I will go to see him at once. Join me when you can. The voice of the Absolute is strong here, and getting stronger. I don't know how much longer I can resist it. But it's good to see you're making progress. You took an unexpected route here. You did a brave thing, saving those people in the grove. Not everyone would have helped. It just doesn't stop. We are being bombarded by waves of telepathic energy. Wave after wave with hardly a breath between them. I almost dare not rest. Each wave a set of orders to the infected. The order for your transformation has been given many times already. I just hope my powers last long enough to see this through. Well met. There you are. I was wondering where you'd run off to. Well, two things. Good news and bad news. The good news, obviously. I only need one more piece of infernal iron to craft an insulating chamber that can make it possible for Carlic to... Touch people! Exactly! Oh my god. It's really happening. It's been so long! So come on! Let's get this show on the road! We need to find that iron! Hang on! I think you'll want to hear the bad news too. Ah, uh, it'll keep. I have infernal iron to find. Carlac, believe me, this isn't something you should... Let's move! Ah, uh, <coughs> at least let me show you where to look. I'm not sure the infernal iron will still be there. But I can show you a few places of interest. Hear that? All I need is a second bit of infernal metal, and I'm cured! This is so exciting. Let's make tracks. Very well. It's true, then. He's met Daniel. There's no other way he'd know that name. This is just what we needed. Well done. We need to wake him. He must know something about where to find Daniel. If he was able to escape the Shadowfell, then it mustn't have managed to consume his spirit. Well, not all of it, anyway. We need to unlock whatever's left of him inside his head. 
There must be something to trigger him. A word, a memory, an item. We just need to find it. Without Daniel, no. And I don't know how I can find him without speaking to this man. I don't deserve you, my friend. You mean to reach Moonrise? And I have orders to help you. The path to the towers is drenched in blackness so deep even a torch cannot quell it. Yet, the cultists have found a way to move freely. Whatever this method, you must claim it. A cultist convoy crosses the land as we speak. I've readied an ambush. Say the word, and we fly. Splendid. I'll mark your map, should you lose the way. Harper's with me. Stray no more than an arm's length from your course. Your followers are legion. We'll wait for your signal. Go! Your faith will stand ready, Majesty. Soon we march. Soon the world will bow to you. Here! Yeah. Where, boss? Something moved up there. Want me to drag it out? Dryder's eyes cut through the darkness, locking on you as your parasite squirms with excitement. Your minds connect, and you hear a voice whispering to you. The Absolute, or just the echoes of his fractured mind reverberating in the darkness. I'm one of your true souls, my queen. How have they survived? Warrior could have never persevered alone. Oh. <laughs> of course. You bless them too, my queen. W where is their lantern? Serve you well? <laughs> Very well. If it is your will, you can have it! What do you mean, go? We can't go without you. The shadows will tear us to pieces. This is not Her Majesty's will! in the darkness a thousand more to conquer at very least for every beast we slay the shadows spawn two more i want to have a word God. 
lantern gives off a chilly glow, protecting all in its vicinity from the surrounding shadows. Incredible magic. I can feel the light lifting the shadows, even those within me. Be safe and be brave. We expect no less. You notice a tiny pixie trapped within. Oh, please! Oh, golly! Me, oh, my! You must release me or I'll die. This lantern only lights the way when I am hurting night and day. My name? My name is Dolly Thrice. Now won't you free me from this vice? It would be my pleasure, truly. Once I'm freed, I'll help you, Julie. I dare not name it, newfound friend. The faintest touch could spell my end. Finally! Been trapped in that coffin with no one but a mad rider and my own farts for company. Did me a good turn there, didn't you? What do I owe you? Sure I can, but will I? Yeah, sure, why not? Here, give this bell a shake. Speak the magic words and you'll get what you've earned. Protection from the shadow curse. What more could a dingus want? You're welcome. Pixie. Curious little thing. We do get to see some interesting things. Almost makes the mortal peril worth it. Almost. No traps, please. You want to say the magic words, like they're right on the tip of your lips. <laughs> I sure love it when they beg. and creatures. Mum? Where are you? Mum? Hey! I know you! You're... Corgan nearly killed. Sorry. It knocks the wind right out of me. That's who I'm looking for. Mom and Pops, I mean. When Zevlor... When he... Well... There was an ambush. Mom yelled, run! So we ran. I could hear him running behind me. Till I couldn't. Still can't find him, but I bet you can. You'll help me, I just know it. Oh, thanks, mister. I knew you'd help me again. The vines won't last forever. I don't... I don't suppose I can stay with you. Just till you find Mum and Pops. I won't be any trouble, I swear it. Oh, thanks. You're the best. So you send Mum and Pops there. I'll be waiting, hero man. A 
Anything of use? The objective of the Scalpel Sisters is to soothe. For the Scalpel, indeed, is an extension of Sha. See how the patient reacts when I but stroke the right nerve. Hear its comfort, hear the very melody of mercy. Pray, sister. Show us the extent of your beneficence. Stop. Stay your hand, for it slaps where it should stroke. We can hardly hear the patient sighs of solace. Perhaps it is our unexpected audience that makes you quiver. Come, step forward. You are no sister, but that matters none. Every student is welcome. A curse? Nay, a cure that leads to the very pinnacle of being. Absence. Absence. No other word captures the heart of Shah so very perfectly. It is the scalpel-led journey that leads from pain to peace. What the fuck is this loon talking about? See? What is the light of eyes but the cancer that causes one to witness the laceration of being? If light is the symptom, then darkness is the cure. For in light there is presence, but in darkness there is absence. In light is presence, in darkness, absence. But you, look how the sucker of Shah eludes you. See how painfully present you remain. We do not wish to see you suffer so. Let us cure you. You remember Ashire and Maxim. Go forth and sow doubt, but do not compel it. For only the willing may know the lady's embrace. Hmm. Only the willing may know the lady's embrace. You know her teaching well. And yet these sisters must exercise their gifts. For the art of absence lies in its execution. How to proceed? I wonder. By example, I must edify and quell the light that blinds us. Come, sisters, soothe me. <laughs>
Our hero thought but a treasure ahead, did not consider the peace of the dead. Through the dark he went creeping, and awoke what was sleeping. A new grave they dug, which he himself fed. Until it was perfect. I've grown quite fond of you, you know, in my way. I thought it only fair to warn you about the dangers ahead. Oh, <laughs> we both know they are soon to be revealed. It would be pointless of me to try to bar you from entering, but I can Set the scene, as it were. Prepare you for your role. There is a stage down in the dark upon which a great drama has suspended itself in time. Its actors dwell there still, mired in the languor of their long, tired scenes. If you, however, through the dark, go creeping and awake what is sleeping. Chances are many more graves than yours alone will soon be fed. Very well. There is a creature that lurks in silence and shadow. A creature who, like me, is very much of the infernal persuasion. Should it make its way out through the very doors you are about to brazenly swing open, you'll have unleashed a pestilence upon this realm. In truth, it is carnage incarnate. So if you meet the devil of which I speak, kill it. Consider no other course of action. This creature and I go back a long way. I admit it would be in my best interest as well should it remain trapped in the dark. Or misplace its head, perhaps? What are we talking here? Lemia? Pit Fiend? Orthon? Getting warmer. Warmer. Listen here, Pipsqueak. Do not underestimate this opponent. At best, you will have the blink of an eye to strike. Strike first, strike true, defy the odds, for they are distinctly in its favor. That much I owe the bastard to concede. After all, if there is one rule I hold dear, it's that one must always give the devil his due. I should speak up. How fares the search? Well, all right. This shouldn't take long. Same as last time. You'll need to install it yourself. This should do the trick. <sighs> so did it... work? Only one way to find out. Thank you. 
I can't believe it. Thank you, Dallon. Thank you so much. It's the least I could do. Before you go, there's something I need to tell you. That engine of yours, it's contained for the moment, but it's just too hot to exist here in the material plane indefinitely. I know you know that, but the thing is, there's a cure. I wasn't making any headway with the mechanics, none at all. The environment here is just too cold to sustain metals like the ones inside you. You have to return to Avernus. For good. Or this thing is going to burn you up from the inside out. And sooner than you think. The minute I set foot back in Avernus, Zarya will force me back into service. I'm not doing her bidding again. I'd rather die. I get that, but don't rule it out. The world just might be better with you in it. Even in Avernus. I won't stop trying to figure out a cure, but at this point, I think we all have to face the inevitable. Yeah. Apart from the doom and gloom, you've given me more than I could ever hope to repay. It's been my pleasure. Good luck, both of you. Look after yourself, all right? This is the best day. The best day! I'm so happy for me too. Now I just need to find someone to cuddle up to tonight and I'll be the happiest woman on the Sword Coast. I'm not sure. Depends who's got me in mind. Withers was giving me the old eye the other night. Then again, maybe it was just an old eye. Listen, I'm never going back. If you said I could die right now or live a thousand years in the hells, I'd choose to go out now with my freedom intact. I don't expect anyone to understand that. But I've been dealt a hand most people don't have to contemplate playing. <sighs> Thanks, soldier. Your support means I've got one less thing to worry about. <laughs> that means a lot to me. You really are the best of the best. Of the best. Something's on my mind. Thank you and me. Climb, climb, climbing up a tree. He keeps saying Daniel's name. He must know more. We need to rouse him. Good. Its music might help restore him. Show it to him. Daniel! He's still trapped there. He needs help. Calm. Breathe. <laughs> You've been trapped in the Shadowfell for a century. Take a moment to clear your mind. A century? You're Hulsin. Thaniel said to find you. You must help him. Please. I will. But I need to know where Thaniel is. If I venture into the Shadowfell blind, I will never find him. I'm not sure I can put it into words. The landscape there shifts and changes. Lavender. Whenever I saw Thaniel, I always smelled lavender. I can work with that. Rest now. Meet me by the lake shore. I have what we need to proceed, but I'll need your help. Be ready. 
This may prove perilous. At the ready. Cheer. There's always a first time. Soldier. Old Rusty? Sure. Like I got something back. Something I've wanted for a really long time. When I touched you, I felt like a real person. My heart was racing, but I didn't hurt you. I don't have to be afraid of myself anymore. I don't have to hold back. <laughs> Not sure the world's ready for unleashed Karlak, but it's getting it anyway. Thanks to Damon. Thanks to you. <laughs> Thanks to fate. Ugh. I don't want to think about that now. Misery always overstays its welcome, and joy leaves too soon. I'll cry later, but not now. Me too, soldier. Gods, me too. For every knock we take, I feel like I get a little treat just to keep me going. Touch! Touch everything! Touch everyone that'll let me. Shake hands, dance a waltz, maybe even kiss a face or two if I find a good candidate. The world's my fun house. If death is soon to take Karlak, she should make every moment as rich as the last. Fight viciously, roar loudly, step boldly. She must make herself known. So, the untouchable Karlak is untouchable no more. I'd shake her hand, but she can still snap me in two, so, uh, uh, probably safest to skip it. You did? God damn it! I wanted to be there! I wanted to make a deal! <sighs> All right. So, what did the old devil have to say? Well, I do like killing. Perhaps if we help him, I can still salvage something from this. He would owe us after all. Yes. Yes, this might work. Now we just need to get on his good side. <laughs> Casador, Sired Seven Spawn, me and my six brothers and sisters. He always insisted we were a family, even when he was carving scars into our flesh. I was one of his first. Some of the others came years later. He was a monster to us all, but did take special pleasure in my pain. He said my screams sounded sweetest. Now that I'm gone, I, I don't know. I pity the other six. Ah, my good fellow. Quite the cozy setup you have here. I'll just make myself comfortable. Thank you so much. I know well the pain of seeing your life's hourglass running empty. Grasping at any means of slowing the grains as they slip inexorably through your fingers. Karlak's fate may be ordained, but her actions are not. She will make each breath count. We can be sure of that. The shadows are cruel. 
It would take a miracle for Arabella's mother and father to survive them. Well, lucky for us, we've got a knack for miracles. Let's reunite the girl with her mother and father. She deserves that much. Because there's nothing to tell. She died when I was born. As a boy, my bond with father was too deep to miss the mother I never had. Now, well, I'd be lying if I said I'd never thought about my mother. What life would have been like if she'd lived? Maybe I'd be living in the city. Maybe I'd never have been forced into this cursed pact. But there's no use lingering on maybes. My mind is on the stories of today and tomorrow, not those of yesterday. Hey, you. I made it. Easy peasy. You find Mum and Pops? Well, hurry. They've got to be somewhere, and I don't want them worrying. Then I'll teach you to conjure those vines. Beloved wife and mother, a Armiel Tellere Manon here. An open tip, be wary. This place is trapped. Lady Shah's presence is near. Son Elg Olaf. Here lies Isabel Thorm. Catherick Thorm had a daughter. I wonder what happened. Whoever that elf is, he's got an army of Shah worshippers at his command. Huh. So, that's... That's not going to work. Whoever that elf is, he's got an army of Shah worshippers at his command.
another step forward. What's inside? And that corpse. It's Arabella's mother. The doctor's found oblivion. Well, no time to mourn. I'll fix this without him. Not dead. Merely medicated to ease the pain. Excuse me, I've got to tend to my patient. I want to have a word. Hey, where's Mum and Pops? No. No, no, no. I don't believe you. It isn't true. It isn't. Get away from me! Go! You're here. Good. Now we can begin. Thaniel is trapped in the Shadowfell. But thanks to your efforts, I know where to look. Now I must go there, alone. No. This opportunity has been a hundred years in the making. It has to be me. And only me. But I didn't bring you here to witness an old druid's grandstanding. You have a part to play in this, and I trust you will play it well. With the Oak Father's blessing, I can infiltrate the Shadowfell, but doing so will sap my strength. I'll need your help if I'm to return. I need you to stay here, keep the portal open until I return, and defend it at all costs. The Shadows won't be banished without a fight. Once I open the portal, they'll swarm like carrion birds and try to destroy it. You must not let that happen. Let's begin. Whatever happens, do not attempt to enter the portal, and do not let anything interfere with it. It took me years of study, of seeking the Oak Father's favor, to find a way to part the veil. Pray that this works. Oak Father, hear me. Aid me. Force open the jaws of darkness. Make passage for your vessel of light. It's ready. I'll return with Thaniel as soon as possible. Stay close to the portal. Buy me what time you can.
It's done. I have him. <gasps> but something's wrong. Dreadfully wrong. No. It can't be. Yes. I'll bring him back to camp. He'll be safest with us. I need to examine him. I need to understand what's wrong. It's almost like something's missing from him. Come see us when you can. Daniel is resting, but it's no easy slumber. I discovered what's wrong with him. The shadows rendered him in two when they bore him away to the Shadowfell. Half of his essence remained here, amidst the curse. What stayed behind would have been the strongest part of him. But after all these years left in the darkness, corruption must have taken hold. It's both simple and not. We need to find Thaniel's missing half and make him whole again. Only the missing half may not come willingly. The curse will have sunk its tendrils deep, twisting Thaniel's essence into something else. This doesn't have to be your burden alone. Every moment counts, and I've asked much of you already without being at your side. If you want me, I'm yours. Against the curse, against the absolute... Anything. Just say the word. No matter how it's been twisted by the shadows, it is still part of Thaniel's essence. It will resemble him somehow, and may show signs of his power. Look for signs of life in the darkness. Wildflowers where everything else is dead. The curse cannot subdue the power Thaniel bears. Not entirely. In fact, I saw just the sort before. Not long after we first came within reach of the Shadow Curse. Fool that I am, I did not grasp their significance at the time. There is a ruin some way outside of Last Light. I caught a glimpse of fresh blooms there, but did not investigate further. I shall mark it upon your map. In truth, I'm not sure. This is beyond all reckoning. It's still part of Thaniel deep down, but it may not recognize that, or want to recognize that. Perhaps it can be reasoned with, but I'm not hopeful. Reason is not something that thrives amidst the Shadow Curse. I'll be ready. Lady guided me here. She she wanted me to find this place. The gauntlet of Shah. I can't believe it. I can't believe we found the Dark Lady's sacred crucible. Overwhelming. Worship of Lady Shah is usually discreet by nature. Her holy sites have to be modest, well hidden. But that place. I never knew such grandeur had been built in her honor.
I know. I can scarcely believe it's real. But I saw it with my own eyes. Felt the polished stone walls raised in Lady Shah's honor. Normally, it would not be for me to pursue becoming a Dark Justicia without a superior's command. But this is different. My lady wanted me to find this place. I know it. The Gauntlet of Shah is no ordinary temple. It is the highest test of the Dark Lady's faithful. To judge if they are worthy of becoming a Dark Justicia. The Gauntlet has double meaning. It speaks of the ordeals to be overcome, and of the armor-clad fist of Lady Shah that would embrace the worthy. Survive the crushing gauntlet, and be embraced by the Night Singer at its very core. The old ways were lost over time. Now some claim the rank simply by killing a single saloon knight. But before, they were a true elite. Many would attempt the trials, but few would succeed. Beauty is equal and wealth unseen. A place of offering to the Dark Lady. May she embrace the entire world. Pleasurable shiver runs down your spine. You feel as if you've unburdened a troubling thought and forgotten it forever. Manipulating the corpse like a puppet. Ah, a friend. An uninvited friend. I do not request help. Come join me and find out. I want to look at you with my own eyes. Fat lapdog. 
time to waste. back in my sails. Any true soul would have succeeded in following my path through this place. You should be pleased. You are a true soul. There is no excuse for you to not recognize your betters. But never mind. Your potential may outweigh your ignorance. I am Balthazar, chief advisor to General Thorne, and entrusted with a mission of utmost importance. Do you know what is at stake here? I do not cower. I plan. I command. I create. General Thorne trusts me. He knows I will deliver. He knows I will stand by him long after all others wilt and fall. You and all the rest have only one body with which to serve. I have as many as I care to make. General Thorne to you. But yes, recovering the relic is the crux of it. He commands, and I, his humble servant, fulfill that command. While you, an infinitely more humble servant, fulfill my command. I will put you to work as a scout. This necromancer has Catherick's trust. Helping him could be just what you need to gain access to the man himself. the general his strength, his invulnerability. It must be recovered before his enemies attempt to exploit it. I do not need you or your help, but you are here in spite of that, so I may as well make use of you. The relic is close, but the way is barred and Shah's dead are uncooperative. Clear the path for me by blade, cunning, or whatever it takes. I will remain here until you have succeeded. Or fallen. I trust this gas bag about as far as I can throw him, which isn't far. But perhaps better to play along. 
for now. flesh to aid you on your way. Ring this bell, and he will come. <clears throat> My brother is no intellectual powerhouse, but he is strong, loyal, and punctual. Should a fight turn against you, remember the bell. <laughs> In part, yes. My poor, unborn twin. Mother always resented me for it, said I strangled him in the womb. If you can believe such tripe. Besides, once I developed my powers, I fetched him from the graveyard and brought him back. Gave him a new, better body. Alas, Mother was not pleased. We're still close. She's in a jar on the shelf over there. Flesh will remain here until called. But don't fear, he has very sharp hearing. I chose his ears myself. Now, get to work. A good one, not the one with the marrow. Now I'll give it a shot. On the altar is an inscription. Brave the gauntlet of your Lady Shah, surmount her trials, and rise a dark justicia. The gauntlet of Shah. This place is legendary. Even with half my memories locked away, I still remember the stories. The Dark Lady's finest warriors arose from this place. Now I'm here. In order to join Lady Shah's elite, you had to pass her trials. Then make a sacrifice in her innermost sanctum. One revealed only when you've proven yourself. Very few made it that far. I've dreamed of this place. This is my destiny. I must complete the trials. better than most, but I need to find out if I'm worthy. If I prove myself to Lady Shah, she'll bless me with power. Power we can use to take on the Absolute and rid ourselves of these parasites once and for all. Let's explore. Lady Shah. The bowl contains an ancient rust-colored bloodstain. It forms a neat disk, as if spilled calmly and willingly. This is one of Lady Shah's trials. Allow me. It's important. See 
what we have here. Another bowl bearing the stains of an ancient blood offering. Another of Lady Shah's trials that her initiates must face. This one would challenge their combat prowess. Vanquish your old life to receive my wisdom. stains of an ancient blood offering. Another trial. Allow me, please. like the present. believe it they can't be breathe child resist not the winds of change let them carry thee no no listen dost thou not hear it where creation meets ruin where morning meets midnight the root of all being They're dead! I can't! Balance! Your very soul is tangled in shadow. Arabella's magic, wild as cursed briar. Her talent is now yours, too. The girl must learn the ways of the arcane. But she shan't remain here. The Weave knows her purpose. It will guide her plainly, if she listens. Arabella holds a power beyond reckoning. That of the decaying forest and the seedling that bore it. But it is unbalanced. Her yoke is already heavy. If she walks thy path, it will surely break. Arabella will depart once thou dost leave these accursed lands. She will find her way safely. Thus, it is fated. Bowman, you're making me leave. Fear not, girl. Abandon not 
the weave, and it shall not abandon thee. I... <laughs> you feel the grief fade as if it were your own. There is a lightness in her now, veiling the power within, soothing it. Is that my future? Is that why they died? It is. It's wonderful. Thank you, Bowman, for being nice. If there are people like you around, perhaps everything will be all right. Watch the lot. What the hell's has been happening here? There's something out. What's this? Fresh entertainment. But you're too fresh for this place, aren't you? There's a whiff of the surface to you. Holy shit, an Orphon. Powerful devils. I wouldn't get on their bad side without a good reason. You tiefling. You've got the stench of the hells about you, the stench of home, and a whiff of the surface besides. A servant of Zaria, if I'm not mistaken. I'd know the stench of her infernal machinery anywhere. What do you know of infernal machinery? Only what I can smell. And whatever engine burns within you is grinding to an inevitable explosion. Burning and fear. <laughs> you reek with it. There's something else, almost hidden by your fear stink. Cherries. Musk. And sulfur. Raphael! I can smell him all over you! Where is he? That perfume trickster swindled me. Trapped me! Where is he? Spit it out. Now! We piss off a devil no matter what we do. Pick your poison. We'll handle the fallout like we always do. <laughs> Bargaining, are you? A Karator warlord once tried the same. I made him watch as I ate his concubines in young, then fashioned a codpiece from his skull. You can't help. It's not just walls that keep me here. Not the traps, the dark, or the creatures it hides. Something stronger holds me. A contract. Either I fulfill the contract, die trying, or forfeit my freedom. If I leave this place now, I'll become Raphael's slave. Swarm to the night, silence or prayers smother each right. Wonder shows halls hungry to slay, leave no justice here, alive to obey, leave none to hear it, then be set free. This song is your oath, swear. Swear it to me! Well, that explains where all the dark justicias went. The final lyrics linger in your mind. There is a trick buried within them. A clause that cannot easily be fulfilled. That's it. So he's responsible for the carnage down here. All those dark justicias slaughtered. Asking why doesn't get me paid. Hunting and killing does. Raphael mentioned something about an Asima, 
meant nothing to me. I did my part. I filled these halls with ghosts. But Raphael's playing some other game. One that involves stiffing me. Anyway, enough prattle. The lyrics are clear. All who hear the song must die. Time to die. to share among themselves. But they do have ears. Kill yourselves. Back to the hells with you. I still hear it. Seems your theory is wrong. Played, Raphael. Bastard. That silver tongue of yours is dangerous. Bravo. Can't believe you actually pulled that off. I suppose Raphael will be pleased. Excuse. Look Unworthy. Unworthy to walk among friendly bones. Leave. Talking of you, intruder, invader, unworthy one. These halls are not for you. Try it. A lot more guts than you'd expect. A lot more. Can't give up. Wait. Nothing. Nothing's wrong at all. You detect the gentlest of presences disturbing the temple's ancient, stale air. It seems to encircle Shadow Heart. Welcoming her. Lady Shah's presence. I felt her too. We're right where we need to be, under her gaze. This is the right path. Let's continue. Here goes nothing. Inscription's challenge remains the same. We have all the gems. Let's put them to use and continue onwards. There are recesses on the altar that look intended to house something. Another such receptacle already contains a gemstone. day just improved. Did you want something? Should mind my step. The disc is moving. This must lead. 
lead to the next part of Shah's gauntlet. This must be where initiates undertook their final preparations. The end is near. Deliver the Night Mother's mercy upon her enemies. Do not falter now. Trust your secrets to the night. Shroud yourself in blackest night. A dark justicia. You know, I've been catching myself. I'll give it a shot. This must be the last step. I need to pray. Only by Lady Shah's grace did we even make it this far. All right. No need to dash in ahead of me. I'm ready. Some prayers are answered more quickly than others. Let's continue. Your party is gathered. You are ready. Or so you hope. As you step into the silent water, a foreign dread travels through you. It curls its way up your leg, squeezing tight. This is her domain. This is the Shadow Fell. You did well. Better than I would have credited you with. Now, hurry along and bear witness to my masterpiece. This is the Dark Lady's domain. He does not belong here. Simple. I followed you. It seems Shah still holds a grudge against General Thorne, and so sought to prevent me from entering in his name. Luckily, you were the perfect agent in helping me slip past her defenses. Now the Night Song is within reach. Your lack of ability, perhaps? You made for an adequate errand boy thus far, but let's not overstate your virtues. Raise one finger to me, and I'd sunder you like lightning would a rotten oak. Now, enough dullard questions. Follow me. <sighs> what feel lighter? As if the softest push could send me drifting away. Balthazar. Come to add more bars to my cage? Or perhaps to lead this would-be Justicia's blade directly to my heart? You. Keep more sins upon your head. My retribution will be all the sweeter for them. All this time, and you still fail to appreciate the gifts I bestowed on you, Amy. Sad to see a thing of beauty not recognize its own worth. But, General Thorne, 
He appreciates you, and he wants you close at hand. So, I am here to whisk you back to him. Catholic. I welcome the sight of him after these hundred years. He whose immortality I supply with my very soul. General Thorne. I'm sure you'll be on your best behavior for him, but just in case, I've taken some precautions. Keep back. It will take quite some concentration to secure Aelin for her little journey. Person? Please. You insult her. You insult me. Aelin is so much more than that. She is an Asimar, bound to a soul cage of my creation, and lending her immortal strength to General Thor. Her power, his will, and my genius. An unsurpassable feat. Ramblings most unsane. Poor Balthazar. For maggots ate his brain long ago. Hold your tongue, Aelin, or I'll take it away from you again. And you, no more questions, no more interference. Dead man, you haven't been paying attention, have you? Perhaps I'll revive your carcass and add you to my retinue. Then you'll have all the time in the world to think on your mistakes. I have felt you coming. The first in a century. You, who have come to seek the praise of your wicked goddess. You, who have come to drive a dagger through my heart. Not a dagger, a spear. My Lady Shah's spear. Her fate is mine to seal, let me handle this. The fate you seal is your own. To be a dark justicia is to turn your heart from everything but loss. You will know no love, no joy, only servitude, until of course your mistress inevitably discards you. And there is much she does not tell you. A terrible blood price that may extend beyond my own death. You feel Shadowheart bristling. This is important to her your bond is strong. You may yet be able to sway her from the path of duty to the path of light, and Night Song is not blind to your conflict. Behind that raging heart is the restless beat of one who knows too well that her fate hangs in the balance. Well, well, well. What's that I sense? A spear intended for my heart. Empowered by your goddess, I. Empowered to kill the child of a god. Do you know what I am, little assassin? For I know you. A lost child. Frightened by wolves in the dark. What did you say? Much has been promised to you, hasn't it? But what has been taken from you? What do you know of your own heart? Your own life? I sense more in you than you know. Whatever you think you know of me won't matter once I become who I'm meant to be.
believe I just did that. Lady Shah will disown me. What will happen to me? Not what will happen. What will you do? Your past is not yet lost. Your future is not yet fixed. Lay a hand on me in friendship, not quite Sharon. And I will fight the battle that has been waiting for me this last century. Then, oh then, we will have much to discuss. the Moon Maiden Saluna, mother of the so-called Night Song. The Night Song is no more! given me a great gift, little warrior. Don't you find it also curious that you would spurn your dark lady? Perhaps you feel a stirring of the truth already. But that will come later. There is a battle yet to be fought. You have done what we feared was impossible. You have released me from a century of sorrow. Your power is great. So too must be your weapon. You must choose what you will wield. And the Moon Maiden will provide. Thus I have said, thus will it be so. Are you ready? To kill Ketherick Thor. Shah won't stand for us to be here, not after what we did. I'm not sure there's a place that's far enough away for me to go. Lady Shah must be angry. But there's only silence. Let's get out of here, please. Whatever's coming, I don't want to be in the heart of the Shadow Fell when it finds me. The Night Song will be headed for Moonrise Towers. We'd better get there. ...and see what she's unleashed against Ketherick Thorne. Shadowhunt? What happened? 
You were missing. I... I thought I was done for. I thought perhaps I might have been dead. This... This is all like some sort of terrible dream. But it's real, isn't it? I stood before the night song. I heard Lady Shah's words. And I failed her. Worse than failed her, I defied her. Just because of what that Asimar said. I tried to leave, but Shah blocked me. Punished me for failing her. I thought I knew the limit of pain that the incurable wound could inflict, but I had no idea. It felt like I was suffering the agony of a thousand people all at once. My blood was boiling, my hair was on fire. I thought I'd claw my own face off with the pain. But then she released me. Banished me, more like. She said I was an outcast. That all of her children would know me and revile me. Shadowheart looks distraught, abandoned by her goddess and all former allies. And as for her divine magic, admitting who empowers her now may break her spirit for good. I suppose I do, don't I? You've done more to help me than my faith has in recent times, if I'm honest. Thank you. There's been something between us for some time. A connection. More than friends. I recognized it, but didn't act on it. I thought my faith was the most important thing in my life. I couldn't have been more wrong. I've squandered too much time already. I want to be with you. Now and always. Do you want the same? It wasn't too long ago that I could never imagine smiling again. Shows what I know. Night Song promised she'd tell me something about myself. I need to speak with her as soon as I can. What she said to me back in the Shadowfell about the wolves. That's no coincidence. She took flight to hunt down Kethrick Thorm. All I can do is help hasten his demise. And hope that answers soon follow. Thank you. I think any attempts at comforting me might be in vain just now. You're sweet to keep me in your thoughts. What's happening out there? Who was that streaking across the sky? An immortal. But it couldn't possibly be. Never mind. It doesn't matter. What matters is you have him in a corner. Jahira and every fighting body in this place have gone to Moonrise Towers to face Ketherick down. She's waiting for you there. End this. Now, we're all counting on you. Shadowheart suffers. You might be surprised, but it pains me to see. Now, what would you ask of me? I sought to reach a Githyanki crash and be rid of these tadpoles. Now we stalk forgotten lands haunted by darkness. I'm going to find my people. If you have any sense, you will follow. You consider your options, knowing that should Lazel depart alone for the crash, she could fall to the curse. Zell of Kalir. How unusual. 
How satisfying. You bared your teeth and sprayed your venom. A threat to be savored. Very well. Let's see what this moonrise illuminates. I suppose it was only a matter of time until Shah took vengeance. For the Lady of Loss, she does not like losing. Poor Shadowheart. The gods are nothing if not vindictive in their vengeance. Shah called Shadowheart nothing. But I know better than that. She is something. She is worthy. She is strong. She is Shadowheart. Nothing can take the her from her. Not even a goddess. seeing Shadowheart suffer like this. All for doing the right thing. It's up to us to look after her now. If she needs a rest, we carry her. If she needs a hand, she has ours. If she needs ears, we've got four between us. Whatever she needs. I'm sorry. It might be best kept until later. I'd be a poor counsel and worse company just now. Someone. Nobody beats me at hide-and-seek. Though shrouded in shadows, the child's resemblance to Thaniel is unmistakable. This must be his dark half, warped by the curse. Will you play with me? I don't know anyone called that. Don't ask me again. Now play with me. Spoil sport. I'm not going back. I like it here. I made a family for myself. I get to play all the time. Yes, I do. You can't make me do anything. <laughs> I don't want to play with you anymore. Ugh. He's scarfed. We'd better track him down if the shadows don't stop us first. everything I've ever wanted, right here! And you've ruined it! I'm not leaving. You can't make me. He's nothing to me. He left me here all this time. I had to do everything for myself. Even when it was scary, even when I was alone. I didn't give up. But would he even want me back? I've changed. A lot. So I wouldn't have to make up friends to play with anymore. I'd have someone real. I'd like that. And he would too, I think. All right. I'll do it. I want to do it. Bye. And thank you for playing with me. Thorn shown in saloonite armor. This 
Is there any god that turncoat hasn't bowed to? Is that... What's that? Daniel rests well. He's healing very rapidly, now that Oliver has returned to him. <laughs> no more than my right hand can absorb my left. Oliver is helping Thaniel to recover. They both lie dormant, like trees awaiting spring. Once the curse is lifted, they can stand as one or as a pair. Whatever they wish, I hope they will remain as a pair. It will be good for them both to have a friend once I'm gone. Still, I would like to return here someday. See Thaniel and Oliver again. In my meditations, or perhaps in person, if the Oak Father wills it. I hope he does. I knew I could put my faith in you. If only we had met sooner. I have. But perhaps there is more that I want. Anyway, once the curse is lifted, nature can take its course without me. I belong at your side. And I'm glad to be had. Glad to be with you, I mean. The druid Halsin spoke to me while I was sleeping. He spoke of you. Said that you fought shadow and spite to restore me. A hundred years of sickness almost ended. I feel every root that riddles the earth beginning to unfold. But there is one anchor still holding the shadows in place. The soul that brought it into being for the land to heal. Catherick Thorne must die. how the creature's skin barely holds it together. The bulge of its belly is on the cusp of bursting wide open. Bloated as a puffer fish. He takes a few drinks and I bet he'll pop. Go on, drink. Make it drink. Liquid burns your throat as you swallow, but otherwise you feel no ill effects. Ah, elixir, but such a 
small sip you take. Fear not. You will soon quaff as I do. Swig is as painful as the last, but you remain in otherwise sound mind and body. Father 
his personal mysterious secret. Secret? No. Not never. Father said, ordered, commanded. Don't say it. Don't say it. Urkage. Urkage. Talk and perish. Die. Buried. Buried in Thorn Town. Father told me. lands will soon be free of Shah's grasp. You can almost sense it. If I was a bard, I might be tempted to draw comparisons between nature and myself both shaking off Shah. But luckily for you, I'm no bard. Of course. Just the one? Fine. What's on your mind? No notes. You've exceeded my every expectation. Considering all we've been through, I think I was very lucky to find such favorable company. And attractive company too, no less. Taking on a tower with no siege engines. Wonderful. I'm shackled from shadows. She will rise in moonlit glory. ...and carve a path of brightness to the accursed one's second death. So saith the wise Alondo. That beacon of angelic wrath has taken the fight to Catherick on the rooftop. In the first line of defense are dead. But storming the tower won't be easy. And if we wait too long, Catherick will gather his strength and retaliate. For now, though... He's on the back foot for the first time since he returned from the grave. This is it. The spearhead moment. You brought us this far. So how shall we proceed? A sound strategy. Once it's done, me and my harpers will hold the ground floor while you hunt down the general himself. Floric left some of her flaming fist. They'll scout the prisons and the barracks below to ensure we're not taken by surprise. Say the word, and we're off. At the ready, Harpers! In this alight, there will be victory. In this alight, we will avenge the fallen! The time has come. Gatherick will taste of death at last. A curious ornate box. Its many sides are engraved with indecipherable glyphs. Cut it to the chase. an 
melissa's parasite in that corpse you should take a look as long as we hold this floor the tower is ours i'll stay here ensure no one comes up or down without a scimitar welcome you're close now a final audience with Ketherick Thorm awaits. Ha! <laughs> Keen eye. I suppose I could be persuaded. Fair enough. The time has come. Ketherick will taste of death at last. Good evening. I'm here on behalf of Gale of Waterdeep. He wishes to extend you an invitation for a private conversation in a more suitable locale. You are speaking to a mere projection of Gale. His appearance, his voice, and a certain measure of his personality, reconstituted in this case to play as emissary and usher. Would you care to join him? What little I could glean from the portion of his mind that is open to me, it is a matter most urgent. Gladly. Simply follow yonder path, and soon you will find him. this time of night. There's an almost reverent silence that accompanies the peak of darkness, when you'd almost believe the dawn will never break. The cradle of eternity. The timelessness of lovers. That most beautiful of fantasies. So it is, but a very fine one. This may be my last night alive. I wanted it to be under a canopy of beauty and wonder. I thought this place might bring me peace. I thought it might make the weight of what I must do feel a little lighter. But I'm not so sure. Thank you. But even if we do find another way, perhaps this is the right way. The end fate wishes for me. There is no point in running from the inevitable. Better to meet it on my own terms. I can feel it. Ever since we set foot in this strange, corrupted land. The closer we get, the heavier my own heart becomes. Stay with me a while, will you? Day will come all too soon, even in this place. One moment with you could sate me for a lifetime and prize the fear from my heart. I'm so very glad you came to share this with me. I know this is all unreal, but I created it for you. You must know that you're... you're very special to me. If things were different, if we were home, I'd have taken time to do things properly, to say it all better, but time is short. I'm in love with you.
I see. Well, perhaps this is for the best. Should my time be short, you will not be wounded too deeply by my absence. Thank you for spending this time with me. I think I want to be alone now. need to ask I'm sorry I have a lot on my mind the shadow fell night song I can think of little else that's more true than you may have intended sure I'm the same person I was before. The Shadowheart I thought I was would never even dreamed of defying the Lady Shah. I'm a stranger to myself. The sooner I speak to Nightsong, the sooner I'll know what the future holds for me. Assuming I have a future at all. Thank you. I think any attempts at comforting me might be in vain just now. But you're sweet to keep me in your thoughts. I'm sorry. It might... No rest for the wicked, I say. What's up for discussion? I stand ready to reinforce, if you need it. So I shall. Now let's run a hunt. It is to see you again, Ketterick. At last you found a godmaster that suits you, it seems. Halen, the thief. You stole Isabel from me, and now you think you'll take my life in the bargain? You dare to speak her name. After your crimes innumerable, you would evoke her before me! Enough! This ends, here and now, at last. He will crumble at the power of your touch. Give him all you have. 
My lord beckons me. You must return to your prison, and my daughter must be reclaimed. Your daughter? Isabel. choice but to follow. The general will call that a tactical retreat, I'm sure. But you have him on the run. That thing he summoned was illicit. Follow it below and find him, before he has a chance to subdue the Night Song again. Better they stay here. And hold the tower should Ketherick's army catch wind of our assault. But if you have room for one lone soldier, I would face Ketherick by your side. Theory and supposition, none of which will help us in the fight to come. Ketherick must die, and the Absolute with him. We will work out the details as they rear their ugly heads. If our luck holds, they won't need to. If it doesn't, well, they are Harpers. Being outnumbered is part of the job. But the sooner we reach Catherick and rob his army of their reason to fight, the better. You have numbers enough already, I think. You'll want a small force if you are to finish this quickly. Good hunting. It's quite thrilling. Fight off such grim creatures as this region throws at us. Especially being at your side. I, um, once read a book that explained in some detail the effect a brush with danger has on one's desire for, uh, other forms of stimulation. Have you ever read anything on that subject? I can't imagine anywhere that could turn my heart from you, cursed or otherwise. You'd always be as beautiful and as impressive. Perhaps it's just the thrill of our near undead experience talking. <laughs> Standing at your side through such darkness and disrepair. It only makes me want you more. Unfortunately, this is neither the time nor the place to indulge such feelings, so... You must be patient and push all such thoughts aside. For now. Was there anything else you wish to discuss? A curious ornate box. Its many sides are engraved with indecipherable glyphs. you can see, yet you sense something inside it. Curious artifact, isn't it? Ancient, beguiling, cryptic. The ABCs of mystery. The 
box doesn't yield. A box that simply refuses to be toyed with. Happens to the best of us. Here we go. We don't have time to waste retreading old ground. The Absolute's power is growing. We must press on it. I'm way too big. Murder. Glorious murder. The cat ignores you, but her eyes stray to a small tunnel hidden in the wall. The message is clear. Stay if you wish, but she will flee at a moment's notice. Leah. These are the stalking grounds of Steel Claw, Furless One. Tread lightly. Fortunately for you, the slithering vermin I hunt has my attention. For now. I intend to. I braved lapping waters and leaking ships to find this prey. I butchered many, and will butcher many more. But this one... This one I toy with. I slice, I tear, and when the time is right, I will bite its head off and bathe in its innards! You simply do not understand the hunt. True joy is the feel of screaming flesh beneath your fangs. Now I must return to my prey. It has been too long since it felt the bite of fear. Who will ever believe this? Ketherick awaits. What do you need from me? You have numbers enough already, I think. Good hunting. The hole yawns back at you, impossibly wide. A single tentacle burrowed through stone. Looks like a long way down. Shall I go first? This is an illithid colony. This must be where they harvest the tadpoles. We're close to the source of the infections. I wager that devil I meant to rescue somewhere near. Your father too, if our fortunes are so kind. Time to press ahead. Tread carefully. We are very close to the source of the Absolute now. That telepathic storm has become a tempest. Mind flayers and civilians, side by side. This must be where they infect and transform those they kidnap. Your tadpole forms a telepathic connection with the device, and a chorus of static energy fills your mind. Every mind flayer in the room calls out hungrily from its pod, seeking release and sustenance. But there are others in the pods, those not yet infected, not yet a lithid, terrified, desperate to escape. The device is open to your tadpole's command, to your authority. going to make it. Thank you. Zevlor. Watching gods. The Blade of Frontiers. 
Will? What happened? I paid the price of angering the wrong devil. And shouldered the cost to spare someone else a worse fate, I'd wager. I owe you an explanation. Much more than that. But first, please, the others, the ambush. Tell me they survived. You've heard some of it, I'm sure. That I froze, or broke, or some other lie that is kinder than the truth. We were ambushed by cultists, yes. And then I heard her, their false god, whispering promises in my mind. I would be a paladin again, with a god's purpose, a god's power. Everything I needed to protect my people. And all the while, the cult tortured them. They fought and ran and died around me while I imagined myself their savior. By the time I regained my senses, it was too late. I did not just surrender to the absolute. For a moment, I welcomed it. I fell short of that mark in Avernus, and even so, it was not so bad as this. I won't make excuses. I can't make amends. But I know something of what you came to do. I want to help, if you'll let me. Ketherick is below. He thinks you're no longer a menace. Descend and show him how wrong he is. If there are any more survivors to be found, I'll find them and lead them out of this place. Only if you can trust it won't be buried in your back. The Absolute swayed me once before. I won't risk it happening again. Go, my friend. Please, let me do this much. Never wanted the easy path. Brine pools. But empty of tadpoles. Unusual. Harvesting all the larvae indicates they are getting ready for something big. Here goes nothing. A pod. Mazora! You're Zariel's asset! My dumb little stinker. Took you long enough. Now, my Grazit's cock get me out of this thing! I'll do it. And you'll set me free. That was the deal. Yeah, yeah. So, get to it already. The controls are open to your tadpole's command. To your authority. You know this symbol from the Mind Flare ship. It means annihilate. You decipher the symbol. It's an illithid sigil, meaning unleash. You did all right, Will. I'd give your belly a good rub, but never could stand the smell. You're free, Mazora. I held up my end. Now you hold up yours. Sever the pact. <clears throat> <clears throat> Clause Z, Section 13. If the Soulbinder consents to separation, she will release the Soul Bearer from all obligation within six months. Six months? Gods damn you! Ignorant thing. 
It's always the terms and conditions that get you. Another one? Well, after jumping through all those hoops, a little treat wouldn't hurt. And to think you want to throw it away. Now, you've got business in the towers to take care of. Don't you fret. I'll find you soon enough. You're going to need me. Count on it. Oh, and go ahead. Tell your chums how we met. It's a real cracker of a tale. Ta-ta. Zariel's asset was none other than Mazora herself. Of course. Tricks on top of tricks on top of tricks. But I've only got six months before I made a free man. Thanks be to the Triad. No, scratch that. Thanks be to you. First, we kill Ketherick Thorne. Then, I'll tell you everything you want to know. What else is on your mind? They're not... Seems they think we're allies. souls have passed through this place. This is my time. Making my move. This. The hammer's gonna fall. to connect but needs you to guide the process linking each part of your mind to its like that should do it time to see what's back there with loss.
into a sudden fury, burying claws in your mind. And just as suddenly, pain and memory are gone, leaving only stone once more. The grand design. The restoration of the Mind Flayer Empire. The dream of all Illithids. Ugh, the stench. I wonder how many pilgrimages to Moonrise ended down here. <laughs> from Moonrise Towers. No longer a background murmur. The presence in your mind builds to a roar. We found it. The Absolute is behind this door. You said it was under control. It isn't you I answer to, Gortash. Motherfucker! Gortash! Oh, the general voice. Is this where we salute? Salute, yes. With cleavers through his blood-starved flesh. How it crawls with failure. Like flies on lick wet carrion. You forget yourself, Orin. I have played my part. You've built an army for our masters, true enough. But what of the astral prison? A rogue, true soul, flaunting it under your nose all this time, and you ran from him. Sure that they would follow and deliver it into my hands here. If you would cease these distractions. The distractions have been yours, Ketherick. Perhaps we never should have dug your daughter up. <clears throat> so you haven't lost your edge. But you're still not as sharp as Orin, I wager. The Slayer against the Undying One. That'd be fun to see. His crypt breath sings to my sinews again, 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 again. He must lead the murder march to Baldur's grave. <sighs> if the weapon is truly in your grasp, Ketherick, might I suggest closing your fist? Orin and I can wait for you no longer. The plan proceeds. We're going to the city and we expect you to follow, army and the weapon in tow. The Edict of Bane! The last! Powerful creatures in existence, enslaved by mere mortals. There we are. 
It wouldn't do to fight in front of our guests. Behold, Duke Ravenguard. The Absolute. Who will preserve us? You wag your word flap in vain, Alderling. Once the worm holds the whip, your shredded flesh will serve us. Now, it's really time we were going. We will empty this place and begin the march. You may catch up with the army once you've retrieved the weapon. And Ketherick, do try not to sulk. You're supposed to be the fearsome general come to conquer the city. And I am the hero who will save it. It is time, faithful ones. March on Boulder's Gate. We go to prepare the way! Predicted. What is it, I wonder, that draws one toward death like a moth to light? You could have run away, absconded with the prism. The one thing that could prevent me from fulfilling my destiny. But the lure of one's destiny is irresistible, isn't it? Perhaps you hope to learn your place in history before you are erased from it. A bright flash of clarity before the snuffing out. Finer champions than you have tried and failed. But perhaps they lacked the fear that drives you. Your freedom hanging in the balance. Let us speak plainly. My Lord Merkel gave me the one thing I desired, the one thing no other god could grant me. My daughter's life returned. Her heart beating once more. For that, he asked that I serve as his chosen. Join Orin and Gortash to grow the cult of the Absolute, and then take control of it. He's never had a more devoted follower. I have fought great wars before, in the service of other gods and other powers. But for Merkel, I would condemn all of Faerun to death. You are all that stands between me and my destiny. And you have brought the prism here. I will kill you now. And then I will raise you as my servant. Yes. Join the army of the dead, true soul. Witness Lord Merkel's glory. Cry about it. Covered. <laughs> Kill me. I am eternal. Merkel, Lord of Bones, I am here. I am ready. I am 
yours! you must, then we fly this foul place. The Chosen of Merkel is dead. Permanently this time. Ketherick's Netherstone. It's in his armor. Take it. What's hiding here? Death, the body is cooling, but energy radiates from the stone. Remarkable, truly. 
And now the picture comes together. The Absolute is neither God nor man. It is the Elder Brain you saw, held here by those three against its will. The crown it wears controls it, and these stones control the crown. It has been dominated. To master an Elder Brain, to subdue it, our enemies are formidable. The crown's markings suggest it was forged in Netheril, an ancient empire whose mastery over magic rivaled that of the gods. It is a crown of domination. The stones were taken from its crest. They are nether stones, imbued with the ability to control the wearer of the crown. The Crown's Netherese magic must be the true source of the Parasite's abilities. This must be what elevates their potential. And it must be the reason nobody could heal you. If the Crown can do this to the Parasite, I dare not imagine what it is doing to the Brain. One of them I know, Lord Enver Gortash. An arms dealer and a slaver. A worshipper of Bane, the god of tyranny. The other is a mystery to me, but the way she spoke, it is most likely she follows Baal, god of murder. Ketherick was a follower of Merkel, which means the Absolute is a front for the gods of death, and our enemies are the chosen of the dead three. Bane, Baal, and Merkel. The Tyrant, the Assassin, and the Necromancer. They are known to pick from their most devout followers, a Chosen, granting them incredible powers. Each one alone would be a formidable enemy. But working together and controlling an Elder Brain, I dare not imagine what they might achieve. We prepare for the fight of our lives, and the lives of everyone in Faerun. The Army of the Absolute is marching on Baldur's Gate. Within the city, an Elder Brain, brimming with power, ready to turn everyone within its reach into Mind Flayers. All it needs is an order. An order the Death Gods Chosen are on the cusp of giving. We must wrest control of the Brain from the Chosen before that happens. We must take their stones. Our chances of success are slim, but we must not fail. If we fail, everything ends. I will be your shield, but you must be the sword. And when the chance comes to strike, you must take it, for there may only be one chance. I shouldn't have wished to live in more interesting times. Ah, he's dead. He's finished. But Gortash... Gortash was here. Ah, feeling fresh? Ketherick's defeated, but my father is taken. On to the gate. We must tear him out of the Absolute's grasp. Ketherick's psalm is no more. And may he stay dead this time. Let's see what this does. If you've got your breath, we ought to discuss our next steps. Barking. We rest. Your fist left behind. Come, let there are staircase. important matters to discuss. Gods be damned. With that parasite in his brain, Father could wreak untold havoc in the Absolute's name. Should Baldur's Gate fall to the Absolute, every one of the coast cities will be ripe for the plucking. We're not just fighting for our cure. We're fighting for my father. We're fighting for the Gate. We're fighting for all of Faerun. Worms Rock Fortress. All travelers to Baldur's Gate flow through it. It serves as headquarters for the Flaming Fist and their commander, my father. The Absolute's armies on the march. Gods forbid a tadpole Grand Duke throw open the gates for them. Orin, I'd never heard tell of, but Gortash I know, or know of more precisely. A self-styled strategic advisor to Baldur's Gate's peers. A bit player with dreams of a leading role, the way Father told it. 
He had no use for Gortash, and even less for his advice. I don't remember much beyond that. But where these Chosen are concerned, I have a suspicion we're about to know more than we'd like. Yes, but first, a question. If your home were under siege, what would you sacrifice to save it? Then you know loyalty, and you know what I did had to be done. I was 17. Father, Elder Ravenguard, had just been named a Grand Duke and was called away to Elterel to help settle a dispute. That's when the Cult of the Dragon made its move. A religion devoted to conjuring the most evil of goddesses, the Dragon Tiamat. A ten day after Father left, I heard a whisper as I slept. Dusk Hawk Hill. The Queen of Chaos awakens. Go alone. I grabbed a rapier and set out. There wasn't a cloud in the sky, yet not a single star was shining. There they were, gathered at the foot of the hill. Your head tingles. Will wants to show you what happened. In the looming shadow of the mount, five groups of five figures each encircle a lofty totem. Atop each totem, a dragon's head is carved, and a massive orb held in its mouth. The cultists chant, first softly, then crying to the starless sky. There is a crack of thunder, a gust of wind, and a dragon's white head appears in the storm. As the maelstrom howls, Mizora's lips press to your ear. She will destroy Baldur's Gate. Grant me your soul and I will give you the power to save it, she whispers. She read the terms while two devils stood witness. And I said yes. One soul for one city. She didn't. She came on order of her mistress, Zaria. She never stops. Does she? Not for a second. Tiamat made a play for power. Zariel had other plans. That was the most Mazora's ever said. All that mattered was that she got her prize. Another pet added to her warlock menagerie. He returned to an unsuspecting city and a wayward son with a smirking devil at his side. I tried to tell him the truth, but my mouth couldn't form the words. I'd led him to the battlefield, but Mazora had swept it clean. After, he said only one word. Go. So I did. I don't know that it was brave. I just know that it was right. The moment I agreed, I burned with the fires of Avernus and oozed the rot of Dis. The cultists choked on our poisons and burned from our flames. And when we were done, all that remained were five great orbs atop a pile of ash. My soul was bound and my lips were sealed. It is the one scar I ever bore of it. Mizora replaced it with a sending stone. She uses it to track my location and speak from a distance. I could flee to the spine of the world or the depths of the lower dark and still never shake her. I understand. I wish we could stay and see what this place will be like without the shadows. But it's beautiful. No rest for the wicked, huh? The shadows are losing their grip on these lands. Shah can indeed be thwarted. Comforting to know.
I'm sorry. It might be best kept until late. Thank you. I think any attempts at comforting me might be in vain just now. Our enemies spread like rub rot. Treat one patch, and two more bloom in its place. An elder brain bound by lost Netherese magic with servants of the dead three holding the chain. <laughs> Reminds me of old times. Extensively. Mind flares, too. But I never dreamed of seeing gods and illithids working in consort. It is most disturbing. But take courage. We have killed a man who could not die, and stripped the Absolute's army of its general. You have a Netherstone, and you're on the scent of two more. These Chosen have reason to fear you, and I would like to be at your side when you confront them. Glad to be there. Falling foul of Ketherick convinced me that my grand adventures were behind me. That even if I survived, I should hang up my blades. But you convinced me otherwise. We ventured into darkness together. Now we've come out the other side. I'd say I'm feeling a little refreshed. When we reach Baldur's Gate, there will be even darker paths to tread. I will follow you wherever they lead. How does it compare to a shadow cursed inn? With the Absolute's army gone, the Risen Road should be clear. We can follow it all the way to Baldur's Gate. There's a Harper's safe house in Worms Crossing. Dentalan's Dancing Axe. We do well to check in with them before entering the city proper. Beyond that, our course is yours to set. I can recall how to take orders, as well as give them. I have something to ask. Aelin! Isabel! My love! You were dead! I saw your body! I'm here, and, and so are you, and my father, he, he can't hurt us any longer. I dreamt every night that you'd come back to me, but somehow it was all a nightmare Dawn would undo. I had no dreams at all, nothing but darkness. And when I woke, my father said you were dead. His soul was poisoned by the god of death. His sick devotion ruined him. But for all his sins, he brought you back to me. Are you all right? I will be. And you? In this moment, I want for nothing. Aelin. Aelin, this is... Oh, but we have met. This is the soldier that freed me most valiantly from the Shadowfell. They watched my boot crush the very brain of villainy, and fought well against your changed father. May he rest in peace at last, now that he's dead. I have more to thank you for than I knew, and we have much to discuss. Perhaps we could join you in your camp later? We look forward to it. You there, Sharon. By the fires of your camp's hearth, we will discuss all we must. I'll be ready. Whatever you have to say had better be worth your life. 
Now you will leave us. We must take succor in one another's bodies and words. Aelin! We'll see you later. Poor kids. I should try to cheer them up. I swear, I can already feel a change in the air. Like the curse itself knows its time is short. I can't say for certain, but we'll see it come to pass long before this place recedes behind us. Don't worry. All is at hand. We can depart whenever you're ready. Horrible than you can imagine. Try me. The shadows yet fester. The dead three united under cover of darkness. The balance shifts. There are depths to this alliance yet unplumbed. Consider, mortal. Do illithids possess souls? Where matters of balance are concerned, I am eternally called. I shall ask yet again. Do illithids possess souls? No, nor canst thou count mind flares among them. Yet, the three amass an illithid army void of apostolic souls that could imbue them with power. A flock without souls, yet to what end, mortal? This is the question thou must come to answer. Until such time, be availed of my services. Yes, Bane, Lord of Darkness, Baal, Lord of Murder, Merkel, Lord of Bones. Once judged, ascended, then vanquished as one and as three. The Alliance is reforged, mortal. The plains thus quake, and the gods shudder. Be gone! I must admire Isabel's fulsome beauty away from prying eyes. Sorry. is broken and the shadows are lifting. In time, these lands will heal. It is done. Action, not reaction. I can't believe it. I can't believe Aelin is here. And my father. I heard what happened. What he'd become by killing him. You set him free. You set Alien free. And me. A great deal. But still, some of the details elude me. Ketherick Thorm is... was... my father. He raised me to serve Saluna as my mother, rest her soul, had wished. He was everything to me, all my life. When an emissary of Seruna came to our little town, we were elated. Dame Aelin, daughter of the Moon Maiden herself. Tell me, do you believe in love at first sight? That's exactly it. And I tell you, I took one look at her and I just knew she was it. Lucky for me, she felt the same way. But my father was skeptical. Aelin is immortal, after all. I understand it's strange. 
There's an imbalance between us, certainly. But I suppose loving Aelin felt the same as loving myself. It was natural. Then... And this is where I still need answers. I died. I'm not sure how or why, but all was black, black, black. Next I knew I was being jolted awake. I smelled musty air, I saw shadows. And then my father's face. So changed. So hideously warped. I didn't know that then. But I could see the change in him. He told me we'd be together now. Said that Aelin was dead. I couldn't speak. Could only run. I found last light within the shadows. Made a shelter there. Prayed my father wouldn't find me. By the time Jahira came, I'd pieced together just enough to know I'd been dead a hundred years. That my father was the source of the horrors plaguing this land. My home. I couldn't tell her who I was. I had to protect them. And myself. No matter what. It's all out in the open now. And with my father dead, I have nothing to fear. Except for Aelin. She needs healing. Rest. I'm grateful for your help. Your friendship. I hope we won't intrude on your hospitality too long. But I'm grateful for a safe place to... Well... Just to be. There you are. I have awaited your arrival with great anticipation. Come closer. Oh, surely you cannot fear me. You who have fought beside me in the war against damned Ketheric Thorm. Feel my voice rattle your bones as I proclaim our victory. Moon Maiden Saluna, hear me. Ketheric Thorm, traitor, apostle of Merkel, is dead at last. My mate, most high. Darling Isabel is safe and well. Safe and well and return to my embrace. Blessings upon the slayer of the wicked one. We are a powerful party indeed. Faerun itself trembles at our touch. My darling Isabel says we will stay allied at your side. I am pleased to hear it. I am free from my bonds, but not my duty. The dead three are risen. The dead two remain. You must face them. I will help. Pray, ask, and I will tell. Do I not radiate with my mother's brightness, her glory? There can be no doubt. I am of her silvered flesh, her celestial womb. Why, she already has. She has brought her sword to your side, Dame Aelin. So mighty are her wonders, her great wisdom. Together, we will set this fair land free of tyranny and murder. <sighs> Ketheric Thorn, father of my one and only love, enslaver of Dame Aelin. Ketheric Thorm never did trust me, even when he worshipped the Moon Maiden. He was threatened by my love for Isabel, by her love for me. When she died, curse the day, the hour, we each of us mourned bitterly. But Ketheric's pain could be touched by no aid, no boundary. He turned to wretched Shah, the Lady of Loss, for relief. And she whispered into his ear, poisoning his mind. He and his loathsome advisor, Balthazar, lured me into the Shadowfell. Claimed they'd found someone in need of my aid. There, 
They trapped me in their infernal cage. I was killed, murdered, made dead over and over and over by justicias of every make and kind. I was reborn, for it is my nature. And Catherick fed upon my immortality all the while. But lo, the brute is dead. And we, we live! Your cheeks are flush. There's a twinkle in your eye. But I think I am no longer the cause. It seems you found your heart's desire. But with someone else. And who would I be to stand in the way of such a union? I assume you didn't come here to seek my blessing, though. Was there something else you needed? I hope I can say the same of myself soon enough. The absolute armies are on the march, and Bowler's Gate is their target. You did it. Catherick Thorm is no more. The Shadow's grip is broken. Soon, the land shall heal. Not as glad as I am. Nature moves at its own pace, and bestows its bounty when it sees fit. Give it time. A reward shall come to you, when you need it most. What do you know about me? You spoke of my past, being chased by wolves. I told no one about that. Almost no one. But I certainly didn't share that with you. There is nothing I can tell you that you do not already know yourself. They trained you well, trained you hard. Chiseled away any part of you that did not fit their plan. They made you forget. I chose to do that. For the mission to protect Shah's... Secrets. Yes, yes, that is an old song, girl. Your goddess cares more for her precious secrets than she does her devotees. Get to the point. When you freed me, you severed a bond between me and that dog, Thorm. A bond of pain. His, inflicted on me. When I laid eyes on you, I sensed a similar bond. You, tethered to two others. Someplace distant. Let me help you remember. You feel Shadowheart's mind tug at the edges of your own. You know this sensation. She wants you to see whatever is about to be revealed. Your mind joins with Shadow Hearts. Something pulls at you both, bringing you elsewhere. It is a common right among Zaluna's followers to send their children off into the woods to find their way home. Perhaps this time it had gone awry. It seems that one child never came back. She was taken. What? Who was that man? You already know. Did you not see yourself in him? Do you not recognize your own blood? My father. That was him. That is him. He lives still. And your mother, too. No. It can't be. I'm an orphan. And who told you that? Your adoptive family? 
you are not to blame. You were young, impressionable. They took you because they wanted to break and remake you. But you are a child no longer. You are a woman, one who knows what must be done. My parents... I need to save them. Your parents are with your abductors. You will need to return to their lair. But be warned. You may have once thought of them as comrades, mentors, friends, even lovers. They will all be enemies now. You have been forewarned for what is to come. But not yet forearmed. I was able to retrieve it before it sank too far into Shah's umbral domain. Shah is quick to discard whatever she has no use for. I think you know that well enough. But I felt it call to me as I took flight. Whatever Shah calls her own, Saluna has equal claim to. They are one and the same. Their power is matched and mirrored. Take it. You will find it useful. What you do with it, that will be up to you. Same as before. I'll need every advantage, it seems. Thank you. A debt repaid. You returned my life unto me. Now go and claim your own. <laughs> it hurts. Shah torments you still. What a spiteful creature she is. This will not stop until you take action. See that your parents' sacrifices are not in vain. Allow the Moon Maiden to guide you at last. Why, hello, lover. <laughs> that sounded more debonair in my head, I'll admit. Do you need something? Of course. Relieved, terrified, sick to my stomach. I can't keep my feelings straight ever since I spared Night Song, defied Shah. I don't know what comes next, but at least I have you by my side. Fine. What's on your mind? I've been lied to. My whole life. And I was gullible enough to just believe it. My parents are alive, and I have to save them. I think a part of me always knew that. A part that Shah denied to me. Thank you. But I want you to refrain from foolish heroics. When the time comes, we'll be entering a nest of vipers. I couldn't bear to lose you. Not after everything. We'd better press on for now, and hope we're ready when the moment comes. But before that, there's one thing I need to see to. You'll see for yourself soon enough. Just leave it with me. has been lifted, the lands cleansed of the shadows. Kethric's reign of living death is over. Your courage has been tested, and in this at least, you have triumphed.
Sergeant, if you are here, I presume Worm's Rock is secure. The preparations for my inauguration are complete. No, Lord Gortash. We were interrupted. Another quake in the lower city. More severe this time. So you came cowering to my chambers? I'm flattered, Sergeant. But even I cannot command natural phenomena to cease. Forgive me, my lord, but there is panic in the streets. The people are afraid. Perhaps the people would be calm if you kept your nerve. I expect better from the flaming fist than to run scared from a slight tremor in the earth. Get back to your duties. Duties, duties, duties. Patrolling and saluting and following and bowing and scraping. Yes, sir. No, sir. Rip and cut your throat, sir. Your plan is falling apart, Lordling. Give me a reason not to cut you to ribbons. Control yourself, Orin. We need to focus on reuniting the stones or the brain will break free. These quakes are just the start. Neither of us expected the prison bearers to kill Ketherick. They'll be traveling to the city. Let's make sure we give them a Baldurian welcome. I itch to peel you. To split your skin. To see your skull shine in the light. Little tyrant. <sighs> Lucky for you, I harvested a whole family of living flesh in Rivington at High Sun. They will sate my blade thirst tonight. Oh, but tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow, my blades will thirst again. This should do nicely for a camp. Beyond the campsite, the city waits in uneasy silence, one sleep away. Something's on my mind. Shadowheart has found a little bit of herself again. Soluna cannot take all of the credit. She may have lit the way, but it is the cleric who took this step. That speaks well of your taste. I've heard my share of bad ballads about things I never did. If you have questions, ask. Just don't expect my answers to rhyme. More than I would like. In my youth, I was a brief and very much unwilling member of a colony's hive mind. I felt the way they think, saw the world as they do. Foul, unnatural creatures who find the foulness in us and twist it to their will. But then, who am I speaking to? You have far more experience than I. Then, greetings, Sir Tadpole. I was wondering where all the questions suddenly sprang from. Taken from the light to be raised in darkness, your truth is finally dawning, Shadowheart. You can follow its light, or you can retreat back into dusk. The truth is finally dawning. 
Shadowheart can follow its light, or she can retreat back into dusk. Shadowheart was no true child of Shah, merely a captive. She must have her vengeance. You saw Gortash, didn't you? What the fuck was he doing down there? Is all of this because of him? The tadpole, the absolute. How? I was his bodyguard. I looked after him with my life. I trusted him more than anything. He gave me a way to Zariel just for kicks. He ruined my life just when it was starting. And now he use up the entire Sword Coast. He has to die. And I'm gonna be the one who kills him! He can't get away with what he's done to me, to us. He won't get away with it. I can feel it. The engine. It's getting hotter, louder. It's going to blow if we don't find another way to fix it. You know, Zariel may have put the fucking thing in, but Gortash gave her the go-ahead. You expect this shit from devils, but not from the people you care about. Let's get to the city. Got business there I'm highly fucking keen to attend to. Looking forward to a bit of rest, if I'm honest. It's been a long century. Be gone, friend. I have a darling to adore. Our thoughts are as one, my friend. You must face the Chosen of Bane and Baal. I will do my part to see them laid low. The gate is closed. As is Casador. And we are no closer to knowing why that bastard is so obsessed with getting me back. I think we should track down my fellow Spawn. I'm not exactly looking forward to a reunion, but perhaps they'll know something. If we can find them, we can force them to tell us what he's been doing since I was gone. And honestly, I imagine they'll be coming for me in the night if I don't. Unless Cazadors change their orders, they'll be in the dens of this town, seeking prey. We should get to them first. And then we can make their pretty tongues talk. The Absolute should be a thing of the past, and I with it. Yet, at the risk of angering Mr. Fervor, I'm glad it didn't come to that, given what has come to light. The Elder Brain, but more importantly, the crown that he wore. Even without seeing it for myself, I could sense it. Netherese magic. So pure, so complete. I doubted what I was feeling at first. Most Netherese artifacts contain only the faintest amount of their former power. The ghost of an echo of a memory. That crown was different. I can't fathom how such a wonder survived. Surely everything of its ilk was destroyed along with Netheril itself, but no matter, it exists. I must learn more of it. That crown sits on our gargantuan elder brain bent on destroying us and everything we hold dear. Understanding its true nature might unlock the means of our victory. We need to learn more about what we saw. An artifact as powerful as that crown must have been documented somewhere. As luck would have it, we'll soon find ourselves near one of the finest book collections this side of Candlekeep. Sorcerer's Sundries. I need to go there and learn all I can. Ha! 
Sorcerer's Sundries is no mere trading post. It's been serving the arcane community for centuries. Their collection of rare tomes is unparalleled. <laughs> Nethery sects are hardly commonplace, but I'm certain they'll have one or two stashed away. You'll have to forgive my eagerness, but if my suspicions prove to hold water, this could be the answer to all our problems. Painful truths have been thrust upon Shadowheart. I believe she is strong enough to endure, but her path will be easier with our support. Only by a reputation. She was present when we marched against Ketherick Thorm, but on the far end of the battle lines from where I fought. And in the chaos that ensued, well, our forces were scattered. I led some to safety, but never learned of her fate. I'm glad to hear she survived. Though in truth, I should not be surprised. She was always said to be formidable and cunning. I could have learned much from her, no doubt. There is much to admire, judging by the stories. I cannot help but wonder how she would have handled some of the challenges I faced as Archdruid. Would she have helped the refugees? Defended the Grove? Controlled Korga? At least now we can benefit from her presence, and perhaps work to a common goal. Did you want something? If not, I'm perfectly happy to just gaze upon you a while. Of course. I suppose you've earned it. of the last days weigh heavily upon you. Sleep's rest is slow to come to one whose mind is so full. The Absolute is not a god, but an elder brain controlled by the Chosen of the Dead Three. They mean to use it to take control of the Sword Coast. All who carry the Tadpole are governed by the brain and by extension the Chosen. It will take but one order to transform them into an army of mind flayers. This would have been your fate too, were it not for the Dream Visitor's protection. With her help, you have uncovered the cult for what it really is. A plan of conquest orchestrated by the gods of death themselves. Together, you have the power to thwart the Dead Three. If you follow this path to its end, the Elder Brain will not answer to the Chosen. It will answer to you. Will you liberate them from their parasites and their religious delusions? Or will you use the power you gain for your own purposes? You will not have long to wait. All you need to do now is sleep. But sleep is not for you.
I'm here. Help me. I'm under attack. Freshened up and ready to fight. The skull. Come to the skull. It's not... attempts to be subtle, the Mind Flayer's awareness is everywhere. You blunder in its presence like a walk pup learning to walk. You must be joking. I am telling you my thoughts directly into your head. But if you insist on taking a look for yourself, be my guest. existence to date could have prepared you for this. As the horror subsides, you are left with only one coherent thought. You must do whatever you can to subdue the Githyanki. Happy? Now, join me. Fight! Look at me like that. I am a mind flayer. Yes. Without me, you would be a slave to the absolute. Of all the things to be indebted to, a bloody mind flayer. 
You may call me the Emperor. An adventurer. I came from Baldur's Gate, though I was never one to be constrained by circumstance. I longed for more. That longing brought me to Moonrise Towers on a search for treasure. To a colony of mind slayers who caught me, changed me into what I am now. thrall like any other, but I was fortunate. I broke free and started a new life in my old city. I sustained myself on criminals, unglamorous, but there are plenty of them, rarely missed, and they fueled me when I did my work. I had the good fortune to meet Duke Stillmain. We formed a partnership, and through her, I became the governing force behind the Knights of the Shield. The largest mercantile operation in Baldur's Gate. People referred to me as the Emperor. Such was my influence. Though of course they had no idea what I really was. My needs were sated. I was happy for a while. Until my true nature was discovered by the tyrant himself. Lord Gortash. He tore me from my home and brought me back to the brain where I became a slave once again. A slave he continued to call me Emperor. The name was intended as a slight to remind me of the heights from which I fell. But I have grown fond of it. It encapsulates well who I've become. Indeed, his hubris knows no bounds. To enslave me, that was his nature. But to enslave an elder brain, a questionable decision. I shall look forward to sharing his downfall with you. Not all mind flayers are alike. I have always valued freedom above all else. In my past life, and present. It has been a burning need within me for as long as I can remember. Prince Orpheus, son of the first leader of the Githyanki. His power has been the source of your continued protection against the voice of the Absolute. The power to disrupt hive mind communication. It is the same power that enabled Orpheus' his mother to bring about the fall of the Elithid Empire eons ago. A power she passed on to him, and that I leveraged for you. When Orpheus' his mother left, a usurper took her place. Vlakith declared herself queen of the Githyanki. Vlakith wanted his power, but Orpheus rose against her, and so she sealed him and his honor guard within this prison. Bound by infernal chains, Orpheus could never leave. Bound by duty, his guard never would. They were close to breaking my hold on that prince. And if they had succeeded, we would be lost. I am relieved. You have embraced your potential enough that you could help me eliminate them. Alone, Orpheus will be much easier to control. I do not have the privilege of knowing the answer, but the consequences are clear enough. Some Githyanki still revere him in defiance of their teachings. Blackith was safe as long as they believed him to be dead, but as you can see, he is very much alive. She kept him this way because she was reluctant to eradicate such power. Power that she might one day wish to take from him. If the Githyanki ever find out what she has done, there will be civil war. Blacketh will be finished. No.
Vortash sent me on a mission to retrieve the Astral Prism. I was one of many, but the first to find it. How Gortash or the other Chosen learned of its existence, I do not know. The moment I found it, I felt a change. My free will returning. I followed the feeling inside, and found Orpheus. I realized what the prism was for. Containment. While my body was within the prism's bounds, my mind was free. I could resist the Elder Brain, the Chosen. Better yet, I could plan to overthrow them. All I needed to do was subdue Orpheus and find allies in the outer world. You. That would be a terrible idea. The moment he is free, he will attack you. Your only defense would be to kill him. And in so doing, he would doom us both. Even though he is subdued, you feel Orpheus's revulsion. A pulsing hatred that cannot be contained. The Emperor is telling the truth. To him, you are just another wretched illithid. You carry a tadpole. As far as Orpheus is concerned, you are already a lithid, a sworn enemy, just like me. I appreciate that, but this is what I am. My original body was destroyed when I transformed. When I first escaped the Elder Brain, I searched for a new vessel. But the longer I inhabited this one, the more it grew on me. I realized that returning to my former self would only impose limitations. Any advantage I could gain by restoring my original appearance, I already had to hand in the form of magic and that humanoid shape you've come to know. As an Alithid, I have far surpassed who I ever was before. You too should embrace this change. I believe we'll have a better chance of defeating the Elder Brain if you embrace your latent lithid potential. I've been studying you for a while now. I believe I can trigger the next stage of your tadpole's life cycle while continuing to preserve your independence. You have seen what I can do. Imagine yourself with the same strength, the same intelligence, the same devastating beauty. If you let me, I can evolve you. The answer is twofold. One, I can, but it would kill you, as I told you before. Two, why would I? You have done well the limited form you have, but you would do far better as an illithid. So, do you wish to evolve or not? I understand. Let us hope then that your present self will be sufficient to deal with three gods of death and a giant magically enhanced elder brain. But in case you change your mind... Look after it. Use it when you're ready to evolve. You or your allies. It has vitality enough for you all. But we mustn't lose focus. We need to resume our journey. You heard the Chosen. The Brain has gone to the city, and the army marches to follow. We must not let them reach it. We must find the Brain, and bring it under our control.
By Balderan's bones, this is a lot to take in. Let's see if I've got this right. One, we've been carrying a Mind Flayer around with us this whole time. Two, it's been appearing as someone else in our dreams, cajoling us to embrace our new illithid talents. Three, the Mind Flayer's been siphoning a Gif Yankee prisoner's powers to shield us from the Absolute's voice. Did I miss anything? Ah, yes. Gith's only son. Locked away in his astral prison for defying Vlacketh. Sensational tales, aren't they? Almost unbelievable. With a narrator so unreliable, how do we tell fact from fiction? I can't pretend I have the answer, but I know the Elithids write about one thing. It holds our fates in its talons. Until the Absolute falls, there's no getting rid of it. So, there's been a Mind Flayer inside the artifact, or astral prism, the whole time we've had it. Sounds like utter madness, even though I've seen it with my own eyes. The more I learn, the less I understand just why I was sent to retrieve that thing. But it matters little now. I do not serve Shah anymore, nor the Mother Superior. The prism is no longer my mission. Saving my parents is. But I digress. Did you want something? Be honest. What do you think of the new look? Well, I'm glad someone does. Perhaps I'll get used to it. I have a lot to get used to right now. Of course. Your parasite communes with Lysel's. Her heart races as she learns of the events inside the astral prison. Orpheus, Gith's only son. He lives. The tainted blood of the mother. The traitor prince, the Laxerai. He sought Vlacket's head in a geich ploy for her throne. Listen close. The Emperor spoke only in half-truths. For you to know the tale of Orpheus, you must know the tale of Gith and of Vlacketh. Long ago, when we rose up against our gay slavers, Mother Gith made for the Hells to secure an alliance with the Archdevil Tiamat. Tiamat gifted the Gith Yankee our red dragons. Gith remained in the Hells, and Tiamat's envoy proclaimed Vlacketh our ruler. The first Vlacketh of many. It is Vlacketh 157 whom my people now call Queen. Orpheus was, is Gith's renegade spawn. A gay thrall who would return us to our slavers. He convinced his own mother's honor guard to join a coup against Vlacketh 1. He would have fed our empire to the Illithids had he succeeded. It was Kithrak Voss himself who slayed the prince in vicious battle. Or so the Varshis teach us. Yet the traitor's with us, controlled by that repugnant illithid. Should Orpheus go free, he would hand Vlacketh's dominion to his geich masters. The astral plane would be first to fall. The others would soon follow. Entirely. Vlacketh cast Sivim Krath Krashet. Only in Vlacketh may we find light. This is the creed. 
I will not abandon all 10,000 protocols over one sovereign secret. We find a way to enter the prism and slay Orpheus. He is a geek puppet cloaked in Gikyanki skin, and the most powerful mind master known to my people. One word from his scheming lips and the people would doubt. Two words and they would rage. Three words and they would bow to the false prince. The Githyanki would be slaves once more. And one by one, the plains would fall to the Geich. must find where Gortash and Orin have established themselves, and take their nether stones. Um, excuse me, I can't find my mum. Jenna! Uh, my cat is grub. He's shy. I'm not. My mum is called Emery. She went to go get some herbs for her spots. She was sick, and she was supposed to come back the same day. That was last ten day, though. Wow. Thanks. My mum would like this. She's the best cook in the world. And she taught me, too. I'll, um... I'll look for her. I think she'll probably come soon. Thanks a lot. Incredible to be back. My home. My city. Baldur's Gate is where I first raised a glass in toast at the tender age of 14 and got so tipsy from wine, I puked in Dillard Portier's bushes. It's where the flaming fist chased me after I'd stolen a peach from a cart in the wide. I got a good chewing out over it too. It's where my father taught me to hold a rapier, to read books of law, to know right from wrong. It's been seven years since I left. It's no paradise, but it's home and it's worth saving. And you? The city's yours too, after all. How's it feel to be back? Give it time. It's a city of many colors. Let them wash over you. Expeditions to the continent of Mastika gather in the harbor. The Church of Gon displays its most priceless treasures in the High House of Wonders. Voices raised in song on returning day. The heady wines at the Elf Song. There's truly no place like Baldur's Gate. Soldier, this is it. We're almost to the city. First through Worms Crossing, then on to the lower city. Oh, it smells the exact same. Ten years on, but still home. Incredible. Like I got something back. Something I've wanted for a really long time. When I touched you, I felt like a real person. My heart was racing, but I didn't hurt you. I don't have to be afraid of myself anymore. I don't have to hold back. <laughs> Not sure the world's ready for unleashed Karlak, but it's getting it anyway. Thanks to Damon. Thanks to you. <laughs> Thanks to fate. Worms Crossing. We could be inside the city walls before long. And I could be back where this all started. I hope so. So long as I'm willing to stroll right into the Mother Superior's trap, they have no reason to not tell me where to go.
Worms Crossing is a choke point. If I wanted to intercept a new arrival, I'd find somewhere before the bridge, blend in amongst the crowds, and wait. Most people seeking entry to the city will be refugees. I'd look wherever they're gathering. Um, excuse me, I can't find my mum. Jenna! Ah, uh, my cat is grub. He's shy. I'm not. My mum is called Emery. She went to go get some herbs for her spots. She was sick, and she was supposed to come back the same day. That was last ten day, though. Wow. Thanks. My mum would like this. She's the best cook in the world. And she taught me, too. I'll, um, I'll look for her. I think she'll probably come soon. Thanks a lot. Oh, I could go for a good meal. I'm in I'm in me? Hmm. Turn back, citizen. No passage in this direction. It's bloodier than a butcher's backyard out there. Piles of dead absolutists, and a few of our own as well. The cultists assaulted the gate, armed to the teeth trying to break in. They nearly had it too, before the steel watch intervened. <laughs> a little more than that. You'll see for yourself soon enough if you head to the city. Earthquake, maybe. I don't remember one ever shaking Young lady, the city. Shadow Heart, a word if you will. I just lost a wager, thanks to you. Who are you? Someone who bets that you'd never be foolish enough to actually show your face in this city again. But here you are. And the gold in my purse is soon to take flight. There have been whispers about you, sister. About your faith, your loyalty, your company. I can't help but feel the strangest twinge of disgust as I look upon you. Is it true? Has Our Lady forsaken you? I know the truth. I know my parents still live. Tell me where they are, and I have no quarrel with you. I'm afraid the quarrel is unavoidable, thanks to you. Now I must report your reappearance. If you are intent on bringing matters to a head, then seek out the House of Grief in the Lower City. Though, if I was you, I'd be very tempted to just forget it all and disappear. You have some form of doing so, after all. So, you survived. That's more than many of my kin can say. It's mainly anger that keeps me going. Zevlor was supposed to lead us, but he froze when we needed him most. I, I haven't seen him since the massacre on the road, which is lucky for him. So few of us left. Our strength is never... You think you can just walk into our camp? Present yourself to Alma, or leave. They need to be wiped. Rechtei hathran rust. Welcome, friend. You find us on a solemn day. We underestimated an enemy. Frey, thou disk durovna. Frey. Vald is a blast. Our tribe left camp on a rescue mission. Only Alma and those you see here returned. They could not. Im orak, nete, krasin, netra. I will say no more. 
It's not my tale to tell. No. That shame is mine alone. We would not normally tolerate outsiders at a time like this. The Slayer of Ketherick Thorn. Well, these are strange times indeed. The head of the Shadow Cursed Warlord is an impressive trophy. I am wondering if I could tempt you with another. Baldur's Gate is haunted by many things, but one of its most insidious is the vampire Cazador. For years, his foul spawn have stolen away innocents at night, whisking them back to his palace. Recently, they struck our camp. They took our children, every last one, our whole future. We are monster hunters all. Our purpose is to kill beasts like these. But in our haste to save our little ones, we were rash. We charged straight into an ambush. They tore us to pieces. Vampire spawn and werewolves. I have never seen a vampire's lair so heavily guarded. What's left of my tribe is wounded and broken. We cannot stand against him to save our children. But perhaps the Slayer of Ketherick could. The main entrance is blockaded, but there is another way. Near the park, you will find a broken tower, mid-repair. Climb the scaffolding, and you can enter his palace. It may be watched, but you will not walk into the slaughter that we did. Then we will settle for blood. Cazador must be destroyed. For the safety of the city, and to make sure no one else must feel our pain. If you do this, our entire tribe will be in your debt. On our honor, it will be repaid. May the gods keep you, and damn your enemies. Halt! By orders of Lord Gortash, refugees are no longer allowed in the city. Turn around. Or do you have the means to support yourself? My good lady, I am Will Ravenguard. I will not pay to enter my own city. Ravenguard? Ugh, more like the ghastliest tiefling south of... No refugees. It is decreed. Then you don't need to be in the city. Next! Outraged. Aren't you... I knew there was a story here, and there you are, the hero of the hour, walking right up to me. The name's Lens, reporter with the Boulder's Mouth Gazette. Care to do a quick interview? You, of course. News travels fast in this city, and after your exploits, you're quite the celebrity. This interview will be our biggest issue yet. It won't take more than two moments of your time. If you play your cards right, this could make the cover. I just need some extra details. So, you've arrived at Baldur's Gate. What's brought you here at a time like this? Everybody needs a rest from time to time. Even seasoned adventurers like yourself. I imagine you've a need to let off some steam after your recent adventures in the Shadow-Cursed Lands. My sources tell me you recently vanquished the fearsome General Ketherick Thorn. How did you manage that? 
I'm a journalist. It's my job to know everything. Unfortunately, the version I heard was light on the details. So what did you do to Ketherick? I'm sure you are much more than that. You proved to be quite the thorn in his side. His absolutist friends can't be very happy with you. The cult's threat is far from extinguished. What's your plan of attack? Perhaps it could inspire some like-minded citizens to help your cause. You must have some strategy in mind. You think chaos courses through your veins? You have no idea. So, you're the lickspittle who crushed the Bone Lord's thrall. <laughs> I know the truth. <laughs> you come for our nether stones. Come to prize one from the tyrant's death grip. Pluck the other from my rotted carcass. <laughs> when you find the lordling, tell him Orin is watching. So, Orin is a shapeshifter. There's nowhere else to How go. How long has she been watching? Please. Orders are orders. We've got ours, you've got yours. I need... Men, women, children, all barred from entry. A damn travesty. A decade ago, Baldur's Gate would have welcomed any and everyone seeking refuge. Who would take in these souls, if not the Jewel of Baldurin? As long as Gortash is in charge, they'll be left shivering at the gates. All part of the plan, of course. Step one, create an army and order it to march on the city. Step two, shut the gates in the name of security. Step three, bask in the applause. Gortash hasn't made Baldur's Gate safe. He's made it a prison. And when his army breaks through, the people will have nowhere to run. To make this city a safe haven, we'll need to bathe Gortash and his allies in their own blood. Chum, can't let you through. Worms Rock's closed for the day. <laughs> Not closed to Duke Older Ravenguard's own son, surely. You having a laugh, devil boy? I oh, know Ravenguard, and last I knew, his spawn wasn't sporting those horns. The joke's on you. No entry. That's the end of it. That's the end of it. Ordination is what? Gortash is to be proclaimed Archduke. His grip on the city tightens. Gaining access will not be easy. Raise your eyes. Look upon she who conquers. Who am I? I. And Black, undying queen of the noble Githyanki, god regent of the six arms of Trunarath! And you, you are abominations twice over. You carry geek parasites, and you harbor the heretic Prince Orpheus. Glorious Vlacketh. I am a 
unclean. I exhort you, grant me guidance. Hear my words, Vinisk. We are Githyanki. We move mountains. We snuff out stars. We shake the plains. The heretic prince would shatter us in an instant. The great dominion shrunk to the head of a pin. Can this be true? Is the Githyanki prince really a threat to his own people? Or simply a challenge to Vlakith's rule? Return to the astral prism. Slay Orpheus the Pretender. Serve me. Nor Kithrak, you will be Bart of Lackith, commander of dragons. My only, my chosen. Kneel before me, make your promise. Your parasites resonate. You feel Lazelle's ecstasy as she moves to kneel before her queen. Water and blood. They envelop you, they drag you downward. You are submerged in past, present, and future. In this endless sea of understanding, you find truth. Lazel believes a Zathis device cleanses the parasite, but it's used for extracting memories and killing the infected. Vlakith does not welcome her finest young warriors into her royal city to reward them, but to consume their essence in her quest for godhood. The Lich Queen doesn't intend to reward Lazel, but to devour her. Vlakith speaks only in lies. by a prison of your design. Our people deserve the truth, but you have denied it to us. I have witnessed too much, and you have given me too little. Finally, I can see. Orpheus will live, and I will hear his creed. This is my word. Your word is nothing. You are nothing. Kithraki will bring you. I will tear your flesh from your bones and devour your skull's marrow while you beg for death. I will consume you. I will unmake you. to the truth. Vlakit's forsaken me, and there's no going back. As long as the Undying Queen reigns, I am never to soar unbound over the Astral Sea, never to cross the One in the Void. As it should be. Better a short life built on truth than immortality woven of lies. Better to unite the Githyanki under a prince who would free their minds and honor their bodies. So why do I feel so bitter? Vlakith has upended Lazel's whole existence. Everything she knew to be true, every plan and aspiration she ever held has been painfully ripped away. 
Maisel's bitterness is born of sadness. She is mourning the loss of the person she once was and can never be again. How well you've come to know me. But in truth, she didn't take everything. I have what I have gathered for myself. I'm more to a new regent, a new land, and new allies. Vlaketh cannot unmake she who no longer exists. And so from the old battle cries is birthed another. Tmar Sala Orpheus must still now forge an Inyeri. Orpheus's will above all. May the comet blaze my path forward. Orpheus's freedom is my want and my need. To deny his freedom would be to deny my own. There will come a time when I can think about myself beyond the Lich Queen who enslaves the Githyanki and the Prince who would liberate them. But that time won't come until the Prince of the Comet flies again. We find a way to free Orpheus from his astral chains. Orpheus Tavki Nazin. What about him? The historical slates describe Orpheus as a fearsome, terrible creature, powerful beyond measure and enthralled by the Geich. So mad with power, he'd smash through the Githyanki Empire and deliver the shards to his illithid masters. And glowing with such psionic force that he and his red dragon blazed a trail through the skies, a lethal comet careening towards my people. Lies, of course. Vlakith spread a false image of Orpheus as monstrous betrayer, and her knights as the butchers who sliced him through. She was right to fear him, I'll grant her that. So great is the comet, it could shatter her reign. The Emperor may be loathsome, but it's right. Orpheus can disrupt a gay hive mind. A talent like that makes the Prince a powerful shield and a powerful weapon. Why destroy a weapon like that when you can contain it in a relic and keep it for yourself? A weapon is only an asset for as long as it isn't pointed at you. The means of Vlakith's own end has been ripped away from her. Better to have Orpheus killed than to risk his escape. Better to risk the rise of Illithids than let the Prince of the Comet deny her the godhood she craves. Orpheus is honor guard, loyal to the end. Trapped by Vlakith in the same prism holding their noble prince, fruitlessly hacking at the sphere that contains him. They see us as Geich, tadpoled husks in the Empress' thrall. I regret their deaths, but I pledge to live as they perished, in the service of Gith's son. I have to keep going. Um, hi. It's me, Yenna. You remember me, right? You were really nice to me before, and, um, my mum hasn't come back yet. She might come later. I don't think she's coming. Could we maybe stay here? It isn't much of a home, but what's ours is yours. Thank you, thank you. Don't be shy. 
Oh, yeah. I have a lot on my mind and, well, in it. Vlakith's a fearsome one. The sort it's hard to say no to. But Lazel said it anyway to her immense credit. She's choosing truth. She's choosing freedom. For her, for Orpheus, for the Githyanki people. <laughs> I wish I knew a good Githyanki cheer to celebrate the occasion, but the only gift phrases I've picked up are the sweary sort. Private word would be nice. Damn! It can't have been easy for Lazel to stand up to Vlakith like that. But there's nothing that woman can't do. We just played host to an undying queen. Oh, and that's without our fine silverware. Lazelle has courage turning her back on a lifetime's belief. As for us, best we stay out of interplanar politics, I think. Orpheus is on his own. But should Great Vlack have come to settle a score with Lazelle, well, <laughs> I might be convinced to kill her. Undying or not, she was very loud. You think me lonely? <laughs> in truth, I prefer travel in a small pack such as this. Unburdened by numbers, we're free to act rather than react. A little like the old days. With allies, every bit as peculiar. Give or take a few tadpoles. Would you? In time, then. Perhaps once you found a rocking chair for me to doze off in. So, Lazel's finally seen the light and turned on her mistress. It took a little time, but she got there. Though it's not over yet. Masters rarely let their slaves go without a fight. I won't lie. The thought hardly fills me with uh, glee. Even with my newfound advantages, he's still an incredibly powerful vampire. But he's arrogant, too. If he does hear I'm back, He'll try to take me and expose himself in the process. Then I'll be able to strike. <laughs> Neither will I, darling. At least I hope you'll come along for the show. But regardless, the plan is simple. Find him, stop him from gaining almighty power, and then really enjoy killing him. Always good to talk, my friend. Are you sure? The blade stands at the ready. And just when things were warming up. I didn't think I'd live to see the day when Lazel turned her back on Vlakis. But all things considered, good for her. Then that's where we need to go. My parents are in there somewhere. Aren't you a sight for sore eyes? Of course. I suppose you've earned it.
So, it seems that Vlaketh is Lazel's queen no longer. That took no small amount of backbone. I have. He speaks to me during my nightly meditations. He is well. And Oliver also. At times they are one, and at others they divide. Easier for playing, perhaps. And the land thrives also. I doubt you would recognize it. Perhaps one day, you and I can both return and see it for ourselves. Glad to see I'm not the only one on the wrong side of an omnipotent authority figure. Lazel did well to break free of Vlakith's manipulations, though I doubt Vlakith will let such insubordination go unpunished. So Bal's Chosen is a doppelganger. <sighs> I should not be surprised. They have ever been among his favorite servants. Orin is testing you. Either she thinks herself a predator, playing with her food. Or she fears what you might do. Good. Exactly. Hmm. The last time I fought doppelgangers, the Balspawn Sarevok was using them to subvert the city government, aid his rise to power. But Orin... is more predator than politician, I think. She simply wants to make us feel... hunted, isolated. Tell the Lordling that Orin is watching. Seems that Gortash and Orin have had a little falling out. We should leverage that. As you wish. you killed Ketherick and took his netherstone, the Chosen's control of the brain has been... brittle. It's rebelling against Orin and Gortash. Fiercely. I suspected that when we took Ketherick's stone, the brain would begin to break free. Those brain quakes confirm that my suspicion was correct. I do not know what happens now when it receives their orders. And I do not dare guess. You feel the Emperor's fear as if it were your own. An Elder Brain enslaved is one thing. An Elder Brain unleashed will be the end of everything. Beautiful, isn't it? The mighty Prince Orpheus, contained in submissive slumber. Come. You may as well sit a while, now that you are here. Your company isn't unwelcome. Trying to guard us. The brain is restless, but I am distracted, and my lack of focus is endangering us. I'm haunted by memories. They are relentless. I can think of nothing. No one else. Duke Stelmain, or Berlin, as I knew her. I wasn't ready for her death. 
you thought you were my first ally. Far from it. I have long sought the allyship of others. It is the only way to succeed. Though my relationship with Berlin was different from my relationship with you. I see that you are unable to let that go. But do not forget that I trusted you with my life as you trusted me with yours. Manipulation or not, we need each other. My relationship with Berlin was similar in this regard, though less dramatic. In life, she was my business partner, back when we ran the Knights of the Shield. A difficult task for a Mind Flayer. Duke Stelmane trusted me, and the city trusted her. I concede the plot, but Berlin took center stage. It was she who met with the merchants, politicians, and patriarchs. It was she who negotiated deals and signed off on agreements. Her rooms played host to the most important conversations in the city. Together, we brought order to chaos. At its height, everything that happened in that city went through the shield. Through us. I could not have done any of it without her. Just as I cannot do any of this without you. But now, she is gone. I appreciate your understanding. What I feel is deeper than superficial cures can reach. And not entirely unwelcome. Most people think that Mind Flayers are soulless husks who feel nothing. I am glad you are not most people. You have shown me great empathy. We are closer now. Close enough, I hope that I can ask you to reconsider your position regarding your physical form. I know it is no easy choice for you, but we will have a far better time ridding the city of Gortash if you accept just a touch of illithidness. Not to mention the Elder Brain itself. Our chances against it greatly improve the more illithid we both are. Another quake. The Brain is rebelling again. I need to focus, and so do you. What's up for discussion? Welcome to Danthilon's dance. Greetings, sir. Your noble bearing brings a little class to my humble... Hmm. Oh, you can turn off the charm, Enthral. He's with me. Blueberries. Thought I had a sale. You look tired, Harper. I missed you too. They're already here? Down below. Here's the key. You seem a nice sort. So I'll assume the insult was accidental. <laughs> and Farrell's no harper. And claims no love for those who are. But he's been known to shelter us when we need it. Entarl has been known to charge rent. Harpers have been known to ignore him. Now go on. The short father may send me an actual paying customer today. Hi, Harper. May Saluna's tears shine on this meeting. A very formal greeting, Geraldus. You are well? Yes, High Harper. Uh, standing beneath Saluna's tears. The lad's a little nervous, Jahira. We heard of your great victory against Ketherick. Geraldus isn't nervous. He's terrified. And he's using Saluna's tears as some kind of code. I understand, Geraldus. Take a moment. And you, Harper. 
Hmm. There is something familiar about you. Doesn't she remind you of our old friend Marcus? Jahira's meaning is clear. Marcus was a traitor laying a trap. The same, it seems, is happening here. Did I get it right? Shalunis tears. It is said no false face can stand beneath their light. An old code harper. But yes, you got it right. Now I need your report. We had eyes on suspected cultists in the city. Like you asked. We thought we were tracking them, but... They were tracking you instead. Evidently. Doppelgangers. And they're not just working with the cult, our high harper. They're... Part of it. The Baalists, I think. Sworn to Orin the Red, yes. We've already had the pleasure. Go on. Everything seemed fine until your latest orders. Until we started to search for the Rajamar. They struck the same night. I woke to one of them strangling Kelvin. While smiling at me out of her face. She said... It said that I'd report back to you as normal. Lou, are you here? And I had no choice. I'm sure it felt that way, Geraldus. The others were likely dragged back to Orin. Tortured. Sacrificed. I do not expect you to die for me. But to risk Antharl... Any citizen who might have wandered in? There is always a choice. And the Harper must be able to make the hard ones. Perhaps this isn't the life for you after all, Geraldus. No, Jahira! Hi, Harper! Please! I'm still a Harper. I want to help! You've scarcely signed up, boy. And there is a war coming. Why die a Harper? when you could still live as anything else. I want to fight for Chelvin, for all of them. So it means something. Death is death. To look for meaning in it is foolishness, boy. Childish storybook nonsense. <laughs> exactly the kind the Harper would spout, I suppose. Fine. I have no right to make the choice for you. Not when this mess is of my making. I sent the Harpers hunting after the cult, without thinking what it would mean to be hunted in turn. Now they are compromised. And if not for you, I wouldn't even know it. I'm sorry, Geraldus. Harper. And I owe you an apology as well. I haven't told you everything I hope to learn here today. First, Geraldus. You're the last Harper in the city I can rely on. Lay low and rest while you can. I have matters to discuss with my friend here. <laughs> Orin knows the hunt. In one stroke, she places the Harpers beyond our reach, separates us from our pack. Until we know who the False Facers are, we cannot trust anyone beyond ourselves. Except Geraldus. It 
It has been some time since anyone dared rap my knuckles like you did. No less than I deserve. I have not been overly generous with the truth. I came here to learn of the Chosen, true enough. But I set my heart for searching for someone else, too. Tell me, what do you know of a man named Minsk of Rashomon? <sighs> oh my gods! Minsk! The name is as familiar as Jahira's own. A hero of the Time of Troubles, who saved the city more than once. But few know of his fate, I think. I had hoped to keep it that way. Minsk is an old friend. Perhaps my oldest. We've fought at one another's backs, times beyond counting. And the last time I saw him, I left him to die. There always is. But that is still the fundamental fact of it. Before we ever heard of this absolute, we received word of a gathering in the Undercity. What we found was the first dark seed of this plot. A circle of cultists with mind flares in their midst. We might have ended it there, cut off at the root, but before I could send for help, Minz charged in alone. It was chaos. He was overrun, dragged down beneath a mass of tentacles. I had a choice. Stay and let word of this cult die with us, or leave him, and live to fight another day. The world takes much from those who presume to defend it, but sometimes you get to take it back. So don't be sorry, because I mean to use you, if you're willing. Infection, indoctrination, eradication. That has been the fate of everyone the cult has captured so far. But it has not been yours. With your help, perhaps it need not be Minsk's either. As simply as that? For no other reason than that I asked? Hmm. Perhaps you two will get along. Oh, the point is moot without the means to find him. Without the Harpers, we shall have to find another path. I'll have a better idea of what that is once we're through the gates. Seems I need to reacquaint myself with this damned city. Thanks for stopping by Calm's Garms. I'm Calm. Well, Calm Men. <laughs> what can I do you for? Sounds good. Get you something a bit fresher than your current outfit. Remember, Calm's Garms, here for all your fashion needs. Sorry. A weary traveler, battered and bruised, you come for sustenance, no, decadence. A mien cool as ice, yet eyes burning hot. Oh yes, I know your bliss. A sturdy dwarf, a leather whip, she gives, you receive. Or have I misjudged you? Of course you wouldn't. Who can resist the pleasure of the strap, once leather meets flesh? 
It's Fionn you seek, our stern librarian. She isn't here today, alas. Your penance must wait. Well, we've other ways to fill your void. A drink for one, a pair of drow for another. Choose your sin. Nisha, our lovely nymph. But she's engaged in the nymph's grotto on the top floor, sweeting. The client's a favorite of hers, too. I doubt you'll be able to tear her away. But we are blessed to have a devil in residence at the moment. A temporary guest. But he asked that I send any potential clients his way. Everyone who's paid a visit looks quite changed by the experience. Indeed he did. Raphael. Exceedingly handsome, and with a voice that could make the foulest blasphemy seem the sweetest hymn. Sorry, I've just felt so distracted recently. I need a quick word. Such. Beautiful. More than beautiful. You are the aurora stretched across the north skies. You are the golden dunes swept across the Kalim. You are the fruit of the forbidden palm. Soft on my skin. Sweet on my tongue. You are my sin and salvation. Your parasite stirs, and you gaze at the nymph through the flaming fist's hungry eyes. Your muscles shiver with her longing. Your skin burns with her heat. What's... What's wrong, Jara? What are you? Wait. I know you. I don't understand. What? Your face. The Absolute has shown me. Jara, what's going on? Who's this oh. man? Oh. God. screams in agony. The change has come. Pustules boiling beneath your skin, your bones twisting, your flesh rupturing. And suddenly, silence. What's happening? no joy in this. Hells, I'd heard tales of mind flayers, talons sharp as daggers and tentacles yet more fearsome, but no tale did justice to its ethereal beauty. It floats like a butterfly. Its blood shimmers like silver. How can I help it? I don't regret its death. But I marvel that such a work of art could ever live. Her gaze intensifies. Your breath quickens and your heart skips a beat. Why should I deny it? 
My urge is as natural as the grape upon the vine. But perhaps there are other flavors that might satisfy my palate. Rapture. Close your eyes and listen. You see only darkness. Her voice shines through it, warmer than the sun, yet cooler than night. The all-being. Here, there is no suffering. Here, you want for nothing. Here, you are anything. You have one word. Tell me, what will you be? You are more than contented. You are at total peace. Your belly is full. Your mind rested. Your eyes bright. No more will you hear the clang of steel on steel. No more will you fear the cry of a wolf, the growl of an ogre. You are warm. You are safe. Your flesh shivers, your heart bursts. True ecstasy for one fleeting moment. Open your eyes. I remember you, and you'll remember me. Something's on my mind. I'm glad you came. Not to my door. Not yet. But to the final reckoning. One more thing before we begin, though. For the first time since the Nautiloid, your mind is clear. It's unsettling. That was no party trick. Somebody's missing, can't you tell? That illithid you keep in your pocket can't hear us anymore. Huh. What's the catch? Oh, calm. It's the reason you're in this predicament. And I'm your only way out of it. Indulge me. And at least hear me out. I'll admit, you've impressed me. I wasn't sure you'd make it this far. But no matter how far you come, you're still on the road to ruin. A road that leads directly to a confrontation with the Elder Brain. At best, it will kill you and everyone else in this city. At worst, it will assimilate you and you won't have enough free will left to even wish you were dead. You have the key to destroying it in the palm of your hand, though. In a manner of speaking, but it's the one inside the prison that you need, not the Elithid, the Gith. I can give you the means to break him free. I suppose you'd rather suck on the Emperor's tentacles till the end of your days? Orpheus, is your only hope of surviving this horror show without devolving into an illithid. To you, he will be a friend. After all, you're at war with an elder brain. If I'd realized you were so gullible, I'd have tricked you into selling your soul for a pocketful of beans when we first met. 
to the Emperor, you are nothing more than a beast of burden. One that will transport it to the Elder Brain. An ox requires food and the occasional beating to keep it moving. You are simpler. The Emperor's words serve as both carrot and stick. Perhaps it is true that Orpheus would ally with you against the Elder Brain. But if he proves uncooperative once free, you may have to kill him. The Orphic Hammer. An artifact capable of shattering the chains that hold Prince Orpheus is held securely in my House of Hope, even now. Good and truth rarely go hand in hand, but in this case, they are happy bedfellows, and we can be too. I swear to you, I have the solution to your problem. Isn't it just? And it's even more convenient that you can give me exactly what I want in return. There it is. Of course. You really do think highly of yourself. My sights are set on something much more valuable than your soul. <laughs> Succulent, though it would be. I want the crown that dominates the Elder Brain. Power, ancient and full of wonder. I have craved it ever since the Archwizard Cassus created it long centuries ago and brought doom to the Empire of Netheril. That was the great age of humanity and Netheril's flying sky cities were the apex of civilization. I was there the day it all fell apart. Entire cities plummeted from the sky like angels with broken wings. The screams, oh, the screams. Hundreds of thousands of people watching in horror as the ground came up to meet them. <laughs> It was not a happy meeting. And Cassus was responsible. Not driven by malice, but by ambition. He forged a crown imbued with all the powers of magic. A crown that would make any who wore it a god. Men cannot contain so much power. The crown destroyed its creator, and his empire fell with him. Cassus's folly, the bards and scholars call it. I call it hope. The hope of creating a better world and the perils of unchecked hubris. I knew then that the folly of mortals could be the triumph of devils and that I could use that crown to unite the nine under one. Archdevil Supreme, me. <laughs> Zariel wouldn't like that much. But even I'm not so desperate to spite her I'd put the Hells in this bastard's hands. The Hells require order to function. It is what separates us from mortals and demons. With the crown, I would impose perfect order, unity, efficiency, control. My kingdom would control its borders and stay within them. It was stolen from right under my nose all those centuries ago. The archdevil Mephistopheles snatched up the crown and squirreled it away in one of his vaults. He is not more than a frigid archivist. So much power and potential kept inert. 
He made a miracle into a museum piece. I raged. But only for a decade or so. Then I waited, ever watching for more than a thousand years, for a mistake, a mishap, a misadventure. And these chosen, who have caused you so much trouble accidentally, did me a favor. They brought the crown back into play. Yes, it does. Especially when I see what a bloody mess they've made of their whole scheme. They must have raided Mephistopheles' vault. Impressive, I must admit. But they'll be dead soon. If you don't kill them, the Elder Brain will. It doesn't have feelings in the way you'd understand them. <laughs> but it seems rather angry. It is inevitable. When you destroy the brain, and you will because you must, the crown will be yours for the taking. And when that moment comes, you give the crown to me. In exchange, I give you the hammer now. A simple transaction, it seems, but it's more than that. He's offering you an alternative to the mind flare in your head. Take Raphael's deal and you could free Orpheus. With Orpheus free, you would have no need to rely on the Emperor. But there's no guarantee that Orpheus would be on your side. And if you take the deal, you'll have to fulfill it. You'll have to deliver the crown of Carsus to the devil himself. He claims his ambition is to unite the Hells, but can he be trusted to stop there? Do you trust him more than you trust the Emperor? How short-sighted. Much better to put it into the right hands. Hands that will ensure it is removed from this world. And it's the only way you can ensure that you remain part of this world. I won't stop you. But time is running out. So, don't stay away for long. If you see reason, I'll be here, waiting. Right up to the moment the world ends. I wonder what's past this. There you are. I thought I'd lost you. Something was blocking me from hearing your thoughts. Raphael. Well, thank you for your honesty. Of course, I should have known the devil would come sniffing. The stench of impending chaos is irresistible to them. And what did he want with you? Giving a devil what he wants sounds like a brilliant idea. And what did he offer you in return for bringing it to him? Tell me you turned him down. Good. I am glad. But be careful. The devil is like a cockroach. No matter what you do to it, it will always come back. I doubt this will be the last time you are approached. I trust that you will continue to remember who is really on your side. Without my protection, you cannot defeat the Elder Brain. You cannot even get close to it, no matter what the devil whispers in your ear.
my way. Worms Crossing. This place has been a haven. The Harpers were less than welcome in the city proper. Seems hard to imagine your efforts haven't always been appreciated. The great devil grows sloppy. He makes his offer, but only after telling us where to find what we seek. The Orphic Hammer. I suppose we will have to see if this House of Hope is open to visitors. You're sure? Later, then. I tell you not to get in trouble, but I suspect it will find you whether you like it or not. Useful as the hammer would have been, I'm relieved we're not in the Devil's debt. Once his kind has you under their thumb, they won't ever let you go. Darling, I thought you'd never ask. Lead on. We fix on supplies. Sound off. What can't get some bobs from Danthalon's dancing acts? I wish to never more interesting ways. From the velvety, where I can not over the storm of the storm. I don't want to leave. I know it works. We're the safe in the wild. It's a wonderful. Look, investigator. Brilgor might have been a criminal, but he was no murderer. You're missing something. You have to be. Enough, Yanis. Listen to yourself. You are defending a man who ritually slaughtered your high priest. The evidence speaks for itself. Brilgor killed Father Lorcan, then, be it out of shame or profane duty, offed himself with the same blade. Case closed, Sister Yanis. Shitey little elephant. Oh, um, I apologize, stranger. Language like that hardly befits a rector of ill mater. You could certainly say that. Two people just died on temple grounds. Our high priest, Father Logan, and one of the new refugees, Brilgor. Investigator Valeria thinks it's a murder and is content to blame Brilgor, the politically convenient target. Feel free to look around the temple, but fair warning, the investigator won't change her mind without significant new evidence. Charette's caress would be my best bet. That's her usual haunt after closing a case. Valeria never found the murder weapon, so that could be a start. Anything disproving the refugee murder suicide angle, really. I really hope you find something. For all our sakes. Hey! You paid Raphael a visit. It's a dwarf you crave, whip in hand. Go on, tell me I'm wrong. Of course you wouldn't. Who can resist the pleasure of the strap? Once leather meets flesh. It's Fion you seek, our stern librarian. She isn't here today, alas. Your penance must wait. Well, we've other ways to fill your void. A drink for one, a pair of drow for another. Choose your sin. Swishing. I'm no fortune teller. If I had a crystal ball, I promise I'd already have consulted it. Truth is, Fionn's gone well missing. And my hands may be skillful, but they were not made to turn every last stone she might be hiding behind. To service is my calling, not to be served. Ugh. 
But I'd be a fool to say no. The girl kept my coffers near overflowing. Two flights up, then turn right, and right again. That's Fionn's pleasure room, Elminster's library. Here, take the key. Chance They're the kind of people over, no one would ever miss. And I will gladly do so. We should go. I do not want to face the Master if we're late for his Black Mass. Soon, sister. I only need one more mark. We have enough for the Master. No more needed. It's not for the Master, it's for me. I spent 100 years eating rats and dogs, but soon I'll be able to feast. I want someone there, ready for me. And once the Mass is done and our Lord grants us freedom, I can celebrate by drinking them dry. Cazador promised you your freedom, and you believed him. Ha! You were never burdened with intelligence, Petras. But your load seems especially light these days. Astarian! It... It cannot be. Oh, that's no way to welcome back a brother, Dal. <laughs> Didn't you miss me? Why would you come back? You got out. You were free. Isn't it obvious, sister? He wants to ascend with the rest of us. He heard about the ritual and the power our master will grant us. So he came back with his tail between his legs, hoping all would be forgiven. You always were an idiot, Petras. No! Why does Cazador need me? What is he planning? Tell me what I need to know, or I swear you'll burn! The Master is preparing the Black Mass. Beneath his palace, there's a defiled chapel. It was hidden there the entire time, hidden from us all. Keep talking. The Black Mass, it will be his triumph. He'll complete the ritual and emerge the Vampire Ascendant. He'll walk in the sun, he'll be free of the hunger. He'll wield power no vampire has ever possessed. Best of all, we'll join him. His loyal servants walking in the light as living vampires. We'll be free, brother. <laughs> you can't believe that. You can't be that stupid. We deserve this, Astarian. Can't you see? We've given him everything. Our blood and tears, and he's finally going to reward us. And you will be with us when the time comes. It's fate, written in your very flesh. Yes, and they'll be trembling in fear when they tell him. They're no threat to us. They have no choice but to do... Cazador's bidding. I pity them. Still, though, a living vampire. Hmm. Yes, but only because of the parasite. This would be true freedom. Freedom from the hunger. Freedom to live a real life in the sun. No temple required. And if I were to ascend instead of him, freedom from Cazador, once and for all. It doesn't feel like a lie. It feels like exactly the kind of power Cazador would chase. I have to know. I have to face him. I knew I was right about you. You're a true friend.
And now we know he's skulking beneath his palace. We can take the hunt to Cazador. All right, let's go. This place stinks of rat blood and despair. Be more open to Blood near the bed. Notice some blood has pooled on the wooden floor. You notice the blood source, a body hidden under the bed. Full of shapeshifters. Father Logan's name is written here too. Hey, you the oh, another case closed, another bottle open. Huzzah to Valeria! <laughs> Hang on a sec. I recognize that face. You were talking to Yanis after I left the temple. I bet she's put you up to something. Why must you busybodies insist on interrupting a perfectly good night? I know that look. You remind me of Devella. Fine! If you doubt my conclusions, out with it. What have you found? My assistant. She's posted in the Lower City investigating Duke Stelmane's murder. Now, back to it. What have you found? While that is startling, it still doesn't disprove my theory that Brilgor killed Father Lorgan, does it? That's what you need if you want to change my mind. Hard evidence. A reason, too, if you're at it. Why was Lorgan killed? <gasps> you're telling me more than one person has been killed? In Baldur's Gate? You must have something better than that. I need hard evidence and a motive. Why would someone else kill Lorgan? How can we be sure it wasn't Brilgor? A Baal plot. You as well. Devella's been harping on about Baal for months. Fancies herself something of an expert. I assumed it was just a bunch of conspiracy cods wall up in fear-mongering. But she's been unusually insistent about this one, even for her. Oh, fine. I'll bite. What's your theory? Well, if that's true, that sounds dreadful. And complicated. As if this cult of the Absolute wasn't enough to worry about. Constable Devella is going to be a real pain in the trunk about this. Since you seem to be on an obnoxiously similar wavelength, why don't you seek her out? She'll be at the Elf Song Tavern. Show her the list, and I'll stay and inform the Fist here. Oh, and you'll need this pass. It'll give you access to the lower city. Well, what are you waiting for? You've a bloody conspiracy to solve. Move! Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. 
Seems like a good moment to talk. Your pleasure is mine, sweeting. Murdered! Ye gods, the poor thing! Oh, by the mother of cats, I pray she didn't suffer. They'll miss that face. Else, the regulars will miss her more. They swarmed her like honeybees at the hive. Ugh. Oh. Losing Fion slashed a big hole in my coin purse. I should get to replacing her. Sweeting. This is Baldur's Gate. I've seen more murders than a butcher's right eye. There'll be time for tears. Cruel as it is, I must turn my mind to business. Or, more precisely, the lack of it. Everyone. No entry today. Special occasion. Valeria? Well, I'm not messing about with a murder inquiry for damn sure. Straight ahead across the bridge. A blind ogre couldn't miss it. how you gained entry, but your trespass shall not be punished. Lord Gortash has been expecting you. The Watcher's presence fades, but another takes its place, confident, dominant, commanding. My most esteemed guests, we meet at last. I am Lord Enver Gortash. You are the prison bearer, slayer of the dread General Ketherick Thorne. I welcome you to Baldur's Gate, my city. It already is. Granted, there are a few formalities to complete, but... Well, why don't you come and see? Allow me to formally invite you to my inauguration. Make your way to the ceremonial hall. Gorgeous. We shouldn't have any more trouble Please from the guards. Your way to the audience chamber. Chamber. If it isn't little Will's chums. I hope he hasn't been too much trouble. Heard about his father. The Dead Three's puppet. A travesty, really. He's upstairs in Worms Rock, ordaining Gortash as Archduke. A splendid shindig, I hear. Perfect for crashing. Go on up. We'll talk after. And bring the pup along, if you can. I'd hate for him to miss the fun. Interesting. <sighs> really? Before you lies the unconscious body of a mind flayer, glistening and raw. A newborn, unattended, how fortunate. Oh, but it is. This one has only just transformed. It is weak, vulnerable, its potential ripe for harvesting. Go on, kill it, absorb its power. You pick your way silently through the loose rocks and broken masonry until you're a safe distance away. Calm down, mother. You're gonna fetch me like a man. Some people have hide away like a child into the bin where it belongs. Don't think you're going to there. I saw something going on over the town. Welcome, dear patron, to Sorceress Sundry. It has come to my attention that there is a bitter adventurer located outside the shop. Not to worry. We will quickly handle this disturbance for your comfort and safety. 
I am an unperson in service of the revered wizard Lerotan, proprietor of this fine establishment. To browse our wares, say, trade. To provide information about the night song, say, night song. If you are a city official here to collect dues, say taxes. For all other inquiries, say other. The provision of information that leads to the retrieval of the night song is worth a great deal to Master Laroican. Do you have information regarding the night song? Please proceed upstairs for further instructions. Thank you. Please come again soon and have a magical day. Pretty Gale isn't here. This is just his sort of place. Must have some sort of Welcome, dear patron, to the floor at the top of the stairs. If you have information about the night song, great riches await. If you are here to waste the great wizard Laroican's time, reconsider. Let your knowledge determine your path forward. time in 200 years I've seen these streets in the sunlight you can forget just how much color there is in the world hmm? yes of course obviously sorry did you want something oh, darling I'm hurt I guess I'll spend my it sounds The bustle here takes some getting used to. <laughs> Crackling fire and a tressum for company is usually more my speed. Still, we must flow with the current we find ourselves in, however tumultuous it may be. If you've need of me, I'm glad to help. With pleasure, lead on. Come to bask in the glow of the Moon Maiden's sword? Be most welcome. I knew any artifact that could command an Elder Brain must be close to omnipotent. But for it to be the very crown Carcer's forged, it verges on unbelievable. I assure you, the hammer Raphael offered is mere scrap metal in comparison. Whatever use he claims for it. The Night Song is a druidic staff that allows its bearer command over an army of ancient beasts. I simply must. The Absolute should be a thing of the past, and I with it. Yet, at the risk of angry Mistra Fervor, I'm glad it didn't come to that, given what has come to light. The Elder Brain, but more importantly, the crown that it wore. Even without seeing it for myself, I could sense it. Netherese magic. So pure, so complete. And I doubted what I was feeling at first. Most Netherese artifacts contain only the faintest amount of their former power. The ghost of an echo of a memory. That crown was different. I can't fathom how such a wonder survived. Surely everything of its ilk was destroyed along with Netheril itself, but no matter, it exists. I must learn more of it. That crown sits on a gargantuan elder brain bent on destroying us and everything we hold dear. Understanding its true nature might unlock the means of our victory. We need to learn more about what we saw. An artifact as powerful as that crown must have been documented somewhere. As luck would have it, 
We'll soon find ourselves near one of the finest book collections this side of Candlekeep. Sorcerer's Sundries. I need to go there and learn all I can. Ha! Sorcerer's Sundries is no mere trading post. It's been serving the arcane community for centuries. Their collection of rare tomes is unparalleled. I mean, nethery sects are hardly commonplace, but I'm certain they'll have one or two stashed away. You'll have to forgive my eagerness, but if my suspicions prove to hold water, this could be the answer to all our problems. The Night Song is an ancient potion that allows its drinker to become irresistibly attractive to man and god alike. The Night Song is a priceless ruby from a realm beyond our own. The Night Song is an immortal being, the child of a deity. Uh, 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 uh. Hold very still, Niklaw. Uh, Craig's aim is much improved, but uh, still leaves something up to chance. Yes, sir. Uh... All right, crank. Ready? Aim. Oh. Hmm. We have a visitor. At ease. McClaw, you may go. See no night song. Surely you wouldn't have entered my tower without the night song in hand, hmm? Surely my worthless apprentice wouldn't have allowed you to waste my time. Huh. Fascinating. You've been to Shah's temple, haven't you? To the Shadowfell? Alas, I've paid for a good deal of very privileged information. Now I await the results of the generous contract I've commissioned. Answer now, or see what happens when fools misuse my valuable time. I'm growing tired of this repartee, my friend. Let us cut to the chase. Beautiful, isn't it? Worth more than your life, too. I bought it from a Kalashite warlock. There's very little of his soul left to him. Hmm. It can bind a celestial to the wearer's service with a snap of the fingers. And this? This can keep her in place. Forever. It didn't work out for poor Kethrick, did it? He was a fool, a desperate mercenary who hoard out his soul to whichever god flattered him. <laughs> I serve no god, but that which stares back at me in the mirror. The night song will be put to a grand purpose, equalizing man and god. Whoever helps me attain that which I seek will be greatly rewarded. Of course not. But perhaps, after enough lifetimes, I might make a start of it. He would seek the power of gods for the pettiest of reasons, his own gratification. At least I seek them for the better of all. Uh, what's that? I didn't quite catch the words, but the insolent tone was 
clear enough. Uh, pitying, not insolent. You chase one power without knowing an even greater one lies within my reach. The crown of Carsus. Once we acquire it, your ambitions will be dwarfed. I'll be able to stand against Mistra and wrest her powers from her for the betterment of all. The crown of Carsus? Nonsense. Even if it still existed, you couldn't possibly handle its power. <laughs> Perhaps you could not. But Netheril's power is in my blood. And Mistra? I know her in ways that most mortals can only dream of. Ah. So it is you. Mistra's discarded lapdog. And now you think your bark is cause to make me tremble? There is no need for me to bark. My actions will speak for themselves. In time. Then go. Ax! I'll open a fine vintage in your name, once word of your failure reaches me. <laughs> we shall see, won't we? Do as I say, and you will be rewarded beyond imagination. Fail, and you give up the prize to the next motivated mercenary to encounter my contract. The choice is yours, but make no mistake, I always get what I want. Mother's milk, your visage speaks of ill tidings. Speak, ally mine. What troubles you? Is he indeed? Pray tell, what does he seek from Dame Aelin? <laughs> Magicians and their machinations. I have had enough for an eternity. I will wring his neck. Until he's dead. Oh, his end will be one more strand in the great braid of our friendship. I'm coming with you. I'd like to get a few licks in myself. My darling, we agreed you'd scout for the nearest Salunite Enclave this very night. Let us divide our efforts, all the sooner to be reunited. I won't let you go alone. Who knows what this wizard might have planned? Our closest ally will accompany me, won't you? It will be a swift and fruitful chore. Hie we to this Leroican right away. I am as eager to meet him as he is to ensnare me. Ha <laughs> I spy a wizard foul! You have a job to do. What have we here? A magician in a tower? Hiding away from the frightening world. What are you so scared of, Magus? Not the Night Song, surely? Why, she's nothing but a relic to be purchased and pursued. At last. There you are, my dear. You will address me with due deference. I am Dame Aelin. And you are a wealth without honor, without pride, with nothing but a tower full of trinkets. Oh, my apologies, Dame Aelin. I meant no disrespect. I asked our mutual friend here to make an introduction that I might get to meet the famed daughter of Saluna. Forgive me for that impudence. Perhaps our friend can bridge the gap and do what I believe they came here to do? My steel-hearted friend speaks true. Give me one good reason, Magus, why I should not strike you down where you stand. <laughs> Dame Aelin, I have discovered a device that would allow your immortality to be shared. It would cause you no harm, no pain of any kind. 
You serve your mother, Saluna, I believe. She who has blessed our realm with so many gifts. Honor her by sharing yours. You dare to threaten me with the same magic that held me in torment for a hundred years? You do not seek to share my gifts. You seek to poach them. <laughs> I had hoped to appeal to your better nature. Perhaps I overestimated you. Hmm. No bother. I have an arsenal of implements capable of convincing you to see reason. A pity you didn't prove a more reliable ally. You could have reaped the rewards of my good favor. I'd hoped you to keep an open mind, but it seems you're determined to make this as difficult as possible. I have great plans for you, Dame Aelin. And if you will not go quietly, then you'll go kicking and screaming. <laughs> Magicians and their plans for Dame Aelin. Predictable, sadistic, flaccid. Mamadons! Imperatum! Roican, you who would see me caged, you who would purchase my submission with profane gold. Let every wicked magus, every vile murtherer, each slaver and misery merchant see. Dame Aelin is watching. She is indomitable. And when her face lights the shadows of your wrongdoing, you are broken by its beauty! I want to have a word. The Firehead Fool is dead. Yet as I stare upon his corpse, I feel... sadness. Why? Say it can't be so, for I am Saluna's sword, and ever must be. Uh, uh, battle has tired my mind, made me susceptible to flights of fancy. You were excellent in battle, as is your way, and I am proud to fight at your side. I will catch my breath, then to camp I will bring my bones. Moon Maiden be with you. Dame Aelin has little to feel sorry about. The Roacan would have inflicted a far worse fate on her, given the chance. I don't get it. What's got Dame Aelin so down? I, for one, am delighted the Roacan got what was coming to him. I don't know. 
people. Isn't that what a paladin of Saluna does? <sighs> Hope that good old Aelin holy fervor returns to her soon. I don't like to see her looking so uh, lost. Why, hello, lover. <laughs> that sounded more debonair in my head, I'll admit. Do you need something? Of course. Seems simple enough. Literature department. Can I help you? Psst. These books are sensitive. They prefer an environment of quiet reverence. has a collection other shops would lack the skill to curate. Between us, even Master Lerokin was reluctant to house them in his tower. The pen is mightier than the magic wand, apparently. <laughs> They're locked away here for their and our customers' safety. Our finest reserve includes the Tharkia Codex, the Annals of Cassius and Leathery's Folly, Sites of the Sealy and the Curriculum of Strategy. Do any of those interest you? It is said to be written by Lord Carsus himself, the Netherese Arcanist who attempted to replace the goddess Mistra, failed, and was banished for the attempt. Great magical knowledge lies within those pages. Not many can withstand it. I can't explain now, but it's very important we get hold of that book. Very, very important. The annals of Carsus would no doubt have much to say about the crone's true nature. If only you could read them. as temperamental as these are not on sale. They are secured in our vault, where none can harm them, nor can they do any harm. Consider yourself lucky to have learned of such a book's existence, and then forget about it. The annals of Carsus are best left unread. knowledge of these tones is enough to stimulate most.
share a moment with you, if not in the way I once envisioned. What do you need of me? Lockpicking is forbidden. Something is happening. What's on your mind? I question the wisdom of that decision, but I'll be here in the meantime. I expected Night Song to be overjoyed after killing her fair head fool. Instead, she just seemed tired. Hardly. It's going to be the greatest moment of my life. The blood, the screaming. <sighs> Just thinking about it makes me smile. Need something? Lead on. I saw somebody go up to the road in this town less to vaults, trespassers will be disintegrated. Master Laroican. Let's crack it open. Aelin left to face that wizard, uh, Laroican, was it? Even after all she's been through, she thinks herself unstoppable, invincible. It all feels like recklessness to me. He ca I wanted to help her, but she said she fights better when she knows I'm safe. I will return to camp shortly. I just need a moment to... to... The Annals of Carsus. The preamble to a civilization's downfall, committed to parchment by the very hand that wrought its destruction. If the crown atop the Elder Brain was truly forged by Carsus himself, this book will confirm it. All we have to do is turn the page. That 
devil Raphael was telling the truth. There's no doubt. The crown of Carsus is what's controlling the Elder Brain. And this, this is no mere journal. It contains Carsus's original plans for the crown's construction. His designs for godhood. Not exactly. It was what he did with it that sealed his fate, and, for a time, that of magic itself. The crown was merely the means. The book states that the crown and netherstones were originally one construct, seemingly sundered at the moment of Carsus's downfall. If we can collect the crown setting and the three netherstones, and, with the correct invocation of certain spells and gestures detailed in these notes, I think I could reforge it. To every end you can imagine, and a thousand more beyond. Just think of it. The power of the gods in mortal hands at last would be free of doctrine and dogma, confined only by the limits of our imaginations. I promise you, the gods will never grant us such a blessing, no matter how much we worship and adore them. I don't know. Ao does not look kindly on gods meddling in mortal affairs. She may have no choice but to stand by and let events unfold. Even with the fate of the world at stake, she had little more to offer me than the means of blowing myself up at a more convenient time. She's done nothing to help us. Mistra wanted the brain obliterated because of this crown. She fears a world in which such power is beyond her control, ready to be claimed by Carsus's successor. Neither of us can know what truly may be if we don't at least try. Potential is nothing in itself. Just a fleeting dream unless we drag it into the waking world. Please, at least think on it. Powerful as he was, Carsus lacks some advantages I can lay claim to. I know Mistra, intimately. And I carry a fragment of the weave itself within my body. Carsus achieved many things. Hmm, but he never managed that. Long road lies ahead before the crown comes into our possession. All I ask for now is that you do not dismiss this possibility out of hand. Please, at least think on it. I see. I suppose I am asking you to take a leap of faith. Even the most loyal of companions might struggle to land gracefully. It's been so long feeling inferior, shut out from my destiny over such a simple act of youthful enthusiasm. Perhaps I got carried away with the thought this crown could give me back what Mistra took. Cure me, even. You're right. There aren't many wizards who'd care to be mentioned in the same breath as him or his folly. Whatever comes of this, we cannot allow the crown to be reforged in Raphael's image. A devil wielding the might of Carsus. It would be the end of everything. Maybe it'll bring us closer. I can still feel the shadow fell all over me. Still hear her words in my ear. I feel... Unclean. You've nothing to be sorry for. Far from it, in fact. Without your help, things could have ended very differently for me. I have an idea. Something I've wanted to do for a while. Something that might help me put her in the past. But I'll need your help. Wait until the others are asleep. Then come with me. There's a place we can go. Down the coast a little. No time to talk, I'm 
afraid. Expecting someone. What's on your mind? With pl Gale of water deep as I live and breathe. <laughs> As do you, I'm glad to see. I hear you've been browsing in the most esteemed of emporiums, sorcerous sundries. <laughs> uh, indulge my curiosity. What wonders did you discover there? The truth, Elminster. How Carsus's crown could yet be reforged or destroyed, as the case may be. Perhaps now you understand what is at stake here, my boy. Though what Mr. asked of you was extreme, it was not without merit, nor demanded lightly. She bids you come to her holy shrine in the Stormshore Tabernacle. There, she will grant you an audience at last. If it was up to her, I'd be a pile of ash along with the rest of the shadow cursed lands by now i can't imagine what she has to say to me sorry perhaps she does not make such a gesture lightly the hourglass measuring our time for such alternatives has but a few grains remaining if you will not hear it from me hear it from your goddess uh, what truths she has to offer are for your ears alone, Gale of Waterdeep. <laughs> Godspeed. No time to rest. Ah, ally mine. We are reunited once more. I was just regaling sweet Isabel with tales of our prowess. Very impressive. Thank you for helping, Aelin. That wizard sounded absolutely dastardly. He did, and it came. Now, my friend, bask in your victory. I will do the same. My darling, we must inform our friend of our news. Indeed. I've scouted a Salunite enclave outside the city. They faced the Absolute's armies and come out battered and bruised. Aelin and I will go to them, provide what help we can. But fear not. When the time comes for you to face the foe of foes, Isabel and I will stand by your side. We wouldn't miss it. Not for anything. Go well, friend. We will see you soon. And with our great powers combined, this city will be saved. This will do. Get in the water. <laughs> My feet aren't touching the bottom anymore. It's terrifying. Do people really enjoy this? You know, you didn't need to wait until I was in the water to hold me. Come here. <laughs> Thank you. I needed that. I needed to know I can face things without Shah. I don't want to go back. Not just yet. I should hope not, after the time we spent together. My spirits are thoroughly lifted. Oh, 
Not feeling any regrets, I hope. I'm glad. I feel the same way. Though, I'm still finding sand in my hair. I wonder what the others will think of that. <laughs> but of course they will. I hope we'll have more opportunities to slip away. And make sandcastles. Of course. So all it took to get Mistra's attention was to learn how to reforge an artifact that once destroyed her. It's obvious when you stop to think about it. Uh, let's not get too ahead of ourselves. For now, I'm just a regular wizard holding the blueprint for greatness. Mistra knows of Red Carsus's designs. I'm certain of that. And clearly has her shaken. This is a conversation that's long overdue on both sides. I owe it to her to hear her out. Come what may afterwards. Hmm. Very well. But it does not serve us to tarry when a summons from the heavens is waiting. She stands, just as Elminster promised. Mistra, goddess of the weave, mother of all magic. The old man wasn't lying. She's opened the summoning channel. Can't you feel it? Gail's right. The very air around the statue crackles with magic. It sets your teeth on edge. A stream of pure undiluted weave i only have to reach out and it will carry me to mistra wherever she may be an audience with your goddess can go wrong i should know but do whatever you feel is best gail time was i'd have given my right arm for a chance to speak with mistra again <laughs> the left one too maybe a knee Am I? You're right. I am a strong, capable wizard. And this is no more than a casual reunion with an ex-lover. My omnipotent, omniscient ex-lover. I always wonder what being nervous would feel like. I hate it. During my time locked away in Waterdeep, I prepared a quite comprehensive speech for her on the subject of our former relationship and the manner in which it ended. Alas, recent events have rendered the majority of it moot, so I'm gonna have to improvise. Unless you have any words of wisdom to impart before I go. The summoning channel Mistra has provided is one only I can enter. No matter how much I prefer not to face her alone. You'd make a fine three-dragon anti-player, you know? I think it's best I keep a cool head going into this. Approach it like a particularly high-risk round of three-dragon anti. I'll let Mistress show her flight, and then I can see how strong a chance we stand of winning the gambit. I'll only be gone for a matter of moments. The Outer Plains experience time quite differently to our own. Wait for me. Please. Gale of Waterdeep. You look well. 
As do you. But I assume we're not here solely to exchange compliments. So why am I here? You discovered what lies at the heart of the Absolute. The crown of causes. And you disobeyed my instruction. Why? Because you had no right to ask that of me. You cast me out. Remember? You were my lover. My chosen. Yet still you know so little of me. The past cannot be undone with self-pity. Nor can a future be forged. Only with the truth will you see the way ahead. The fragment of magic you tried to return to me was not of my creation. It was the Carsite Weave. It is a corrupted, half-born magic wrought in the brief moment Carsus ascended to godhood. It hungers for power, just as he did, and it can never be sated. You unleashed something that would consume all magic in existence, and yet you thought only of preserving yourself. So that's what you're scared of. With the crown of Carsus reforged, I could take control of the Carsite Weave. You can no more control the Carsite Weave than a weather vane could control a storm. That it entered your body and consumed no more than your powers was a miracle. But we will not be granted another. The only reason the orb sleeps is because I have allowed it to feed on the true weave. A temporary measure, but one that will not be enough to save us. With each day that passes, the Elder Brain threatens to become a new kind of god. Its worshippers, a scourge of soulless illithids. If you will not use the orb to end this abomination, then you must find a way to separate Crown and host. When you've done this, you must surrender the crown of Carsus to me. A great ask indeed. You've given me much to think on, as you always did. So be it. Follow the needle of your own wisdom. We shall see how truly it leads you. soil once more. I can't believe I saw it. After all this time. And what you felt was but the slightest drop drawn from the rushing torrent that is the weave. I confess, now my former prowess, even I struggle to stand her presence. The effects on the mortal body of such unfettered magical exposure cannot be overestimated. She held back in order to protect us. To make sure I heard her. The Carsite Weave. Within me this whole time. I knew the orb was no ordinary ball of magic before it to be Carsus's malignant creation. Gods! How did I not see that? But I should have known. What right had I to go about declaring myself an archmage when I was as foolish as a common apprentice in setting such an entity loose? At least now I'm armed with the truth and Mistress' expectations. It sounds like the door to redemption is open at last. All I have to do is walk through it, carrying the crown of Carsus. Thank you. There aren't many I'd trust to stand beside me on such a journey. Fewer still who would do so because they believed I deserved such a chance. If I could promise you one thing in return for your faith in me, it's this. I will use everything in my power to ensure we defeat this evil. I will not let you down. Now, I believe we have a date with an elder brain to get to. Shall we? 
What's on your mind? So, who'd want to hold a power like the Crown of Carsus in their hands just to hand it to someone else? I know what my decision would be, but we're all different, of course. I don't need any of this. I think I was too hard. My apologies. Carla, you're looking well. Would be a lot better if you'd find a way to fix this engine, Damon. I haven't stopped trying. But all roads lead to a dead end. Sorry, I didn't mean... Never mind. Glad you're all right in any case. Nice forge you've got here. Best I've had in years. Mistress of the house lets me operate from here for a fair price. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't happy. Good. Someone should be. Certainly. Shout if you need anything else. We redden our steel by the light of day in his name. You are our lamb. Ready for slaughter. Lady Orin asked us to test you, but I think you'll fail. What say you, little lamb? Thought you might need assistance. I. You feel an all too familiar squirm in the recesses of your mind. The fist has a tadpole, but something's off. Not I. We. And we do not serve. Defective. Very well. Another offering to Baal. remain at odds. Kill them. You have a place in my grand design. The Elder Brain can control anyone with a tadpole? That's, uh, concerning. What? What happened? I, I taste copper. Innocence, maybe. This is the palace of Kazador Zar. Entry is forbidden. 
Leave now, citizen. The guard's words are clear, but spoken without thought or intent. Behind her eyes, you see nothing. She must be one of the charmed thralls Astarian mentioned. Words are clear, but spoken without thought or intent. Behind her eyes, you see nothing. She must be one of the charmed thralls Astarian mentioned. Of course. Whatever the master desires. Enter freely. And of your own will. Never wanted the easy path. Well. The master is pure. His palace must be pure. No stain, no smudge, no taint. Pure. door is covered in intricate text, but you can't see anywhere a key might fit. Only a small round hollow engraved with a family crest. The writing means nothing to you. You can't even recognize the script. There's writing like this all over the palace. Some old, probably dead language of Cazador's. We were strictly forbidden from learning it. The indentation seems to be the right size and shape to fit a signet ring bearing the family crest. What to do? So this is it. Two centuries walking these halls, and I've never once seen the ballroom door locked. Cazador doesn't want anything going wrong tonight. If my dear siblings were right, Cazador's hiding somewhere below the palace. After so many years, I would have spotted any secret tunnels out here. If Cazador's hiding anywhere, it'll be behind the huge locked doors covered in secret writing. Our old kennel master, Godi, will have a key. But the writing... I've no idea how to read that. I have something to ask. Woman's eyes are alert, verging on manic as she bustles about. Everything's got to be right for the master. Everything's got to be perfect. Don't stop cleaning. Oh, I feel so weak. There's necrotic magic at work here. Time to undo the damage. Ah! Ah! What in the hell is this happening here? I entertained our guests here until Cazador appeared and took them away. But I never saw anything like this. Whatever happened to that girl, it wasn't good. I was in too when displeased. I know you're there, Golly. Stop skulking and show yourself. You always were sharp, little one. Sharp enough to cut yourself. It's taking everything I have not to grind your rotten carcass to dust. Don't be mad at Cody, child. I only did my job, only kept you in line. You tortured us for days at a time. Oh, yes. And you sang so sweetly for me. None of the others screamed like you did. 
But you're home now, and you brought me a treat, eh? <laughs> a new friend for Godi. Not very nice. Not very friendly. Why are you here then, little one, if not to see Godi? Isn't it obvious? I'm going to kill Cursador. How dare you? As if you could lay a finger on the master, you ungrateful little brat! Godi will not let you get away with blasphemy. Godi will see you punished! This is where the small camp was When we were getting neither the carrots, the master not stick. No more rat love. Someone there. Door to Cazador's ballroom, where he hosted his most hedonistic nights. You've never seen it closed, let alone locked before. The door is covered in intricate text. But you can't see anywhere a key might fit. Only a small, round hollow engraved with the Saar family crest. Looking closer, you recognize the writing. It's the same Kozakuran script from the dictionary you found. The ring slots perfectly into place, and the door swings open. Let's move. You can't be here. No one in, no one out. You're new. Cazador never kept guard dogs before. The runaway spawn. You reek of the master's scent. Come with us. Come to master. Uh, excuse me. I will not be ordered around my own house by some blowing mutt. We bring you to him. We get his favor. skulking somewhere beneath us. In this defiled chapel the others mentioned. We just have to find the entrance. Then he'll be mine. platform. A beautiful but antiquated elevator. There are some scuffs to show its age, signs of things dragged onto it over the years, but it seems to be in good working order. What in hells? I never knew this was here. This was always Cazador's private quarters. Only he ever came in here. Well, him and the unfortunate souls we brought to feed him.
What in the hells? I never knew any of this was here. Just like the door to the ballroom upstairs, its door features no keyhole. It does have an indentation for a signet ring. Sailing you with pungent, musty air. On the pillow rests a skull with a scroll clamped in its bony jaws. The skull's empty eye sockets flare with an eldritch gleam. You feel invited somehow to witness the skull's memories. It seems urgent. This skull is all that remains of the vampire Velios. He turned Casador, gave him the gift, and then taught him the rules of vampiric existence. Valioth's first lesson is always to dominate. Allow none to be your equal. Valioth recalls when Casador reached out to a former friend. His punishment was to watch as Valioth drained his friend dry. Valioth's second lesson is that power comes from solitude. To share with others is to be weak, and to be weak is to fail and die. Valioth recalls when Casador rebelled against him. Casador suffered eleven years of impalement because he failed. Valioth's third lesson is to act not in haste. A near immortal has time to plan, time to act only when others will pay the price of action. Valioth recalls Casador, his lessons learned, killing him in the right of perfect slaughter. How they both laughed. Valioth recalls Casador boiling the flesh from his skull and then to mock him, clamping his schooling scroll in Velioth's jaws. The skull's eyes flash a final time, and its jaws sag open. The scroll with all of Casador's rituals is yours. Velioth is no more. Even his precious rule. Just like the door to the ballroom upstairs, its door features no keyhole. It does have an indentation for a signet ring. The ring slots perfectly into place, and the door opens, assailing you with pungent, musty air. Approaching the cells, you're met with hollow-eyed faces. There's an almost physical stink of decay and neglect. Ugh, they're disgusting. Casador never fed on wretches like this. But who knows? Maybe the old man's tastes have changed since I left. 
You. I know you. You're the one from the tavern. You smiled and joked and got me drunk. <laughs> You're dead. You called me so many sweet things. My name sounded like a lyric on your tongue. Sebastian. You remember me. You were handsome. Shy. You'd never been kissed. You taught me how. And then you destroyed me. It's not just him. I know so many of these faces. They're my... conquests. I pursue them. Seduced them. And brought them to Cazador. He told us he was feeding on them. But he turned them to spawn. He turned every last one so we'd have souls for this cursed ritual. How long? What? How long have I been down here? One hundred and seventy years. You were one of my first. My family. My friends. They're gone. You took them from me. You took everything from me. for us and no escape for you Astarian this nightmare never ends and it's your fault you take this damn you I damn you to the hells I damn you to misery and villains who ever fell for my ploys, they're, they're here. I don't know anymore. I thought these people were, were drained and buried. They should be dead. But why? Why does he need them alive? What possible use could they have in this ruined state? I could care less about that. I wonder if they'll tear me apart for what I did. We must find Casador. This must end. I want to have a word. Who stands before us? Is this truly our prodigal son? Hm? Do not slouch before me, boy! Have you no respect for yourself? Look at you. Crawling back after abandoning your family. You should be begging our forgiveness! Forgiveness? You've never forgiven anything. Every mistake. Every slip. 
was punished. I strove for perfection in all things, even those as imperfect as you. A pity you amounted to so little, despite my efforts. No! No. Fuck you. And fuck everything you've ever done to me! They told me you had changed. I dared not believe it. Oh, thankless child. Did I not bless you with our immortal gift? Did I not make you what you are? You son of a bitch. You truly forgot my power. You truly thought our bond as creator and creation was all that stopped you from killing me? Hmm? Oh, you are weak, my child. You are a small, pathetic little boy who never amounted to anything. <laughs> But today, you will finally do something worthwhile. You will burn, and I will ascend. Now? Not when Cazadal's finally mine! Hurry, to his coffin! It's time to end this. <sighs> Better than nothing. the ritual you started. I'll never have to fear anyone. Ever. You think me a fool? 
that I would allow anyone to usurp me, speak the words, and ascend in my place? Hm? The runes I carved into your flesh bind you and all 7,000 souls to the ritual. Complete it, and those bearing the scars will be sacrificed, you included. You are simply a means to an end. I made you to be consumed. I am so much more than what you made me. Get over here. We can do this. If we release them, how many people will they kill? Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. But if I complete the ritual, think of the power I'll have. With me by your side, we can, we can save the city. We can save ourselves. but also the hunger, the thick smell of blood in the air and the promise of power being so close is intoxicating to him. All he can see is the power of the ritual and the freedom that power brings. The freedom to do anything, to be anything. Is it over? Is he... <sighs> yes. He's gone. What does that mean for us? It means you have a choice. You can hide here, living in the shadows like parasites. Or you could be more than what he made us to be. You can choose differently, of course. But the consequences are on your head. And what does it mean for them? Ah. Now that is a question. Casador's staff controlled everything during the ritual. If it controls the cells too, you could decide their fate. 7,000 Astarians. Unleashed on the Sword Coast. It'll be a well-dressed flood of mayhem, at least. No. He's right. The poor wretches in the cells are innocent. They shouldn't have to suffer just because I... lured them here. 
They'll need someone to lead them. Take the tunnels into the Underdark. Find somewhere, well, not safe, but less perilous. What? No, we can't. Just try to keep them out of trouble. I... I think we're done here. Let's go. That's it. He's gone. After all these years, these centuries, it's really over. I'm glad you think so, because I'm not so sure. I just feel... numb. What I've lost. <laughs> what I've gained. It's all so much. And God, all those spawn. Free in the Underdark. I need some time, I think. I... Just to let it all sink in. Let's just go. This place reeks of death, and I want to feel alive again. You killed one vampire, but released 7,000 of his spawn. Have you lost all sense? They were innocents. To kill them would have been an even greater crime. And our children, what of their fate? Casador turned everyone we brought him into spawn. I can only assume your children were somewhere in those wretched cells. You'll find them in the Underdark, although you may not like what you find. This is difficult news. We will need to decide what it means. Thank you for what you have done. Slaying Cazador was a great justice. As for the rest, well, time will tell. The elevator lies ready. It's you. I never forget a face. Welcome to Bone Cloaks. Doors are still open thanks to that noble stock you helped us with. We've even enough left over to keep ourselves fed. Not that Balin's worth the gold it takes to keep him fattened up. Anyway, we can knock a little off the top if you've a mind to buy. He's wrecking my head, as always. Makes himself useful with a broom from time to time, at least. That's strange. Knowing I'll... ...never hear Cazador's voice again. Knowing it'll never command me to bow against my will. I'm free from him. Forever. Uh, 
I have to hope so. And if not, at least there's only so much damage they can do in the Underdark. Ooh, but that first rush of freedom can be intoxicating. I didn't always make the best decisions when I first tasted it. They'll need guidance. <laughs> no, no. Um, much as I'd like to become a lord ruling over the Underdark's vampire spawn, we have unfinished business with the Mind Flayers. After that, uh, who knows? Everything that happened to those spawn is my fault. In a way. <laughs> I suppose that's the less convenient side of freedom. Having to live with the choices you made. Back at the ritual, all I could see was the power on offer and the safety it promised. I was so blinded by it. <laughs> Just as Casador was. But you saw something in me. Someone else I could be. Someone who could break the cycle of power and terror that started <laughs> centuries ago. You saved me back there. I may not have appreciated it at the time, but I do now. Thank you. <laughs> you did more than that. You believed in me. Believed I was enough. Just the way I am. <laughs> When I look at my future, anything and everything feels possible now. You saved me from myself and let me walk a new path where I can be free. Truly, honestly, free. This is a gift, you know. Thank you. I won't forget it. Yes. Oh, darling, I'm hurt. I thought we had something special. I guess I'll spend my evenings lounging here while you do all the hard work. It sounds awful. They say that the only thing a vampire can feel is hunger. Nothing else touches them. Not grief or mercy. Or any sense of what is just. Who knows? And there is often more ignorance than insight in what they say. As you wish. Mm. This place mm. has me. Aroma? My friend dared me to come here alone for a couple of mugs of ale. So here I am. Huh. Come on, mate. Who would want me dead? in the act. So much for the perfect crime. What was taken is free to be reclaimed, and you are free to go. Greetings. So Astarian didn't fulfill his master's ambitions for himself. At least that means he's his own man. Though, I'm a little surprised he didn't covet those powers.
should speak up. Welcome to the House of Grief. There's been spe all in due time. As I said, in due time. First, you submit to the mapping of the heart. Only then can we know what is to be done with you. Follow me. The, the House of now Grief ours. welcomes you and stands ready to ease your troubles. Hmm. Have to keep pushing. You seek to be unburdened, yes? The mapping of the heart can reveal the way. Yet, there is another here whose need is great. A voice. Allow me. I think I'm supposed to do this. Do you know why you are here? There is something I lost. No. Had taken from me. My family. My life. I want it all back. Loss is a gift, girl. Do you still not understand that? Now give me the true answer. What is your purpose in being here? The artifact. I was sent to retrieve it. At any cost. And who tasked you with this mission? The Mother Superior of Sha... It's you. Give me the honor of my name. In full. I... I can't. My memories... I know what's in that head of yours better than you do, girl. My name. Mother Superior... Iconia de Vere. You still have the wits to recognize your betters. Good. Iconia de Vere. If only Char would bless me with the forgetting of your face. Always a pleasure to see old acquaintances. But you would be wise to not interfere in what is to come. Now descend. You have much to answer for. The projection. Let us find her in the flesh, then. So I can give her a hug. An extinguished sun. All burdens shall be... They already heard how you disgraced yourself before Lady Shah. How she marked you as the enemy. But it is quite another thing for them to see it for themselves. I am very glad you decided to return. A cautionary tale such as yours will be studied by Lady Shah's initiates for years to come. But perhaps I can make a case for some small measure of mercy. Give me the artifact, and I can at least make this quick. Enough. I don't answer to you. Not anymore. I'm here for my family. That's right. I know what you did. And it's not going to be quick. This is your family. And now you have turned your back on it. The artifact was your last chance to prove yourself. And you squandered it. You there. Surrender this one to me now. And you can consider Lady Shah's forces your allies in the battles to come. As you like. Lilala! For Shah! I'll strike you down. <laughs> <laughs> 
into position. Finish it. Send me to Lady Shah's embrace. She still has answers I need. My parents. Where are they? So blunt. Have you forgotten all the interrogation techniques I taught you? Where is the finesse? Answer me! They are right through that door in the Chamber of Loss. Where they have been all along. You saw them many times, only we made you forget. But they didn't forget. They watched as we molded you. They watched. They wept. They bled. Often at your hand. It may not be a happy reunion, but it will be a memorable one. I know. But she's not lying. She made me in her image. Why? Why me? Why all this effort? Lady Shah commanded me, and I obeyed. I do not question. I merely act as she wills me to. I had an enclave in Waterdeep, you know. Much grander than this. Shah ordered me to raise it. Kill all who followed me. Claim they betrayed me. When in fact, I slew those who showed nothing but loyalty. Shah had me do that. And I did. To cover my tracks. To usher in you. What are you talking about? You became my mission. 
to take a child of Salunas and turn her over to Lady Shah. To show that all light fades and darkness will prevail in the end. All this was to make you into what the Dark Lady needed you to be. The planning. The training. Those deaths in Waterdeep. It was all to groom you to replace me at her right-hand side. And still you threw it away! I want to see my parents. And I don't care what happens to this one. She's been in my head long enough already. Do what you like. I know you'll choose well. What are you doing? Come back and finish this yourself! You owe me that! Let go, mother. Embrace loss. I draw near, my lady. This is it. Where I was raised. Trained. Hells. It's strange to be back. There's no time to waste. I'd better do the talking. Can't be another vile trick. No, there is no trick. It's her, Genevieve, Jan, our little girl. Moon Maiden's Grace, it is you. I'm here to get you out of here. They're all gone. It's over. cannot both free us and free yourself from her curse. The Moon Maiden needs you more than she needs us. You are the future. You must return to the fold. We are the past. And our duty is almost done. Eloquently put. His mind stood up well to his time here. The same cannot be said for your mother. Such brief. Fragile lives humans lead. 
This is my final lesson. I leave you now to dwell on your mistakes and make your choice. Shah's parting words make your flesh crawl. There is no lesson to be learned here, only a family's torment, a spiteful goddess's whims, and an unspeakable choice to be made. She's gone. I, do, I don't understand. Shah will never admit defeat. Not until she has stolen one last thing from you. We cannot allow your future to be her last prize. Not after all your mother and I have endured to see you again. Your companion understands, I think. Help her, please. Help her see what must be done. No, I, I can't. I came here for them. And you did. You found us. All these years, that dream kept us going, that you would break free. No matter what they made you do to us, we knew you were still in there. I knew the Dark Woods wouldn't frighten you. You were always such a brave girl. She was, and still is. You've saved us. Now save yourself. You'll be out of Shah's reach, and we'll be at peace. But I only just found you again after all this time! I can't lose you again. We'll still be with you. By the Moon Maiden's grace, we'll never be far. Please, Jennifer. But the curse... We'll just have to go on like this. Suffering. Past, Genevelle. You must not let us burden you. You're no burden. You're my strength. I think I know where my willful side comes from now. But... It... Hush, Arnel. Jen wants her family. Jen shall have her family. How can we help, dear? of this place as soon as your strength allows. There's a camp. You'll be safe there. Never a dull moment. Everything that's happened. Shah. My parents. It's almost too much to take in. Give me a night to try and get my head together. Shadowheart? I wasn't sure if I'd ever lay eyes on you again. It's me, Nocturne. Do you remember? Remind me? We... we trained together. We used to be close. I'm glad to see you're all right. I don't remember you. Oh. 
A pity. Perhaps we can talk some more later? That is, if you're not about to turn on me. It seems you no longer walk in the Dark Lady's shadow. Shah condemned me. By her decree, you and I are enemies. Only if you wish us to be. You may not remember, but we shared a lot together once. Good times. Hard times. I will not turn on you, even if it angers Lady Shah. That's good enough for me. I'm not sure what I expected coming back to this place. Certainly not a friend. There must be all sorts you can tell me. Things I can't even remember. There are. But with the Mother Superior gone, I don't know if I can stay here to reminisce. Perhaps there's another enclave out there for me. You don't need Shah. You don't, perhaps. Not everyone is as brave. I'll leave come tomorrow. Come see me before then. I was working as quartermaster. I can sell you some things to aid you. And we can catch up. I'm ready. Whatever it takes. I can still scarcely believe it. You've returned, and the Mother Superior is gone. So much can change. So quickly. Well... You had a pet mouse for a while. It was against the rules, of course. You used to hide him under your robes and feed him from your rations. <laughs> Nibbles? I suggested Bree, but you were having none of it. She caught you with him. Forced you to get rid of him in front of everyone. To make an example. You always loved animals. But you never let yourself get too close after that. I'm sorry. Not the sort of thing you want to hear, I'm sure. Well... You know that little scar on your elbow? I was there when you picked that up. It was years ago, when we were initiates. Some of the others were intent on tormenting us, until you showed them the error of their ways. I think it was six against two? And most of them were bigger than us to boot, but you saw them off, all of them. There were some bruised lips and black eyes in the mess hall that night. And from then on, they left us alone. Or at least, they bothered us less. A collision between your elbow and the teeth of a girl called Buddug. She came away from it worse than you. She was on the same mission as you. I suppose she won't be coming back. In any case, the Mother Superior soon broke up the fighting, though she didn't punish us. In fact, I saw her smiling. I think she was proud of you. Just small things, silly things. The sort you'd scarcely recall even if your memories were left intact. You had a little hiding place that you went to when you needed to get away. You brought me there sometimes. We'd talk, play, Read. Do each other's hair. Hidden at the back of the storage area. Luckily enough, as quartermaster, I was able to keep it hidden back there. It should be, well, if not how you remember it, exactly as you left it. The plat and fringe? Yes. On your instructions, of course. You were very intent on a bold look, I think you said. My hands were cramped by the time I finished, but you were very pleased. I like the new look as well, though. You always did like a dramatic touch. Remains to be seen. This place is all I've ever known. In time, perhaps I'll venture out there, see what I've been missing. But for now, old habits die hard. Can't give up now. Might be useful.
do I remember these of all things? A gift from Soldanesula, Mother Superior said. Curious. I could never quite tell if she was proud of them or not. Something good here, I hope. These are all about me. Forty years of my life documented like I was some sort of specimen. What path lies before me? My old corner. Strange. I don't remember it, but it's comforting to be here. little hideaway that we found in the cloister. It almost felt like I'd found a piece of my childhood. A childhood I don't truly remember. But remember it or not, I felt right at home there. Surrounded by books and night orchids. Hm. Don't tempt me might find it hard to leave. Well, can you imagine what it would have been like growing up in that place? Endless training, no privacy, facing scorn wherever I looked. I can very easily imagine I needed somewhere to escape to, if I was to survive. Nocturne and I must have come here a lot. We probably had plenty we wanted to hide from. Anyway, I think that little hideaway helped shape who I am, as much as any sermon or training did. Funny, the things that influence you. I heard birdsong at dusk. Coming here. You don't know what it's like to hear music like that again. After so long without. Thank you. My daughter found her way in the end. And found a good friend in you along the way. Oh, I see. More than a friend. Apologies. I forget my little girl is not so little anymore. Apologies. Even the littlest thing wears me out. I should rest a little. We'll talk soon, Arnell. Oh. I see. Do forgive me. You've shown great kindness, allowing my wife and I to remain with you. Thank you. I'm glad Genevelle found you. You are more than just a friend to her, aren't you? I saw the way she looked at you. It reminded me of her mother when we first met. Don't worry. I am truly glad she found you. And I have scant energy to play the stern father. There must be stories you could tell. But perhaps another time. I'm afraid my strength has not returned just yet. Decades in that place has left me maimed. Body and soul. Some rest, perhaps, will make me better company. Good. I was just starting to miss the sound of your voice. Of course. Fine. What's on your mind? I brought my own paring knife. Now I just need some ingredients, and I'm gonna make something really good, I promise. Does 
doesn't look like anyone's been here in a while. Perhaps people lost faith. Or forgot about it. I wanted to come here. To see if I felt anything that I hadn't done before. Now that I know what I know. Now that I know who I am. No. For so long I only felt what she wanted me to. Now I have to do it for myself and I feel like I'm drowning. <laughs> Very good thing. I don't know what I did to trick you into thinking I was worthy of you, but... I'm glad it worked. I have my family back. And now I can't even look them in the eye. I don't deserve to be anyone's daughter. That's not true. Not even close. I'm sorry. You shouldn't have to see me like this. Alive? Free? Feeling? I've dreamt for years of seeing you like this. Seeing you as yourself again, Jen. <laughs> it kept us going all this time. I can't be you, Jennifer. Not as you remember her. Of course you can. No. I'd be turning my back on too much. Shadowheart is as much part of who I am as Genevel. I can't just forget her. <laughs> That's not what I do anymore. Besides, Shadowheart still suits me. Even better than before, perhaps. I can't cast a shadow without some light. Don't worry. I'm still your daughter. If you want me to be. I'll call you whatever you like, so long as you're happy. Arnel? The Moon Maiden guides and helps us find our true selves. Shadowheart. Daughter. Try get fresh tomatoes in the city under siege. I wonder if this was brewed with my barley. Damn rat! Oi, you! I thought I asked you to clean the rats out of this cellar yesterday already. Hop to it! Get in there! No. I need them rats taken care of. Here's the deal. I'll keep a lookout for murderers. You murder the rats. Oh, I cursed to put my hands on everything. The cellars are just down the stairs. Find my own lodgings. Here 
goes nothing. On the other side, you'll find a passageway known only to those invited to do business. Law does not need permission to kill. You are a doll, a blunt blade unfit to flay. But you could be sharpened, thin and jagged. Yes, I will tell you what to do. You'd prefer my whispers in the tyrant's tongue, hmm? arrangement with Lord Gortash, but he whinges and wails over the crown, wanting to command it alone. Oh, how I long to slit his poxy smile from ear to ear. But I can't touch him. He bound my blade when we first conspired. Gortash didn't want me at first, didn't trust me, got me to wag my tongue, swear an oath never to hang him from the hooks. Trip drain him into father's open jaws. You must kill the tyrant. Take the Netherstone from his corpse and bring it to my temple. There we slice and shred each other. The survivor claims the stones. What's left of the other is balls. Agree, and I will bring my assassins to heal. They watch you always, longing to spray the crimson from your veins. Refuse me, and you'll learn what happens to those who defy Baal's doctrine. So will your friend. Orin demands a fight to the death. The prize for the victor, the Nether Stones, and the chance to control the crown alone. Accept. And you must kill Gortash. Refuse, and your companion's life may be forfeit, as might your own. Orin's assassins will hunt you like prey for slaughter. Yes. Oh, yeah. Kill the Bainite, and I will keep my blade unblooded. Do not underestimate his steel watch. Seek their cradle in the lower city, and skewer their skull meat. Make them rust and blood. Then you can gore the Lordling again and again and again. But listen, listen close, Bone. Killer. Step in my domain while the tyrant still sucks air, and I will carve your failure into your pretty plaything's skull. <laughs> Bring me his stone, and I will set the bait free. <laughs> Only then can you and I make exquisite butchery. The victor will set the world to slaughter. <laughs> That is Baal's offer. He will not make another. I will not give you anything that you need myself. You kill the rats, yes? I heard commotion in the cellar. Good. Perfect. Here, 
You take this. And do not worry. Chef Revere's eyes will be kept most peeled for murderous knaves. Sir? Of course, love. And, and please don't call me sir. I'm barely even a chef. Chef Revere has been staying most vigilant since your warning, yes. Only murders in this kitchen will be of the rat kind. Maybe for players. In my opinion. Why, hello there. We were just about to try some of Master Metzley's delightful wines. Oh, would you care to join us? Ooh, they do look ever so tasty. Ah, Mrs. Highbury. I prefer to conduct tastings individually, so I may assess your palate. Call me Cora, Master Metzley. And I'm afraid I must insist on their joining us. Wine's no good without company, after all. No. I must say, if this is a practical joke, it's not very amusing. Why, a serial killer? Oh, that's terrible. Master Metzley, are you quite all right? It was perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect! You have sullied it with knowledge, made it an unclean sacrifice. I will remember your face. And I will peel it from your skull, should you interfere again. the red tugs your sleeve sulking for attention she might come to regret it yet Lizelle will not break easily but Orin will only enjoy her work the more for that if we give her the time I have and while I do not love my conclusion that does nothing to change it the Harpers are the city's best information network with them out of action we shall have to fall back on second best. Nine fingers keen. A name known and feared throughout the city's underworld. A mysterious keen runs the guild, which in turn runs every criminal enterprise in the city. Friend is not the word I'd use. Nor is petty if you've a mind to keep your tongue. But both our operations step outside the law when needful. She just likes it better there. How hospitable she will be to a harper that comes begging to her guild hall. Huh, we will find out. Perhaps I will let you do the talking. Oh, I curse to put my hands on everything. Only way to raise awareness is that bloody boulders man. What's up for discussion? It's an orphanage, Ukta. What would you have me do? Seize their toys as payment? Well, they fail to pay tribute. We should withdraw our protection, at the very least. And cede more ground to the Stone Lord. <laughs> You're not suggesting I yield a single inch of the city, my city, to this cult. I... We already look weak. If you're seen to be forgiving debts... I didn't say forgive. Seize the building. Arm any children old enough. If they protect what's mine, we'll consider that a start on what's old. Yes, Guildmaster. I... Excuse me. This is a private council. 
Keep your underpants clean, Ukta. We're playing host to a hero. You owe me a gold piece, Grandmother. When I heard you died out in the wilderness, I made an offering at Kalamvo's wealth. Of gold? Oh, I did not know I meant so much to you, Guildmaster. Oh, I'm terribly sentimental. Case in point, I've just let a harper walk through my guild hall, noticeably unholed. Because I'm curious about why you're here and who it is you've brought with you. This is the one who saved my life. So really, he owes you your gold piece. But we can settle that later, Nine Fingers. For now, we need help. We're searching for Minsk of Rashomon. A big name, that. Such information does not come cheap, High Harper. Not in normal times. Of course. Seeing as these are not normal times and we're all such good friends, I'll do better than tell you where he is. I'm bringing him here as we speak. Or... parts of him, at least. I gave no orders about the condition of his corpse. What treachery is this, Nine Fingers? Have you thrown in with the Absolute too? Against my own city? Careful. You're in very real danger of hurting my feelings. It's Minsk who's found his faith with Faerun's newest god. And a new name with it. Stone Lord. Lies. It should. My people speak it in the same breath as Saravok and Demogorgon. But he's just another upstart. In his short reign, the Stone Lord and his crew have earned a reputation. Pure brutality. No survivors. And where he mows my people down, this right little cult takes root. But not for much longer. We have word on where he plans to hit next. And he'll find us ready to hit back this time. Nine fingers. Estelle. Call off your ambush. Tell us where he is, and we'll handle this. We? I heard what happened to your harpers, Jahira. I'm sorry, but... This fight's too big for you alone. If you're half the friend you're posing as, you'll tell her that her part in this is done. The Stone Lord's fate is sealed. We have a bigger war to fight. I'd rather turn our talk to that, but if you need a moment, Jahira... Well, you've earned that much. My guild hall is open to you. Have a drink, Jahira. Have a rest. Just leave well enough alone. It would be a shame for the city to lose two of its heroes in one day. There's little point in pressing Nine Fingers further. She means what she says. But we swore no vows. She won't tell us where to find Minsk? Someone else in her guild hall will. We need to be swift. I suppose we must greet the local wildlife. Guild hall is awash with ill scented gossip at the best of times. These days, they have nothing but the Stone Lord to talk about. See, see? That fingers is a master of strategic. Strategical. She's clever fun. Won't fight the Stone Lord out in the open, but she's got a spot picked out, see? And. and uh... I don't care about Stone Lord Tut. Don't care about some ambush. I asked, do you eat my last pickled ooze? Huh? Fuck her off! I'm talking to my friend about a news. Now, now. He who keeps his manners keeps his teeth. Besides, you are only pretending to be as wine-soaked as your friend here. I... How can you tell? I've been to fouler festivals than this, and you... have the stage presence of Volothamp Gedarm. 
Now, you were speaking to my friend. Politely. Didn't eat it. It's one way to prove it if you really want out. An assailing mist dampens your face. Stale beer, garlic, and whatever else lurks in Tut's stomach. As for the contents of your own stomach... <sighs> Must you embarrass me in front of the city's lower life forms? <sighs> You're disgusting. This you're a mess, me. Die. He's all riled up, best you do go away. We're all on the same side, friend. Nine fingers invited us herself. Oh, the gods truly this petty. The guildmaster hired you, yes. But I think it's best if you're Zendrim. See, see. Well, I don't care about Stone Lord Tut. No. no. All right. I've been. Now, you were speaking to my friend. Politely. For such sauce, my friend. You're lucky I'm a happy drunk. Now, nah. oh, where was I? A stone lord, aye. Bastard's going after the accounting house, but he doesn't know that there's just another guild operation, eh? Huh? Nine Fingers is gonna catch him with his claws in their coffers. <laughs> I pity the bastard. The counting house. But what the hells could Minsk want there? Happy? Now, why were you? We want drink in peace. Yeah. The counting house. More bastion than bank, I'm afraid. Minsk must have a way in. But he's never had much use for coin beyond whatever sharp steel it could buy. There must be something in the vaults the Great Chosen are after. All the more reason to get there. Swiftly. I have no reason to doubt the Guildmaster's information. Only her conclusions. The Stone Lord she describes sounds nothing like Minsk. As for the name, well, a bad joke, perhaps. The time of troubles ended almost a century and a half ago. I weathered the years between with all the elven grace you have no doubt come to expect. But do you know how Minsk, a human, passed those years? I'll give you a hint. They named him the Beloved Ranger. No? It was a statue. Dedicated to one of the city's lost heroes. Only it was that hero. Minsk, frozen in stone for a century. And freed, the story goes, in the city's hour of need. Yeah, for Minsk it is downright subtle. He shrugged at the whole affair. I still don't know how he came to be petrified. The few occasions I visited his monument, well, I took it as a moment for reflection. To think of old friends, and the fight I had to continue in their name. And during all my self-serious brooding, that big, dumb, insufferable buffoon was staring me in the face. <laughs> I did. <laughs> On occasion, I even found myself critiquing the stonework. Surely his head was not so large as this. I cannot call myself a particularly good friend. But I am his friend. And I cannot let Nine Fingers have him. Welcome, rest. 
right. Offered shoemakers. Excuse me, sir. Could you spare a little gold? Nine. Ten. Here we go. Seven. I should speak up. Shoulder. Someone who wants to take you for a drink in this one chest in the book. Welcome to the counting house. I'm head clerk Mead, honey. How may the Fellowship of Financiers serve you? You seem a little nervous, sir, Mead, honey. Had some difficult customers today? One in particular calling himself the Stone Lord, perhaps. The who? The what? All right, fine. The head banker may have just taken a customer by that name down to the vaults. Rather large, rather heavily armed, which is against regulations. But I'm sure the head banker knows what he is doing. <laughs> I assure you, he does not. You are right to be nervous. But let us pass, and all will be well. Uh, well, who is this Stone Lord to you? Lord in truth. Forgive me, he did not seem the type. Or, oh, I, I, I mean to say, he was most down to earth. Earthy. About describes him, yes. It's most unusual, but that explains why the head banker is dispensed with normal procedure. I suppose I can let you pass then. Very well. Show the guards this temporary vault pass. And should my superior ask, keep my name out of it. Captain needs to see your pass. Oh, I'm not that kind of drow. Account holders only from here. Vault pass? Right. <clears throat> Descend and know. Upon entering the vaults, you forego the protection of city and church law alike. Which is to say, keep to your own vault and you'll be fine. Just need to see your vault pass, please. Walks in order. Blessed day to you. door codes, please refer to the head banker's office. Highest security clearance only. your fussing. Nine Fingers had this one made especially. Hello, Marvel. We'll barely slow it down. But the stories... Stories. Tall tales and big names, lad. Don't let them fool you. Elminster the Archmage. Drist the Drow Exile. Heroes have power eye. But not half so much as we do. A little coin into the right purse. A soft word in the right ear. It's not glory that spins these planes, lad. It's gold. See? No.
Americans cracked clay. There is no gold in here! Hey. If there is one thing Minsk hates more than beasts with bad breath... <laughs> it is those who are tricksome with the truth. And turnips. But you are no turnip. Let that be of comfort in your final moments. Oh my gods. I'm gonna faint. You. The Absolute has shown me your face, villain. I will beat it into a more pleasing shape. Enough play, Stone Lord. The Absolute has other plans for this one. Oh, Nine Fingers set a poor trap, little banker. Let the Absolute's faithful show you how it is done. Now come, Stone Lord. We have the gold. And the Absolute has need of it elsewhere. As you say, Jaira. They stole her friend. And her face. Damn, that's low. To be done. I'm a dead man. Well, hello there. I want to have a word. You can tell Nine Fingers this was not my fault. She swore that mimic could swallow a bloody owl bear. Wait. You're no guild sworn. Who are you? Gratitude of the gold variety, I suppose you mean. Good luck with that. The Stone Lord just cleared our vaults. And now he has enough gold to make himself a lord in truth. Funny that. I don't give a damn about him. But I care very much where the coin went. As chairman of the Fellowship of Financiers, I can assure you we'd reward you well for the return of the coin he took. Not for us, you understand. For the common Baldurian. Who knows what he's planning to do with it. Try all of it. Every penny of civilian lodgings, anyway. I mean, not like we'd lead him into the private vaults. But still. A lot of Baldurians waking up poor tomorrow. What he can do with that kind of coin... Oh, ...doesn't bear thinking about. Compassion for your fellow folk? Or maybe just good sense? That much money only paints a target on your back. In our hands, it keeps the city ticking over, 
Stock in merchant stalls. Food in hungry bellies. Retrieve the coin. And I'll make sure you are well rewarded. There's treasures greater than gold. Feel free to poke around this place and it'll help you pick up the Stone Lord scent. Me, I've got ledgers to amend. The wind back in my I sails. I could show you what she is interested. They say that home is where a person can be their truest selves, without guile, without pretense. You did well to see off the Githyanki who had invaded mine. And now that you have seen where I come from, you know all there is to know about me. At least, all that matters. The flavors of my favorite fiddlehead soup, should you wish to experience it for yourself. The very first reward I gifted myself on completion of my first adventure the garments with which I concealed and later constructed my appearance as the Emperor. We spoke of my relationship with Duke Berlin Stillman, a story I have told no one else. I have no more secrets from you. No need to resort to subterfuge. We are true allies now, working towards a common goal. ever going to get close enough to the brain to destroy it was by working together, but few would trust a mind flayer. So I did what I had to to convince you. I studied you, your motivations, your actions, your desires. I deduced the best way to align your goals with my own. Consider that you were just a problem to be solved. And not an easy one at that. But I persisted. I needed your absolute dedication to the cause. I anticipated the challenge, and I anticipated your resistance. What I didn't anticipate was how much I would enjoy your company. our way towards something deeper. I'm sorry. You're right. Now's not the time. Forget I said anything. Let's move on to more important things. The Elder Brain's hive mind has grown to monstrous proportions. And through the Crown's magic, it has complete control over each and every member. It was intelligent before, but now, with its hive mind established across the city, it is well on its way to becoming indestructible. You should reconsider your attachment to your physical form. You have seen what an elithid can do. Imagine, some of that could be in your grasp. Not enough to warp your appearance beyond recognition, but just enough to enhance your potential. And believe me, it will radically increase our chances of success against the Elder Brain. Think on it. Do not 
not be blinded by smiles and song. Evil. It's not a lie. If you would just listen, I could explain. You have done quite enough explaining, Volotham Gadam. You have poisoned the very hearts and minds of these good, kind, gentle citizens with your lies, your delusions, your conspiracies. Though you hide behind a mask of stories, we have seen beyond the veil. We see what you really are, Fearmonger. Hear, hear! Attention seeker! Hear, hear! Agent of chaos! Your parasite stirs in recognition. This man is infected. Wreck the hells follow! Today, citizens, we rid ourselves of this cankerous sore. Today, we burn away all falsehoods. Today, we will be divided no longer, for today, we rise in truth. Psst. Don't you stand there. Help me, goddammit! Help me! I suppose we should aid him. Though I'd hate to miss the show. The newcomer speaks, and speaks of evidence, and trials, and justice. And in so doing, they delay their very own salvation. Dear citizen, dear friend, rest assured you will have your justice. But I'm afraid the time for trials has passed. Now is the time for judgment! is ever easy. It's not a lie. You, you, though you hear it. Aid. Your parasite stirs in recognition. This man is infected. I suppose we should aid him, though I'd hate to miss the show. What's this? Another heretic in our midst? Another mind clouded by the disruptor's lies? Another soul to cleanse? Well, we are nothing if not gracious. Let us see if we cannot lift the veil from their eyes, too. No! Please! No!
Looking ahead. Seems like a good moment to talk. Honey, you go with the girls. God, I really thought I was done for. I suppose thanks are in order. Again, what's an heroic story without a little risking of one's neck, eh? As you know it, they say, the bigger the story, the more people want to kill you for it. <laughs> I'll tell you all about it. But not here. Too many eyes, ears, and where palms about. Meet me at your camp. Nature servant awaits. Can't keep me out. Sense watchful eyes upon you. Perhaps some locks are better left unpicked. Just these three then. It is splendid to see you again, my friend. If you hadn't saved me from that mob, I'd be penning a guide to the afterlife based on first-hand experience. Perhaps you would hazard a guess as to why the mob turned on me? Pish-posh! That strutting tyrant has a long reach and a steel fist, but he's a puppy dog compared to the real horror that haunts our streets. The Lord of Murder has returned. As he did a hundred years ago, Baal has set his accursed sights on Baldur's Gate, and his temple runs red with the blood of the innocent. Oren is his chosen, and like Saravok before her, she is able to take on the savage form of the Slayer. If the Slayer is not stopped, it will slaughter every living thing in this city. As one of those things, I'm particularly eager to stop it. And there is a way. I have a study of the beast, penned by the wizard Irenicus himself. It contains all of the knowledge needed to slay the Slayer. Now I just need a brave adventurer. Willing to face Baal's Chosen, and to put the knowledge into practice. Wonderful! I can scarcely think of anyone more suitable. It will serve you well. A study of the Slayer penned by John Irenicus. It's one of a kind, so do try to keep it away from the inevitable bloodbath, hmm? The Dream Eater. It is said the children of Baal are claimed throughout their sleep, ever disturbed by visions of a life of bloodshed and terror. Once they have seen too much, once these dreams drive their minds to break, they are beset by the Slayer. It is a beast of unspeakable violence that consumes all in its path, including the soul of the one who is host to it.
a genius. Exiled from his home in the elven paradise of Soldanesala, when he attempted to seize the power of life itself, he instead turned his magnificent mind to murder on a grand scale. That is how he came to crave the power of the Baal spawn. He saw them not as living things, but as tools for his own machinations. In the end, though Erenicus took the form of the Slayer for himself, it was a Baal spawn who thwarted him, the same that saved Baldur's Gate. I am a living witness to Baal's defeat those hundred years ago. So I know your battle against him is not futile. He can be stopped, but not all of those who stood against him survived. And those who did were never the same again. I wish you luck, my friend. And I hope that when I see you again, you'll be in one piece. Two or three at most. I grow tired of these false faces. Every corner we turn, another. And now it is my face they use to turn Minsk against us. I am sorry, but... I am just... Tired. It is some defect of the mind, I think, to stubbornly insist you are following the light, even as you blunder through the darkness. Or perhaps the defect is mine. When I left Minsk to this fate, I believed I had no choice. I believe it still. We were ignorant of our enemy, unarmed against the cult. I made the right decision, but... I do not like how easily I made it. Minsk would have never left me behind, no matter what happened. That is his problem entire. The past century left Minsk unchanged. And so he believes the world has never changed, that I have not. You saw the fool. Hanging on the doppelganger's every word for no other reason than it wears my face. No. But snotting into my sleeve while there is still work to do is... Come then. We need a lead. And bullying this banker ought to make me feel better. Yes? You're sure? Later then. I tell you not to get in trouble, but I suspect it will find you whether you like it or not. Minsk puts on quite a show of brawn, even if there's no brain worth mentioning. I mean, I hate to judge the proverbial book, but that oath may be all cover and no pages. Darling, I thought you'd never ask. Lead on. I need a quick word. You are asking the impossible. Gyronetics require a steady hand and a sharp gaze. I can barely keep my eyes open. I need to rest. You have a son, do you not? Is he as lazy and pathetic as his spineless mother? Wait! Stay your hand, I beg you. Prinsky's motivation sequence activated. Tell me, Gondian. Tell me about your son. He's not... <sighs> yes, Overseer Holt. He's frail in body and mind like me, like all of us. Yet by your grace, he lives. And your wife? She is... was... useless. And interfered with production quotas. 
You were wise to remove her from this world. Forgive my outburst. I will work through the night. This Watcher will be operational by dawn. I will allow it. But if your work is anything short of impeccable, your son will die screaming. Is that clear? Yes. Overseer Holtz. Perhaps if I... Non goof grish of the lore. Your nervous gait betrays your presence, stranger. You don't belong here. Who are you? What? Go away! Your presence imperils us all. If any of us attempts to escape, our kin will die. The Overseers, they have a contraption. When triggered, it will kill everyone who wears a collar. You underestimate the enemy. The Overseers, they are Glicksbran Rakfar. The collars are not only equipped with explosives, there is also a mechanism that alerts the Overseers if they're removed. One of us may be able to save themselves, but it would be at the expense of everyone else. We can't risk it. Even if we did somehow unshackle our collars simultaneously and overthrow our oppressors, there would be consequences. Our families are held elsewhere. The Overseers need only activate those contraptions they hold, and they suffer the consequences of our actions too. We cannot win. We must aid in building these Vagron. Gun gun. I. Even more, I'd help you destroy this place. I don't know where they are, but some of the overseers must. You'll have to infiltrate deeper into the foundry. Just make sure you don't get caught. If they raise the alarm, they'll trigger the collars. I will pray for you. My daughter, her name is Obinia. Gondral Thraka's Hulnish. May Gond be with you. It hasn't been long. What's this? You ain't supposed to be down here, mate. A submersible. It matches the description of the vehicle that brought the Gondian hostages into the Iron Throne. is good news, right? Especially with the rough water between here and the Iron Throne. No prisoners lost in the last batch of runs, either. Though them servants of Umbly are making the trip damn near deadly. Bloody salt is always flopping around in the water. I've almost hit one or two now. Might have even nicked one off the port bow the other day. Maybe they'll teach them to keep out of the way. You're testing me. O all right. It's an underwater prison, most secure in the realms. Myself and Cap are the only ones who can make it there in one piece. Lord Gortash keeps some Gondians there, collateral to keep those working in the Steelwatch Foundry under control. Do you now? 
Boss never sends anyone that away but prisoners. The Jableda's on you. Look, I don't want any trouble, but I know old Gortash is up to some mad shit in there. I'll take you in, but look, there's some bad shit going down in there. You don't want to get involved. Neither did I, but it was them or me. I'll get Cat warmed up. Get in when you're ready. Here goes nothing. Aren't you the intrepid little adventurer? Digging and diving where you don't belong. Wrong. Your presence here is the only real threat to their survival. Dead, they're no use to me. So I keep them safe, after a fashion. I have prepared for this eventuality, and if you interfere, I will destroy the Iron Throne. Return to the docks, or the deaths of everyone inside will be on your conscience. How many people are trapped within? How many lives will be lost? That was a mistake. When the corpses start to wash up on the shore, remember, you could have prevented all this. slows to a halt. Unlike the Iron Throne, you remain intact. So, it seems, will the families of all the hostages rescued from the throne. Oh, gods. We made it. We actually right. made it. We're good to go. Say goodbye to Cap and come up the hatch when you're ready. I'm ready. I'd love to, thanks. Yeah? Oh, I need it's to over. rest. The sunset it's can't come quickly over. enough. We're safe! Haste. I just... I... I can't thank you enough. I was certain that place was to be my cold, wet tomb. You... You saved us! Saved us all! I thought it impossible, but... but you did it! 
We were kept hostage to control our families and the Steel Watch Foundry. To keep them building Gortash's death machines. Please. They need to know what happened here. They have no reason to obey Gortash anymore. If they rebel, it'll put a dent in Gortash's steel mind. He... he did? Of course he did! I knew it. I knew he would do something. By God, I'm glad you showed up. Hopefully Frell's not too worried about me. You have beaten and tormented us to the brink of insanity. You cut out my eyes, but we will bow no more. Gondians! Rip the motivator from this bastard's hands! For Gond! Trigger imminent. sequence activated. No! The motivator! Deactivate it! Hurry! <laughs> Prinsky's motivation sequence activated. Another one. This could be going a whole lot worse. to Obelia. Is she safe? <sighs> My heart. I thought her lost. I would give more than just my sight to keep her safe. Our destination is the Neurosita, the nerve center of the Steel Watch. Guide me there, and I'll do the rest. Lead the way. I'll listen to your steps and bring up the rear. It's disarmed. My heart's about to hammer right Bust after your me. Shoot me up, quick! Chances. My turn. Oh, I can keep going a little longer now. We need to move. The Neurosita lies in the depths of the foundry. Wait. Elevator gyroscopes, triples a quadrupex. No, it can't be. I hear it through the floor. Powerful, indestructible. The ultimate watcher. The Titan. Sounds like a challenge. It shames me to admit this, but you must face this beast of Gondian folly alone. I would be crushed in an instant. When it raises its shields, strike it with every scrap of magic and might you possess, and pray to God that it does not fire upon you. Good luck, my friend.
take you. Nothing important is ever easy. I can hear its hum. Familiar, yet painful. I helped design the steel watchers, toiled night and day on the first bipedal prototype. It is fitting it ends this way. I will bring down not only the steel watch, but the very foundry itself. This place will be smoke and rubble when I am finished. Are you ready, my friend? Like the foundry, the Neurocitor's exterior is near impossible to penetrate. However, its inner circuitry is highly unstable. I'm going to rain fire upon it from the inside out. Gond, let your hammer be my courage, your furnace my heart. Blessed Gond. And the foundry crumbles behind us. The sound is as sweet as a well-oiled cog. Yet we paid the price in blood. So few of us remain. Gond's name will soon fade into the annals of history. I must leave now and gather those of us still standing. Look after this city, my friend. I pray it treats you better than it did us. Copper for your thoughts. He got his claws into me early. I was a wild kid, brawling my way through the city. One of my mates got wind of a bit of work guarding some indoorsy type with lots of enemies. Seemed like easy money, so I went in for it. He took one look at me and said I was perfect. I liked that. Not like that, you know. Just. It felt like a good fit. I kept him safe, and he paid me well. Well enough to move my folks into a better neighborhood and put something away for the future. My future. I respected him, trusted him. And he returned that trust, that respect. His life was in my hands, and I took that seriously. The whole thing with Zauriel happened so fast. I had no idea what had gone down until it was over. One minute I was in Baldur's Gate, a happy, healthy, not quite kid. The next, I was burning up in a Vernus with an engine for a heart. Zariel laughed, said she paid him well for my services. She'd wanted to test her new machine, and he said I'd be able to handle it. He was right. Sometimes I wish he weren't. Evil, evil bastard. Yes? <sighs> the Undercity is perilous. But... I recall Minsk making a home down there in the old days. To plant his boot on the very bosom of evil. Or some such. I'll mark an entrance, I know. From there, we shall just have to follow our noses.
Let's talk. Mind flayers are like devils. They just sport tentacles rather than wings. Clever, manipulative, exploitative. The Emperor says he's a friend. I think we'd be fools to believe him. And maybe it's true. Maybe Stelmane allied with a mind flayer and subjected the city to their political will. Or maybe he made an offer she couldn't refuse. I received a dispatch from the Grove. Life carries on there in our absence, just as nature intended. My chosen successor, Francesca, has proven to be a wise choice. Perhaps the wisest I ever made as Archdruid. One grand victory may not be enough to absolve a host of small failures. That is where true leadership lies. Not in winning a single vast battle, but in fighting a thousand smaller ones. Making ten thousand difficult decisions. Finding balance where none seems possible. Day after day, I was all too eager to surrender my responsibilities towards the Grove. <laughs> Perhaps I was never meant to be Archdruid, to be a leader. Still, though, I cannot help but wonder if there was more I could have done. Perhaps, Oak Father willing, I may yet have the chance someday. Forgive me. The Shadow Curse occupied me so entirely and for so long, I almost missed the purpose it gave me. Now I must find a new one. will. Such a tragedy. His own father, cut down in his prime. Damn shame, if you ask me. A man of the people, the grandest of dukes. Hard to think he's forever lost to us. Or is he? I'm saying that someone stepping off stage doesn't have to mean the end of their story. Meet me in your camp. I've got a devil of a proposal. Revealing your discussion with Mazora to Will. A devil of a proposal. By the hounds of the hells, what is she planning? Certainly not. But she's as inevitable as Toril's path around the sun. We'll have answers soon enough. Let's talk to Mazora. I can already feel her tightening the leash. This might be my last chance to escape it.
come to bargain. The Hells demand witness. Your father is dead, Will. The dead three have claimed their prize. Dead? God's damn wretches! Still yourself, pup. Not every death is forever. Sisters. Infernos contractos te vocamos. Infernos contractos te vocamos. Infernos contractos te vocamos. Your contract, Will. Signed in blood, forged in fire, bound in bone, but not unbreakable. Yet no contract is ended without sacrifice, Will. The cost must be paid. Will Ravenguard, a choice is before you. Option one, I raise your father from the dead, and you pledge your soul to me and the Archdevil Zariel in a pact eternal. Option two, I break your pact and you are freed from your duty. Your father remains dead and Baldur's Gate loses its greatest champion. Name your sacrifice. Bloody Zariel. I won't let her take Will. Silence, Karlak. Mizora, you asshole. Choose. Addendum F. The Absolute must be avenged for the Soulbinder's detention at Moonrise. The Soulbearer retains his gifts until such time as the Absolute is slain. You damned wretch! Father... Do it. Break the pact. Fiat Ita. Fiat Ita. Anima ad beator. Didn't think you had it in you. <laughs> Seems my boy's all grown up. <laughs> and don't go fussing about your father. You made your choice. You knew the terms. You know what? I think I'll stick around. Not for the greater good, you understand. Just for the entertainment. Let's talk. Little Will's all grown up. I can't wait to see what trouble he gets into. Impossible. My bargain was uncommonly reasonable. A single soul for the return of Baldur's Gate's most beloved duke. A real bargain, I should think. I never thought the legendary Blade of Frontiers would surrender his father for freedom. Not very valorous, if you ask me. But what does a mean old devil like me know about heroes? Just because he's not my pet, doesn't mean he's not useful. The Absolutists worked a number on me at Moonrise. And you're the best hope I've got at payback. No one crosses the Hell's children without getting scorched. Oh, you are an inquisitive one. I'd have thought you'd figured by now. Zariel found new use for an old battle axe. The dead three in that bulging brain of theirs are a threat to more than this trifling city, you know. Savor her company. 
Who's to say when Zariel might change her mind? My mistress can be so capricious. Seek and you shall find me. Never a dull moment. These boots have seen everything. So Gortash is nothing more than a pile of flesh? Same as the rest of us. I feel like there should be a sunset for me to ride off into. Or an orchestral swell or something. But there's nothing, is there? I killed the bastard who ruined my life and my prize is that I get to crawl into a corner and die. Am I fucking missing something? I'm beyond overwhelmed. I'm... I'm finished. <sighs> he's dead. And he's no fucking sorrier now than he was before. What was the point? I'm still dying. I'm dying. I'm going to die. Don't say that. So you found some way to fix me. But now Gortash is dead. I'll get my heart back. My heart. It was mine. They took it. I'm going to be as dead as a Gortash any day now. Any moment. And what then? 
off to the city of judgment to waste into oblivion? Into the dirt to get eaten by maggots? Is that it for me? Is that fucking all? And you, you'll just keep going, won't you? Watching the stars, warming your hands on the campfire, dancing, eating, making fucking love all night, all of it, all of it! That's my reward for everything I suffered! That's why I survived ten years of torment! The fighting, the clawing, the loneliness, <laughs> the fucking loneliness! All of it, so I could rot! Because the person I trusted the most gave me away to the devil! <laughs> it isn't fair. <laughs> I don't want it like this. <laughs> I don't want to die. I want to live. I want to stay. <laughs> What the fuck am I supposed to do now? <laughs> Let's get out of here. I've always hated this place. Stupid fucking gigantic bridge or whatever. I think I need to go to camp for a while. Be alone. Scream at the sky. You can come and find me later if you want to. Thanks for listening. For existing. Love you. Time to pack it in for the day, I think. Howling like a great wind through a canyon. It engulfs your mind, drowns your senses. Above the hell rises a screech, gleeful and maniacal. It is the way and the truth. Absolute. Leave them alone. The screech quiets, the howl fades. Your mind is hollow. Save one lone voice. Bane's chosen has fallen. His netherstone is yours. You have done well. The Elder Brain is regaining its autonomy. It cries not from pain, but exaltation. We must stop it before it breaks free. One nether stone remains. Orin's. We must find her and take it from her. After that, we take control of the brain. And you should start wondering what you will do then. Sometimes you surprise me with your wisdom. Soldier, you're back.
Yeah, despite my best efforts. I kept trying to flop over and give up, but Karlat just won't let me. Did I miss anything important? Would you believe it if I said I'm all right? You know, soldier, we're so fucked. The Dark Three are trying to consume the Sword Coast. We've still got tadpoles in our eyes, and I've got a ticking time bomb in my chest. I'm not sure anyone has ever been more fucked than this. And yet, we're fine. In this moment, we're fine. Here I am, there you are, breathing, talking, even laughing if we want. Is it very precious to say that despite it all, I'm happy? In that case, there's something I wanted to ask you. Will you stay with me when it's time for me to go? I think I can do anything if you're there. Even die. Thank you. Now, Enough tragedy, I'm not gone yet, and our schedule is packed with important heroics, isn't it? Plus, if I cry any more, I'm gonna run out of tears and start leaking motor oil. Thanks for everything, soldier. I'm extremely glad to be in this thing together. The Devil's Fee. Speak up. I welcome thee to the Devil's Fee, where every hellish curio's a rarity. So merry be, and shop with glee. Oh no. Definitely something up with this one. Trust me. Interesting. Exactly, are you and our esteemed Archduke acquainted? My, what a juicy morsel. I didn't think he liked your type. Anyway, you seek answers, Lord Mammon seeks coin. I will happily mediate. Make me an offer. Mammon, I knew it. I did. Now you've seen what I have for thee. Remember, discretion is key at the Devil's Fee. My most perceptive, prospective customer. Welcome back. You seek answers. Lord Mammon seeks coin. I will happily mediate. Make me an offer. The first hit's free, eh? Oh, fine. I'll humor you, mortal. Just this once. You stand before Mammon's picklock, latchkeeper of the Nine Hells. My business is not information, nor hellish curios. Not really. I break people into the Hells. That's my thing. I can reveal to you that I opened a portal for Lord Gortash. <laughs> my word, this is embarrassing. Perhaps I should have explained our terms better. You asked what I did for Lord Gortash. You paid the fee, and I answered you. Our pact is complete. Would you like to make another transaction? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Quite the fitting.
fitting token. Let it not be said that Lord Mammon's servant does not deal with paupers. But I'm afraid you'll need to offer an awful lot more than that. I'll be keeping the coin, though, of course. Hmm. The King of Avarice accepts your humble offering. You stand before Mammon's Picklock, Latchkeeper of the Nine Hells. My business is not information, nor hellish curios. Not really. I break people into the Hells. That's my thing. I can reveal to you that I opened a portal for Lord Gortash. Raphael. That sounds vaguely familiar, but I have a terrible memory for names. The only thing that jogs it is coin. <laughs> I mean, I suppose that'll do. Stingy bastard. Yes, you are quite correct. The Crown of Carsus left the vault, and an opportunity opened for a devil named Raphael. His House of Hope is furnished with a great deal of treasures, many related to Carsus. But alas, he lacks the crown itself. He's rather ambitious. One can only wonder what he has planned for the crown. The answers to that can probably be found within his house. I think it's about time we imposed ourselves on Raphael's hospitality for a change. What a fascinating proposition. Ludicrous, of course, but fascinating nevertheless. Very well. If you wish to die in Avernus, that's your business. Mine is charging you for it. Of course, such a task will require quite the substantial donation to Lord Mammon's coffers. Such a task would be tantamount to suicide. Do not even entertain it. You put me in a difficult position, mortal. You are almost certain to fail. Almost. And so, there is a chance you might succeed. Fine. I'd like to be able to carry all of my precious stock without the need of a team of oxen. There are gauntlets of hill giant strength within the House of Hope. Free passage, and you fetch them for me. Deal? Allow me to outline how this is going to work. First, you were never here. We never spoke. Second, you will perform the rites yourself. I want absolute deniability. Here's the grimoire and necessary components. Oh, take this key, too. It unlocks the ritual room upstairs. There's a blood circle already drawn. Don't ask whose blood. Along with the grimoire and components, Helsic hands you a note containing precise instructions for performing the ritual. Finally, you were never here. That is of utmost import to remember. Now be gone! You hand here over goes nothing. everything you've got on you, and I'll give you three ounces. Can't believe Lord Gortash has shuffled off for good. It's all the gazettes printing these days. You don't want to. Right tool will do the trick. I sense watchful eyes upon you. Perhaps some locks are better left unpicked. Uh, 
private word would be nice. What's on your mind? I question the wisdom of that decision, but so be it. I'll be here in the meantime, idling away the hours. The locked door has red text on it, reading, All are awaited, all are embraced, none shall escape. I'll give it a shot. Present me well from gifts thine own, or I shall rend thy flesh from bone. A grasping hand, an offering vile. Enter now the Dread Lord's trial. upon murder's progeny, child. His most ill-trusted zealots. His faithful departed. Prodigal servants, each returns to do his bidding eternally. This man is known to all Baldurians, and his presence sparks dread in the pit of your stomach. Before you is Saravok Anchev, a barlist who almost brought Baldur's Gate to ruin a century ago. This is the court of the Dread Lord's Tribunal. I am its custodian. Here come those who seek to transcend. Aspirants of his most profane order. The would-be unholy assassins of Baal. A long while ago, my wretched sibling bought me back. The fairest of Baal spawn soul bound me to this husk. Worship death though I do, I refused it. I roamed the coast gathering those who still held Baal in their black hearts. The cult survived, festering beneath the city, with me as the gate's everlasting poison. But no more, for poison is too slow a death. Now is the time for slaughter. With these killings, the glory of the Baalis has risen beyond what we dreamed possible during those dark days. But the worship of my lord is led by another now, my granddaughter, Arin. The youngest unholy assassin ever to follow in Baal's bloody trail. And his chosen. She is the architect of Baal's design. Baal has never had a more gifted prodigy. Arin's gifts surpassed even her mother's. Her mother knew this, and she could not bear it. When Arin was but seven years old, she tried to smother the child as an offering to our Lord. I heard the screams. I ran to help. I feared for the child's life. But the cries were not Arin's. It was her mother's blood that soaked the sheets. Arin had cut off the very hand that tried to end her and made a plaything of it. And as she toyed with her dead mother's hand, a deep quiver rose up through her throat. 
the Lord of Murder speaking through the child. Lay not a finger on this child, he said, nor let any other, for this child will serve me with unholy ardor. Protect her in my name. My lord made his choice. I abided by his words. And so it is that Arin now leads his temple and draws aspirants to his creed. But Arin is not the subject of our judgment here today. You wish to become an unholy assassin of Baal. So, approach and be judged. This is where you reveal yourself. You have been judged. You have been found wanting. Unworthy. You will make a most beautiful offering to the Lord of Murder. Something's on my mind. Oi! Citizen! Citizen! Thank the gods you're here! My wrinkles are starting to chafe. As an officer of the law, I demand you free me at once! Come on, open up. Get here and free me at once! Thanks for freeing me so quickly. No idea what those Baalist Burks had planned with me, but those chains were starting to chafe. Though I do wish you'd figured this all out before I... Uh, put the blame for Father Logan's murder on that poor refugee. Well, at least it's over now. After our chat at Charesse's caress, I thought it best to polish off the bottle I'd started. I started coming over all woozy. My joints stiffened up quicker than a brothel browser's loins. Paralyzed. My vision went black. When I woke up, 
I was in chains. Overall, a terrible ordeal. One deserving of a drink. I bid you good day, but it's been royally shite all round. You might not be finished. I am. It's plain to see that I'm well out of my depth here. But you... Well, you gave these reprobates a proper seeing to. You clearly have what I don't. Courage. Insight. Heroism. The city needs you. I overheard these pigs talking. There's a Baal temple deep within the old undercity that the cult is using. A century ago, it was destroyed by a group of heroic sorts. Let's hope history repeats itself, eh? I have something to ask. My children. My sweet ones. What have they done to you? I'm hungry, father. I'm so hungry. It hurts, father. The hunger. It never stops. Please, do you know of anything that can be done? I've been fighting it, but I think you're right. Better that than they start feeding off humans. Bet I can crack that open. A rush of ancient whispers fills your mind as you approach the door. It is rife with magic. Old, deathly magic. A new vessel brimming with blood darkens Baal's door. To baptize his days most holy. Do you have proof of your faith to our Lord? You hold proof of faith, but to hold and deserve are different. How have you proven yourself in the Dread Lord's eyes? Unorthodox. But a show of faith nonetheless. Walk in blood. At the ready. Let's talk. I met her twice. The first time, I was a boy of seven or eight at a banquet in the Flaming Fist's honor. One look and I was smitten. Chestnut hair that flowed behind her like willow fronds as she floated from one room to the next as if carried by clouds. The second time, Stelmaine was different. Even with the aid of a cane, each step she took was a struggle. Every word she spoke took great physical effort. A stroke victim? I asked Father later. No, he said. A stroke survivor. Not a tragedy. A calculated cruelty. Think about it. My father was tadpole. Stelmane is dead. The people are frightened and the council's in disarray. To exert control, he must first sow chaos. A tyrant strategy, as father would say. These murders aren't random acts. Someone powerful is guiding the killer's hand, and the city is made weaker for it. Better not be cursed. Stone seals this chamber against the world. The Baal amulet trembles in frightened awe. Wu 
you return once you cross this threshold? Buttresses created a magic entirely of their own. Not to I mention believe. that pleasure. Or you first made an incision in the upper Happy left clavicle. Pleasure, day. I am afraid. Smell it. Gortash's corpse stain. His killer approaches. See how good I was. How patient while you drained the tyrant's juices for me. But Saravok's crimson was not yours to spill. He was mine. You had no right to take him! Oh, did it think it could protect? Did it think it could save? Only the blades can offer salvation. from socket stroke me with a jagged edge until my skin shreds wet and red <laughs> a sharp lamb to be sacrificed but your cruelty makes the crimson sweeter Your murder should have been exquisite. A crypt-born effigy to greet Baal's bleeding dawn. And now it will be nothing. Come to me, Father. Set my flesh to your unholy purpose. stone. I need to see it for myself. There it is. So innocent, but such potential. You have done very well indeed. The nether stones pulse with psionic energy, permeating you, pulling you in line with their rhythm. The thrum quickens, rising, cresting on a single feeling. A location. A morphic pool beneath the city itself. So that's where the Chosen imprisoned the brain. To conceal it, one would imagine. And to maintain the illusion of their own control above ground. With the stones in hand, and the Chosen dead, we stand as good a chance as we ever will. As to how good a chance that is, I cannot say. But I have hope. You 
are right to be cautious. A fight with the most powerful being in all the realms is not to be entered into ill-prepared. Once we cross into the Elder Brain's domain, there will be no turning back. We will end this one way or another, in death, thraldom, or freedom. Finish your business here before you proceed. The Brain will be waiting for us. swiftly rectified to camp i will not let my guard slip again i swear by mother gith scion from bonds free no more in my heart. Hey, soldier. You're back. Old habits. Did I miss anything while I was off having a sulk? Would you believe it if I said I'm all right? You know, soldier, we're so fucked. The Dark Three are trying to consume the Sword Coast. We've still got tadpoles in our eyes, and I've got a ticking time bomb in my chest. I'm not sure anyone has ever been more fucked than this. And yet, we're fine. In this moment, we're fine. Here I am, there you are, breathing, talking, even laughing if we want. Is it very precious to say that, despite it all, I'm happy? In that case, there's something I wanted to ask you. Will you stay with me when it's time for me to go? I think I can do anything if you're there, even die. Thank you. Now, enough tragedy. I'm not gone yet, and our schedule is packed with important heroics, isn't it? Plus, if I cry any more, I'm gonna run out of tears and start leaking motor oil. Thanks for everything, soldier. I'm extremely glad to be in this thing together. Hells take that ball freak. She would have bled the whole world just for the fun of it. We've got her Netherstone now. One step closer to getting the Netherbrain under control. Soldier? Ah, oh, come on. You don't mean that. Oh, fine. Good riddance to the shape changer. It couldn't have happened to a worse wretch. Well, hello. What can I do for you? Darling, lead on. Yeah. 
It is not in a Githyanki's nature to say thank you. Our language doesn't even have a phrase for it. Kraith Khan Jan is the closest equivalent I know. May your enemies know agony. But after releasing me from Orin's grip, there is only one proper response. Thank you. Sincerely. <sighs> well, good then. Let's carry on. Hush, cousin. Of course you're my favorite. But I made the others from your mass, so they... What's this, cousin? Another absolutist come to see what we did to poor old Sarin. Your god took her mind, cultist, so Vareki took her head, and I burned the flesh from her bones. And now you come to interrupt the funeral rites. I... Yes, cousin. An excellent idea. Cousin says we will take you in return. He says you look just like kindling for Sarin's funeral pyre. Ha! I believe you may believe that. The Absolute takes people, twists them. Sarin, Bereki, and I, we were the three finest thieves in Baldur's Gate. We broke into the offices of Gortash, discovered he was with the Absolute too. Your fellow cultists hunted us, so we hid down here. We were safe, and so was our loot, until the darkness soured Sarin's mind. She kept our treasure from us, said Bereki and I had gone strange. Hush, cousin. Sarin turned into a cultist herself, so we did what we had to. Bereki wept until his voice was gone, and then he was gone too, leaving only me to conduct Sarin's rites. And my cousins here. You cannot conduct the rites without a clan to bear witness. Or some fuel for the fire. <laughs> You're right. It must be a cleansing fire. A pure one. I took Sarin's life. I must be sure she does not lose her soul as well. Pass then, and do not come back. This is Sarin's final resting place, and a killing ground for all who come to disturb her. So quiet here without the rain. I would be lying if I told you I was certain we would walk out of that temple alive. We faced Baal there once before, and I was not ready to count on luck a second time. But luck had no part in it. Just you. That is both chosen beaten, and their stones wrested from their grasp. But where they fall, the Elder Brain rises. It is already worming its way free. We must find it before it slips its collar. Whether we are ready or not. 
as you wish. Wherever we go, ye gods, let there be something green. Time for the niceties. All the coin seems to be there, if a little blood stained. You lot are enthusiastic about your lord's work. Our lady. We serve only the absolute. Oh, silly me. We enter him are so long past our own godly roots. I'm afraid I forget the half of them. But you, I know. When did you start worshipping gods? Did they give your wee rodent a worm friend, too? <coughs> Rodent. Enough! You will show the Stone Lord proper respect, and you will return to the Guild Hall and do as we have paid you to. Of course. I only thought. Wait. Flop all you wish, little fish. But Minsk has caught you! On that note, good luck. The job will be done by the time you get to the Guild Hall. Against the darkness swarming, his senses a single light glows. Rage, flaring brighter every moment. Killed. He won't stay down for long. Tell your Eulithi to protect him from the Elder Brain's influence. Quickly! No. This one will not aid our cause. Get rid of him. He is too unpredictable. He will only be a hindrance to us. No, I will not be coerced into protecting him. You do not see what I do. His thoughts, his mind, pure chaos. The Mind Flare pours poison in your ear, I think. Tell it I will tear the prism from your grasp and throw it into the deepest lava pit I can find. Long after our bones are dust and ash, the walls of its prison will still be burning. Now help my friend! She bluffs. Surely she would not risk the fate of all for one simple life. Fine. Have it your way. His mind unfolds beneath yours. A still lake pulls you down into its depths. Images flash by, battles fought, and friends fallen. His rage grows colder, burrows deeper, as a familiar face crystallizes before you. Jahira... You killed her! You are being dramatic. The instant's hesitation is enough. With a sensation of terrible rending, something vast and nameless falls away from his mind. There. It is done. <laughs> Jahira? I do not understand. Good. That means you're back to your old ways. We have a lot to discuss. But first... You have someone to thank. In the sudden silence, your minds merge once more. More memories, sensations, but passing too quickly for you to track. In the same breath, you share everything that happened to you. The Nautiloid, the Absolute, 
the chosen of the dead three. You... You saved Minsk. While he danced like a Mind Flayer's meat puppet. Why? A level head and a kind heart. It is well that Boo kept me from crushing either. I would be rid of this parasite. Minsk takes orders from only one tiny beast. And he is much cuter than any mind maggot. He is... Uh, he is... Where is he? My friend, from our brief sharing of skulls, I know you have faced many strange beings, but none like this. Whatever happens, show no fear and stay your hand. Trust in Minsk. Minsk finds that the less thinking he does, the easier the trusting comes. Wait! You gaze into Minsk's soul and see his foul crimes. You smell the stench of evil upon him, pointy claws primed, ready to scratch out his eyes. I am sorry, my friend. I am at the mercy of your faultless justice. Now, if you must burrow through my blackened heart, I am ready. No? You are certain? Oh, such boundless compassion. You are all heart, and whiskers, and cute little nose. Uh, you are right, of course. There is still much evil for Boo and Minz to stamp out. But we need not fight it alone. I have a new face to show you. But it is not a villainous one for the clawing, understand? You, this is Boo. And Boo, meet you? No, it is a hamster. A miniature giant space hamster. Fear not, you will learn the difference in time. Those villains locked Boo away lest his righteous gaze cause their tadpole to flee in terror. Now we are together again. All will be exactly as... Boo, why do you use such language? Ah, once more, my hamster proves himself my greater half and makes the path clear when my mind is fuzzier than his tiny bottom. He says we will join with you and cleanse Baldur's Gate of Evil together. You have a great many companions already. There is no room for little Boo or slightly larger Minsk. 
You and I are most adept in the doing of things, but as you wish. To camp then! For his heroics here today, Boo has earned the most vigorous of back scratchings. If you don't mind, sir, I do believe you have your pass, and I have other customers. The vaults are just downstairs. Anyway... You've come to make a lodgment? A city-sized one? And not even a whisker light! You're a boring bastard. Me too, I suppose. Because I'm not even tempted to scam you. Take this vault key. You'll find something by way of thanks inside. So here I... The boy is trying his best to explain, but I still do not understand your anger. Do not hide behind your hamster, Ranger. You do not understand because you do not listen. We were the first to discover the cult. And if you had only waited, we might have marshaled our numbers and... Good does not wait for evil to button up its breeches. When it offers buttocks for the smacking, Minsk and Bo greet cheek with hand. It is well that Boo's innocent ears still ring from all this shouting. This mess falls on our heads, Minsk. The city under siege, its people poisoned by the cult. It all might have been avoided if you had just put your feelings aside and listened. I have already pledged my sword and hamster both. What more does Minsk have to give? Your word, Ranger. That next time you will stop and think. I will not always be here to tell you what to do. If not here, then where? Ah, wherever there is, Minsk and Boo will go to. My hamster, he will not be parted from you again, Jahira. I missed him too. And try as you might. I know you have not missed my point as neatly as you pretend. I think you might have made a terrible, terrible mistake. Huh? Chasing rumor halfway around the city and back. Crossing the guild. Wading through filth. Defying the one creature upon whom your very life depends. All for a madman and his rodent. The Absolute threatens thousands, the entire coast. And still you risk much to help one man. I should berate you. But... I can only say thank you. Your reasons were your own. But whether you meant for it or not, 
Your fight is our fight. Huh? Both of us. To the very end. Lead the way. We're yours to command. You're sure? Later, then. Nothing. I don't hear him. You came. Such a shame. Curiosity killed all the cats. It won't be so kind to you. As the woman speaks, you hear a distant rattle of chains, and she winces in pain. <sighs> the jailer will hear us. I shouldn't be talking to you. I must go. It's not kind to me. The figure flickers and starts to dim from view, but you sense she could be convinced to return. The figure shimmers brightly. Your words seem to have piqued her curiosity. I hope so, but it is a faint hope. Just like me. I can't leave. I could only suffer. But I'm supposed to do that in silence. Everyone here hates me for what I am. I'm the thing that kills you and the only reason you're alive. Made by a promise, undone by the truth. A handshake, a hug, the first beat of a newborn's heart. I am hope. What little is left of her. A guttering candle in a universe of night. I'm not much of a friend to anyone anymore. I could use a friend myself. Do you want a friend to guide you through this madhouse? I hear the jailer. It hears me. It'll call Raphael, make every question count. Make some of them count twice. Discovered an ancient gate prince in need of a savior. The Orphic Hammer is the perfect tool for breaking all infernal chains. Hope can help. The hammer is here in this house. It's... You hear a sound like the rattle of a chain and an agonizing scream in your head as hope flickers from view momentarily. Shh. Quiet. There it goes. Everyone here is mad, even you, especially me. And that makes them dangerous, but it also makes them stupid. I'll make you seem as ruined as the rest of the people here. A simple glamour to make you a terrible wretch. Now whisper your questions, little wretch, but really quiet and very clever. Concentrate. Down the corridor past the debtor. Oh, the debtors. They won't like you. But I like you. I know I do. I think I do. I hope I do. I just need to ask one question and I'll know for sure. Can you save me? Please, 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 please. You don't even know how. 
All right. You have to listen very, very, very closely. I will say this only once. Find the key, take the hammer, smash my chains. Find the key, take the hammer, smash my chains. Find the key, take the hammer, smash my chains. But be careful when you take the hammer. The fire will come, and Raphael, you must run, 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 run. But don't forget me. Please, please, please. I don't want to burn. Not again. The rattle of chains echoes louder from unseen places, and without a scream or a sigh, hope disappears. Oh, I curse to put my hands on everything. Psst. Over here! Hello again, little mice. The price for speaking is steep, but I must give warning. Your prize is just ahead in the archive, but you can't take it yet. And even if you could, you mustn't. Trigger the alarm, and Raphael will come swooping home on wings of malice to rip out your soul. In this house, thieves are melted like butter and spread onto toast. I'm doing it again. I'm doing it again. I can. I shall. I can. I shall. The archivist is the key, but he's as stubborn as a king and as serious as a heart attack. Exploit his fiddling weakness and make him grovel! Oh no. They hear me. Speak quickly, speak softly. You know how this goes. You steady your mind and prepare your questions. He fears authority figures. Perhaps his teacher took a strap to him and left a deep impression at an early age. There's one regular visitor that he particularly fears. She is... A crack like breaking bone. Hope winces. Scarier things than you, little mice. Virilius. Virilius Receptor. A High Inquisitor of Zariel. Officially entitled to audit Raphael's collection. Her true form is so gargantuan and mind-scarring to behold that she takes on many guises when she visits. Play your part well and you can be one of those blasphemous guises. A guest? Are you a client of the Master or a visitor from elsewhere in the Hells? I do not believe you were invited. One moment. I shall consult the visitor's schedule. Hmm. 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 Most irregular. The schedule is all but clear. And yet you are here. Thousand apologies, O oh majestic magistrate of the Infernal Court. Your mortal guise is so vile, I found it perfectly convincing. I would prostrate myself before you and kiss your calluses, but my spine is ruptured in a thousand places. 
You do know how Raphael likes to play. As always, the archive is yours to peruse. You'll find everything accounted for, and I can present documents of procurement if necessary. pair of gauntlets that allow the wearer to twist the head from even the most resilient malingerer. An amulet that causes the blood to surge and the heart to swell, along with other parts. Hmm. Most invigorating. And awaiting installation, we have secured a rod that gathers the weave around it in great quantities just as surely a shit gathers flies. You may examine them, O oh diabolical dominatrix, but they cannot be removed unless you present a writ of infernal requisition with Article 152 correctly filled out. An exquisite and most unique artifact Crafted with materials hewn from the depths of the hells by Raphael's Merrigan labor force. As it was created by Raphael himself, we have no documents of procurement, nor do we require any. But if you wish to examine the artifact itself, you are more than welcome. As part of the special collection, that item is guarded by a master word that even I do not know. I suggest you wait until Raphael returns, and you can discuss the matter with him. You are welcome to relax in the boudoir until then. It is where Raphael conducts his most private matters of business and pleasure. You will need this to gain access. The resident of the boudoir will wish to explore every inch of your new form, and I'm sure you will be happy to share. You look positively wretched. Perfect! The archivist told you to cool off in the boudoir. Well, here it is. A horrid place where pleasure is pain, and pain is pleasure, and hope cannot live at all. Everything in this house exists for Raphael's pleasure, and Raphael's pleasure alone. That includes Raphael himself, whatever form he takes. That's curious. A lost little mouse is running through the house. A thief in the night, greedy, and here to take. Why are you here, little thief? Hmm. Raphael all but spent himself to get that hammer. And you want to take it off him? This is very naughty. Whatever are we to do? Why don't we play a game? You win, I give you everything you desire. <laughs> but you'll enjoy yourself more if you lose. It's a surprise. Off with your clothes. Little thief. Good. Keep going like this. And you'll get to live. You'll be crying out my name soon. You'd better know it. I am Harlep, Raphael's personal incubus, glamoured and transfigured to look like him. I'm a perfect cook. To sleep with <laughs> What's better than the devil you know, eh? His violating stare sees more than all of you. It sees potential. Before we continue, 
I want to make sure you're comfortable. Sometimes, when he's feeling adventurous, Raphael will ask me to change into the Archduchess, Raphael. I can take her form if you choose. A simple swap pales in comparison to what you are about to do for me. Then the Archduchess I shall be. On the bed. Lie back. of resistance or control is fading. You will obey, giving yourself body and mind to them. Every kiss is as tender as a last goodbye. Every touch a lie of true love. You force your eyes open, drawing yourself back to reality. I can't wait to explore how you work. What gets you going? What makes you sweat? And every time I make love in your shape, you will know. A shiver out of the blue, a tingle from beyond. Now, your reward for giving me such a present. I will tell you one and only one of Raphael's dirty secret. Whisper it to me. What do you want to know? Raphael hides nothing from me, can deny me nothing, aside from what he keeps in his safe. The safe lingers behind the right-hand painting of Raphael. He almost spends more time staring at those portraits than he does at me. Although I'd love to watch you struggle to open the safe without it, this key should help. You've labored enough, pet. Now, shall we bid one another goodbye? Thank you for you. I will misuse you well. Lugubrious this day, High Inquisitor. An inspiration to us all. Here we go. There it is. The Orphic Hammer, right within reach. It appears to be protected by an energy field of some kind. But you're not familiar with this magic. Magic blinks away at your words. Careful! Stealing the most precious item in this place is hardly going to go unnoticed.
This is delightful. You have what you wanted, but you cannot leave lest all hells break loose. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a hopeless situation. <laughs> Take that. Something over there. I've got good news. A bad news. A worst news. Good news. You got what you came for. Successful visit. Great success. Fantastic work. Bad news. So many things will be on fire when you step outside of this room. You included. That's okay, no, right? It's hell. You expected it to be hot. Worst news, Raphael's on his way home, and oh boy, oh boy, he is spitting mad. But you planned for this. I know you did. You have everything under control. It's really important that you don't panic, even when your eyes evaporate from the heat. Come to my prison, bring the hammer, break my chances, then we exit stage any which way. Work as a cockroach, lickety split if you don't mind. On my way. you all if you take another step. And you won't be able to see me while you're being digested! You find my prison. My body is held in chains just beyond. The whole house is tumbling down and Raphael striding across the plains to come catch a mice. And I swing that big, beautiful hammer, crack open my chains, and let's get out of here. It's time to buy this cup on a hope and a prayer. Don't! But if you must, make sure I'm with you. He makes mistakes when he's angry, and seeing me running free will make him as angry as an axe head. You sound so brave, but we really don't have a choice.
fools these mortals be. in the room. I can see how you avoid looking at me. I must be so terribly mutilated after all these decades of torture. Don't hold back. Tell me how bad it is. I'd blush if they had left me any skin to redden, and I would kiss you if they had not torn off my lips. I hope that was a compliment. We'll carve our way to the entrance hall and chop Raphael into messes. That's the hopeful version, of course. The likely version is that we are the messes and he is the chopper. Onwards! <sighs> there are three things you need to know about Raphael. He's almost home now, closer than a kiss. No time for chitter chatter. It's tempting to delay the inevitable. But this is it. The big showdown, the final act, the glorious run that comes to us all. There is also the slim possibility that we win. Here goes nothing. Time slows for a moment and the air becomes thicker. The master of the house is coming. You. There are many things in your world that I loathe. Litters of kittens, chattering children, the noise, and the chaos of it all. In my world, in my house, there is order, and there is decorum. You came here uninvited, and you stole from me. In doing so, you brought the chaos of your world into mine. I will not abide it. Sister, oh sister, I wept and I cried, but all would be well if you were by my side. Oh, Hope, you are such a piteous thing. All it takes is a crumb from the table and you forget the centuries of starvation. This insolence has earned you centuries more. Carilla, tell our unwelcome guest about your role in their tragic downfall. I permitted you the freedom to decide your own fate. You could have been smart, selfless, saved the world. Instead, you came here and risked everything. It's the fatal flaw of mortal kind. Take away their free will and they call you a tyrant. Allow them to indulge it and they become tyrants. You would have been heroes if you'd only dealt fairly with me. Instead, you're not so different to doomed Cassus, overreaching your limits and burning your world to ash. Wrong, wrong, wrong! They will save their world and smash you to smithereens. It's this charming naivety that makes your company such a joy to me, Hope. 
Not even forgive this little rebellion. Once you're suitably chastised. This isn't a rebellion. It's a revolt. I'm revolting! <laughs> then hope dies today. Commander, you can salvage a trophy from these insects when I'm done with them. These insects struck me down beneath the Shadowlands. They are worthy opponents. Their skulls will make fine trophies. To stand against a devil in his own home. Hmm. That takes courage. I'm with you. How tiresome. Am I to understand that you wish to die with them? I wish to fight with them. It's all the same in the end. If you have any last words, make it quick. It will only take a moment to finish you. Hope. It always burns you in the end, little mouse. Now, down comes the claw. All mortal lives expire. Come on, come on. Souls go to their doom. You are wide awake, and Raphael truly is defeated. Then we're not just fine, we're spectacular! What a wonderful, jubilant, glorious day. Oh, but my poor sister, Carilla! It is not right that she died. And that makes me want to weep an ocean. She was an entire person before she ever made that choice. When we were children, she always kept the last piece of pastry for me and bloodied the nose of the bullies who pulled my hair. She was my sister. But as a wise woman once said, there's no point in crying over spilt blood. We must go on. And despite all the years I've lost, I have enough love in my heart to guide you home. For the first time since you heard her voice, hope seems calm and the peace flows from her into you, soothing your very soul. And go where? I don't think I quite know how to be anywhere else but here anymore. With a lick of paint and a thorough cleaning, this could be a lovely little house. 
and I can hardly leave. After all, who would ever want to think of hell without hope? I hope I'll see Carilla again one day, and that she'll say sorry, and I'll tell her she's forgiven. I hope I find all the pieces of my mind that fell out of my head over all those years, and that I'll be able to put myself back together again. I hope the echoes of pain will fade, and memories of sorrow will die, and that you'll visit me here someday. And I hope you have a happy ending of your own. fought well. We could use such strength in the blood war. <sighs> now I'm free of Raphael's blasted contract. I can return to the front lines. Whoever your enemies are, they have good reason to fear you. And I'll gladly lend you my skills against them when the time comes. Until then, good luck to you, little rabbit. You're a finer hunter than any wolf. So you wormed your way into the Devil's Lair, risked mind, limb, and freedom, all to steal the Orphic Hammer. I hope your ambitions end there. I have already told you that the Githyanki Prince only wants to see you dead. But it seems you still do not trust me. His domination is what keeps you free. You know this already. Still, you would test our alliance. You are falling into the same trap as the Chosen. Their distrust of one another is their undoing. We must not make the same mistake. We must work together. And what then? When he wakens from his incarceration, what do you think he will make of you? The one who bears the spawn his very nature bends him to revile? And even if you survived him, what of the Elder Brain? Without the protection I leverage for you, you would be enthralled in an instant. Careful. You will make a mind flare laugh. You may think yourself ingenious for having slain a devil, but you have merely ironed out a wrinkle. The Elder Brain will not be such an easy foe. It is time we resume our journey to find it. I should speak up. Trips to the Hells are usually one way. Especially when the Traveler causes the kind of trouble you did. I knew you were a thief. Didn't realize you were a killer. Raphael's death is already causing quite a stir across the Hells. It's a rare thing for a mortal to slay a devil of his stature. In all the excitement, I hope you didn't forget our bargain. Do you have the gauntlets? Hand them over, and our deal is done. That can be arranged. If there's enough coin on the table, Mammon permits almost anything. Not a subtle point, but well made. Keep the gauntlets. Your threats aren't necessary, but your coin is still welcome, Devil Slayer. Did you want something? If not, I'm perfectly happy to just gaze upon you a while. Of course. 
Well, don't stand in ceremony. Come here. All that remains is to return to the Astral Prism and break Orpheus free. How we get in remains to be seen. I'll give it a shot. Pristine darkness in every direction. Gentle, rhythmic slap of water on rock as your vessel cuts through. Senses strung so tight they could snap in an instant.
it's messing with your mind. Don't listen to it. Use the stones.
just in time. The situation is worse than I thought. This is an Elden Brain. No longer. The magic of the crown has caused it to evolve. It has become something more. A nether brain. I thought so too, but that was when I believed it was still an elder brain. It has been anticipating our every move from the start. I underestimated it. We will need to rethink our plan. I've assessed our encounter with the Netherbrain from every angle. I know why we failed. The problem was not the stones. The problem was you. You can make only one move at a time, but the Netherbrain calculates every possible move at once. It knows what you will do. It knows everything you could possibly do. You cannot outmaneuver it. To defeat it, you would have to think like an anithid. Better yet, be one. Your mind is not capable of this. Mine is. You will give the stones to me. I will assimilate Orpheus, and then I will be able to leave this prison to face the brain. This fella and his ultimatums. But he's forgetting one thing. We could become Illithid. I mean, I could. You could trust me to do what needs to be done. You still don't trust me. After all we've been through, remember, I have been your salvation from the very beginning. Your knight in shining armor. I freed you from the Nautiloid. Prevented you from crashing to your death. I have protected you ever since. At no small cost to myself. I came to you as a leader. But I did not shy away from showing you vulnerability. I needed you as much as you needed me. I was not above recognizing this. When you discovered my true identity, I did not flinch from the truth. I never lied to you. Not once. I am just like you. We have the same enemy. The same story. I encouraged you to fulfill your potential. All while protecting you from harm. Now I ask you for the last time. To trust me. Release the nether stones to me. Do not forget. There's a card yet to come into play. The orb. If we do not want to surrender the stones, we can still use it to ensure the brain's destruction. Along with my own, of course. This is a risk we cannot take. Your hubris drives you even now. You failed before. I cannot trust that you will not fail again. You must trust me. Hand me the stones. I told you we have to trust one another. I told you the Githyanki would only want to kill you for what you are. Still, you choose to break our alliance. Even united, 
The Netherbrain was going to be an impossible enemy. But apart, we have no chance of survival. Very well. Since you will not work with me, you work against me. You leave me no option but to join the Netherbrain. were impossible. As the Githyanki prince takes his blade, a silent cry pierces your head. It's unlike any sensation you've ever felt. You reek of Illithid. You took advantage of my powers. And you slaughtered my honor guard. Nonetheless, it seems we must be allies. You may address me as your majesty. Make no mistake. Were it not for our common goal, I would strangle you where you stand. Your very existence tests my self-restraint. I will neither forgive nor forget your abuse of my powers. That is true. And it would have been the honorable outcome for one destined to become Geek. You had the opportunity to surrender yourself to my honor guard. They would have given you a noble end. They would have freed me, and I would have stopped the Elder Brain before it evolved into a Nether Brain. All that suffering... avoidable. Were it not for the choices you made! We will destroy the Nether Brain together and put a stop to this nascent empire before it expands into the stars. The Geek was correct about one thing. The Netherbrain's power is beyond us. The hardest metal in the world would not cut through its mind, for it is made of thought itself. At this point, it will take an Elithid to unleash the full potential of the Netherstones. And it would take one wizard to unleash a cataclysm powerful enough to tear apart the brain's very being. No choice but to consider using the orb. I do not know you, wizard. And I do not know this orb. But what I do know is that we must not gamble with the fate of the world. I cannot simply depend upon your word. Wait. Maybe you don't have to. It... It should be me. dying. My heart feels like a live grenade. I'm gonna blow any minute. You still have a life to live. I don't. If this is the end for me, let me be the motherfucker who saved the world. Any time, soldier. You. Tiefling, you would volunteer your life for the greater good. You would make the ultimate sacrifice. I thank you. The Netherbrain wants nothing more than to see all infected become geek. My defenses keep the voice of the Absolute out. But just as I can raise them, so I can lower them. I will allow the voice of the Absolute in. Once it reaches you, it will order you to transform. It will only take a moment. And once you are a Mind Flayer, I will fold you under my protection once more. You will be the savior of empires. 
Not least, my own. With the withdrawal of Orpheus's power, Karlak's mind is rushed with the full force of the Netherbrain. The fabric of her being is torn apart and reformed in an agonizing process that is all too soon. Then, stillness. She stands transformed, once again closed off from the Netherbrain's mind. My people will remember you, Tiefling. The rebel Illithid who stood beside their reborn prince and ended the grand design. Let us return now to the city and follow the path of the Netherbrain. Painful, to say the least. It's tough the most wild by myself, but but more. It's like I'm beyond myself. I can sense things I never knew were there. And my engine, it's... It's... Silent. No heat. No gears. Still there, but no longer threatening to explode. Soldier. monster, sure. But one that can feel, think, live. But I'm still myself, and I know what our mission is. I'm glad I get to do the honors. I can imagine no finer ceremony for the job. do you one better than good let's do something absolutely legendary we have a city to save I think it's about time we got started I think we're done here I'll certainly be glad to see the back of it anyway up for discussion after you my friend oh, curse to put my hands on everything lost much already and we will lose more before the day is out but even when the last soul falls Baldur's Gate will stand for Baldur's Gate is more than just a city it is more than a place of opportunity for those of mercantile spirit more than a place of refuge for those who are lost more than a home for friends loved ones and adventuring souls Baldur's Gate is a place where anyone can find what they need 
if they're just willing to fight for it. Today, Baldur's Gate needs us. Today, we fight for... Your late friend? This is the one you spoke of. That is, indeed, the one who purged my home of a terrible evil. My father, Ketherick. There's no one I'd trust more to protect this city. Appearances may change, but they do not mask the one within. This one, I know. Observe with whom it traveleth. Friends. This Mind Flare will fight with thee. It will save thy city and thy lives. My steel is yours, and I'm not alone. Never thought I'd be fighting alongside a Mind Flayer. But I'll fight with you. With magic. The Moon Maiden's silver light is a shield in dark times. Today, it is mine to wield. And I hold her sword. You can count on me, little squid. I thirst for the hunt. I'm in the mood to crack some skulls after that fuckery in the Temple of Baal. The City Watch will be glad to oblige me. Not sure what I have to offer a mind flare, if I'm honest. But I hope my words of encouragement and reassurance will strengthen your uh, resolve. The journey has been brutal, but I stand here a hell rider once more. And I would die a proud man if I died this day. My people have never hunted a monster this large. They are eager to join the fray. All the strength of the lands we healed flows through me, and from me to you. No matter what form you take. Nature's servant awaits. Glad to have you with us. And not a moment too soon. The air is thick with anticipation. All eyes are on you. What will a mind flayer say that could encourage them on the threshold of battle? Ourselves. We'll be ready when you call upon us. Baldurin's grace be with you. We have lost much, but even when the... Today, you're this. The, the. Up and up. Never the and up. I'm not the gym. Oh, nature. Glad to be here. Derek's not well. A mind flare saying that we'll protect Baldwin's. Dragons overhead. Stay low. It's gone, consumed with fear. 
One last run, then we're clear. Close ranks. Absolute and spare the city. The stage is set for my final act. Mistress bidding and the redemption that lies beyond.
put me right where I need to be. I have no right to ask more of you. It's time I spirited you to safety. But this is a fate I must face alone. Much as I enjoy your company, I'm not willing to kill you just to wring out a few last moments. It's just a choice between two deaths. Quick and meaningful, or torturous and pointless. It's now or never. Always another way, yes. But not necessarily a better way. Please. For too long, I've lived in fear of taking a host of innocents with me when I expired. Now at least I can be assured my demise will be saving them instead. If you're mistaken, this could be the end of everything. We'll be failing right at the last hurdle. But I only made it this far thanks to you. I might have questioned such sterling guidance now. Mistra won't be pleased. But perhaps trying to please the gods is a fool's errand. Lead on, then. I shall stay my hand as long as I can. But if the tide of battle turns against us, remember I have the means to bring a swift end to this. Is the crown of Carsus, the site of power, the site of domination. The nether stones might prove more effective if we use them now. easy these days.
feel it. A sudden shift. The brain is weakening. Its grasp of itself slipping. This is your chance. Its will is stronger than anything you've ever felt. The chains shake, threatening to break at any moment. Subdued at last. This is its death rattle. Spare me. Join me. Wield me. Become absolute. This is it, soldier. This is what we fought for. Time to end this thing. The brain is on the cusp of its final thought, and it's taking all of Karlak's strength to keep it there. An 
opportunity, perhaps. No more tadpoles, Brain. It's time to die. My master. I must obey. I must. All thought, all feeling. Your tadpole burns in your brain. Silence. For the first time in a long time, your thoughts are entirely your own. And then, gravity. Everything you did, everything you sacrificed, it was worth it for this.
Nobu, this moment is for savoring. There will be tadpoles to snack on later. My powers, they're draining. Just like Mizora said they would. A small price to pay in the grand scheme of things. I did it. The nether brain is dead. The parasite, it's with it. Dead along with the nether brain. I am cleansed. I will never be a filthy geich. Only mild offense intended, of course. You did the unthinkable. And I'm grateful for it. It's all right. I knew what I was doing. I will ensure that all Githyanki know your name and your sacrifice. What you have done today will start a fire that rages across the astral plane. With their lost prince returned, my people will burn away Vlakith's corruption. And it is all thanks to you, the Illithid who defied a nether brain. the right decision don't worry about me i'm happy i saved the fucking world and i think i might live long enough to tell the tale too i thank you my liberator my savior People are leaving, and I must leave with them. Come, Lazel. We will free the Githyanki and dismantle the Empire. Let them be imprisoned no longer. It will be done. I will never be free while my people are still bound by Vlakith's chains. Your will is strong, Rastil. Your name will be etched in our slates. You will be called Mlagir, Liberator. Orpheus, I am ready. Julas! Juthas! Farewell, Jestil, my liberator. With the Githyanki gone, there's nothing left but the silence of the city, smoldering waiting to be rebuilt. But it seems that Gale's mind is elsewhere. The crown. It's somewhere in the Giontha. If I salvage the stones, I can reforge it. The power of Carsus would be in my hands. Then, what would I do with it once I have it? Sage and timely counsel, as always. And I intend to heed it. A wise man learns from his mistakes and strives not to repeat them. I shall bring the crown to Mistra. 
shall cure me of my affliction, and I'll finally be free. And a more deserving one this time around. If this adventure has taught me anything, is that there are things in this world far more valuable than power. Besides, I'm growing quite fond of this merry band of ours, and I'd quite like to see what happens to it. I'm sure Mistra will summon me soon enough, but until then, I propose we celebrate our victory the mortal way, with a drink in our hands and reckless abandon in our hearts. I honestly don't mind what we do once we get to the... Ow! It was, it was nice when it lasted. Ah! I, I'm sorry. I, I have to go. I doubt we'll ever see that face basking in the sun again. It's over. And it's all because of you. You, who were destined to become a thrall. Thanks to you, there will be no Illithid Empire, no Death God's tyranny. You have earned your place amongst the legends of the Sword Coast. You are the saviors of Baldur's Gate. for the briefest moment when I woke this morning. I didn't know where I was. I thought perhaps it had all been a dream, stopping the absolute, saving my parents. Then I realized I was in your arms. We did it. Everything's perfect. Almost, anyway. After everything that happened, with my parents, with Shah. I didn't think I was owed any happiness. I did things, things that fill me with shame now. There's at least one person who doesn't want me happy, Shah. I felt the wound last night while you were sleeping, like some sadistic child de-winging a fly. She can try to twist the knife all she likes. I know I can survive her worst. Nothing she does can sour the fact that I have my family again. Thank you. Sometimes I have to remind myself of that very thing. It's nice to hear someone else say it. You and I... Our time together has been very dear to me. I had hoped maybe there might be more to come. Good. Then seek me out when you have time. I'm hoping to find some place I can settle down and stay close to my parents. Somewhere quiet, where they can find peace and gaze at the night sky. I'll keep a spot for you. It'll be just like old times. There thou art, the dead three. Thy faces, gods, thy actions, barely worthy of the name. Didst truly believe thy ploy would succeed? Didst believe I would not notice? Thou sought to bolster thy strength by taking away the souls of mortals. But souls vanish 
when their hosts become mind flayers. Didst think the other gods would not notice? Gods thou may be, yet thou hast proven thyself fools, everyone. The supplication of Bane. The whimper of Baal. The death mule of Merkel. Felled by mortals. I overestimated thee. They did not. Vermin, away. Thou wilt trouble us no more. 